Chato, it's Sundat, and coming up today on Building a Nation with Sirens of Malta, the Champions League continues. We are still unbeaten after six matches, and today we face off against a shit Bayern Munich team and a slightly less shit Inter with a chance to go unbeaten and get top eight for the entire group. More coefficient points on the cards, youth intake coming up, all that and more coming up today on Building a Nation with Sirens of Malta and fucking stirrups. It's double stirrups. Oh, the chair's squeaking. I'm squeaking. It's a good day. <sighs> Look at me go. I'm just going to bask in my own glory for a moment there. You'll love to see it. Oh, thank you, Sergio. Sunday stirrups for everyone. You get a stirrup. You get a stirrup. Bayern are indeed going to clap us. But to be fair, I could have said nothing and they were still going to clap us. This is... It's Bayern. Of course they're going to destroy us. We're Bayern. Of course we beat Sirens, you know? It's just what happens. Ah... Uh, in other news, there was no other news today. It was just us, thanks to Hamron being shit. Uh, everyone else kind of being pure gash. We are the only news in town. Let me just turn that down slightly. There we go. Ah, oh dear. Christian, with the 25 months. How the devil are you, my friend, on this relatively nice Sunday morning? Actually, yesterday was lovely. Thomas with the 30 as well. Thank you, friend. Lost I know. I did. I didn't know they were 2 0 up, though. That's funny as fuck. All I saw is that um, they lost 3 2 to Heidenheim and completely handed the title to Leverkusen. Not that Leverkusen weren't going to win it anyway, but they are now definitely, definitely, definitely going to win it. They've, I mean, they can win it next week, can't they? Because it's what, they're 16 clear and there's six games to go, which means next week they can win it. 2-0 up at half time as well. Wow. And Kane scored as well, didn't he? <laughs> oh, that would be funny. <clears throat> That's unlikely, Stephen. Uh, just because of how massive we've been this season in the league. It's like incredible. How good have we been? Uh, of which there is none exactly. There was no in other news. Huey and Louie can piss off. <laughs> Kate's cursed. I I must say, like, I, I I feel bad for him, but I'm also really happy for Leverkusen. Like, it's nice to see Neverkusen finally do stuff, you know? Uh, we used to have... Uh, I don't think he's been around chat for a while now. There was a, we used to have a massive Leverkusen fan um, as, like, a regular chatter, so I hope he's good. <laughs> because I bet he's having a bloody lovely time right now. Mm. Oh, yeah, Dewey can stay. He's fine with Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> it's because he's not in the news will they go unbeaten i really hope so I, I want them to go unbeaten in all of them like do the treble i feel like the double is eminently doable title is in the bag dfb pokal with all due respect to kaiserslautern they should be beating kaiserslautern how did fulham get on don't we don't want to talk about it <laughs> oh god oh just you know drop a load of points against teams that we should be beating, then immediately go out and play like prime Barcelona against Newcastle. Don't score and then concede. And then lose 1-0. <laughs> Standard Fulham. Oh uh, dear. I, I think you're right. I think they'll they'll probably lose like a leg in the Europa League. Who's the big side still left in the Europa except for them? Everton did a win. They did. That was a big win as well. Um, Particularly with Luton winning too, which fair play. Luton just will not go away, will they? I kind of really rate that for them. Liverpool. Yeah. That's tough in it um it would be funny as fuck actually like thomas says if they actually did win the europa league went unbeaten in it say they beat liverpool in the final or something if that's even possible win the league and then just lose the dfb pokal final to kaiserslautern <laughs> just to really rub it in west ham roma yeah those are some pretty solid sides then again leverkusen clearly are absolutely outrageous like Bayern are not a muggy team by any means and they've made them look a fool this year so maybe they could give this it'd be interesting to see how they do when they're faced up against some top quality european opposition as well you don't have a chance today i kind of feel like no um but maybe they'll be looking to bounce back from that absolute shambles against chelsea midweek yeah apparently kaiser and beat uh Saarbrook and yes i think it was yesterday no it wasn't yesterday was it, it was uh, i think that was the final because i saw a i had a flash score item about it reverse the goal oh not that's the second time what a goal kick into him what is it with, like, things being charged down and blocked? <clears throat> Going down to playing in Europe next season. Oh, Christ, are they really in that much trouble in the uh, Zweite Bundesliga? I didn't realise that. 
I lose track of what's going on other than St. Pauli. Are St. Pauli still doing really well in the second tier? Because it'd be nice to see St. Pauli back in the top flight again with their sausage train. I'm sure they don't still have that. But <laughs> that's just me listening to the ramble 10 years ago. Second half was... I think you're a palace. Oh, yeah, of course you are with your name. Um, yeah, I saw the second, like... I saw about the last 30 minutes of the Palace game. I think Schalke have pulled it around, though, have they not? Two points. Holstein Kiel would be a cool team to have in the top flight as well. Um, yeah, St. Pauli at one point were, like, unbeaten after a stupid amount of... Yeah, because isn't it... Oh, yeah, it's two promoted and then one playoff, isn't it? And I do like the playoff thing between the top league and the bottom. I like that method of, like, deciding some stuff. It kind of gives that little extra bit of jeopardy. Part of me wonders if that would be interesting in England, but I don't think that would ever, ever be introduced just because of how much of a, a roller coaster the Football League playoffs are. They lost against Karlsruhe yesterday. Oh, Jesus. Against United. Well, you say that, but, like, when you look at the stats for that game, Adam, from what I could tell, I mean, admittedly, penalties do account for a lot of that, but you've got to win them, right? I, I didn't think Chelsea were that bad. Chelsea seemed to create a shitload. They just miss them all the time. Um, oh, dear. Never really stands a chance. Well, but then the fact is, if you deserve to be in the top flight, you should be able to beat one of the teams that's coming out of it, right? That's sort of, I think that's probably the logic to it. Um, where it's four teams and one can stay. Okay, yeah, I see your point. Um, I don't think anyone would ever vote for that, though, because that'd be like the turkeys voting for Christmas, wouldn't it? Who did Bill Bowby in the Copa del Rey? Far from safe. But is the situation better, Cat, than it was earlier this season? Because at one point, it was like, Schalke are fucked. Kind of bad. Arsenal Penn versus Brighton. Um, oh, yes, I'm glad you brought that up. I did not think it was a penalty, um, <clears throat> personally. Because to me, I think you could clearly see where Lamptey gets the ball because the ball just randomly bounces up in the air. And unless Magic did that, I, I don't know what they were looking at. I mean, are they implying that he got the ball but then was still too aggressive with the rest of the tackle and that's why it was a penalty? Because to me, I thought he got the ball. It, the ball certainly moved upwards um, past him when he brought him down. I see didn't win it touch the ball didn't win it but how can you touch the ball but not win it isn't that kind of the point of winning the ball it, it seems a bit like a an oxymoron still have possession is that the rule now so you can make a clean tackle but it's still a penalty if they've still sort of got possession of the ball that's interesting i was not aware of that bubble thank you very much for the 42 months oh hang on opinion or the rule <laughs> i wonder what the rule is I've normal time I can see today. Yeah, it's some. Um, yeah. Also, I did feel very sorry for Wolves. I, I saw some stuff to do with the Wolves game yesterday, and I thought, oh god. I saw Gary O'Neill, and I was like, right, what's happened this time? And I looked at it, and I I do feel a bit sorry for Wolves because we conceded a goal exactly like that against Manchester City this season, except the player was way more in Burnt Leno's way and actually stopped him from diving for it, and it was given. So, I I don't know what the difference is between the two goals. <laughs> I guess it's just one of those things, isn't it? Mm. Might be by some other I I guess so. I can see that logic. I just wasn't aware that that was the rule. Um, I feel like if the tackle, he attempted to make the tackle, and that I suppose it's like what's I don't know. Uh, it's I don't see how we. I it's right in the corner. Like at least with the Leno one at City earlier this season, like the player was slightly more over towards where the ball was actually going and it did stop Leno from diving because he couldn't see the ball. But I suppose you could make the Saigam argument there. It was just an odd one. I'd rather see it at least be consistent. So either they both have to be goals or neither of them are goals, you know? that That's basically what I've been able to catch up on so far. If you force the player to take avoiding action, it's still a foul. But then every tackle that's a clean tackle takes forces the player to take avoiding action, doesn't it? Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's just what a tackle is if you slide in and tackle the ball the player has to take avoiding action so if you slide in and win the ball cleanly and the player jumps over the tackle is that a penalty then because that to me sounds like nonsense <laughs> i don't see how that could possibly be true get off my big face for a little bit because we've got stuff to get into look at us talking about football for like a solid 10 minutes it's <laughs> look at us go poor size yeah yeah it's it's one of those things where I think derbies just change a lot about matches, right? Uh, it's we've all got lost. Yeah. <laughs> ah, it's one of those things. It's it's so typically Fulhamish to play like crap against Nottingham Forest and Sheffield United, then actually play well against Newcastle and then lose. It's just what we do. Because you're facing it, yes. Lovely. <laughs> Champions League podcast. Oh, you've not been listening to mine and Parv's pod. Not a real fan. Sock astronaut. Intriguing with the top five. Oh yeah. Um, 
I was waiting for someone to ask me about that. Did you stay up to watch the F1? No, I didn't. Um, obviously, say stay up, get up early to watch it. I don't need to get up early to see a Red Bull 1-2. It's, it's all good. I've not actually watched a single F1 race this year, and it's not because I don't want to. It's just because of either time differences or I've been busy during the race. Been skiing. Um, so the last things have actually been going pretty well. Like this season, we are unbeaten in Europe. We we're actually second in the Champions League group. Genuinely look really good. Even when we were we had half our squad missing at AFCON, we still managed to get a win against Roll and a draw against Leon, which was a bit surprising. We probably should have won that too. Fairly protect I guess so, but to me, if like it's a sport, you shouldn't really have to do that, should you? It's just one of those things, right? It's and I realise, obviously, the fact is, it's sport, not pure entertainment. It's designed to be sport. So, at the end of the day, if it's not interesting, people will stop watching, probably. But at the end of the day, as well, it is a sport. So, Martinsville tonight, though, exactly. <laughs> much better. Lost Bay, thank you very much for the 37 months. Who remembers the reversing it. dump truck? You mean the reversing dump truck. We actually tried to put that into um the Stream Nana bot in the accent to see if she would do it, but it wouldn't work. Hello, John. Yeah, I mean, kind of like last year in a way, Hedge. At least the tart race is a little bit closer right now. Um, yeah, because I saw that Sonoda got another point, which is Yuki's doing, like, really nicely this season. I'm kind of happy for him. I do enjoy him just as a human being. It's like, just do F... What's it... What's they call it? Um, Formula 1.5. Yuki, yeah, I mean, that's more points in... He seems like he's sort of... They're in that kind of... What was it? Formula A and Formula B, essentially. Like, the top teams and then everyone else. <laughs> oh, dear. Multi data base chose to do the same using Slimo. Oh, nice! Did you adjust? Sorry, did you use the new one? Because um, obviously we had to re-verify the database because of the update because it broke something to do with some random lower league club in England. I think Hadrian mentioned that to me. Uh, but there is a newer version of the database in the Discord that has all the new stuff. Got the new one, awesome. Because I wasn't even sure that existed yet. But I need to mention that for the next recap video because I know people have been asking me about it. How do I display the screen that shows today's World Cup games? Right, so basically, the screen you're looking for is... Oh, hang on, I don't know if I can show this. So the screen you're looking for is this one here. Um, but in order to get the game to show you this screen, like, automatically, if you go into here and go to... Just type in screen. And go to screen flow. And what you do is you add a new one for FIFA World Cup overview profile on match day and then whenever you want. And that's what I do. And that's how the game automatically shows me that each time. Uh, it's just a... That's what we do with, like, the European competitions as well. Hello, Tommy! <clears throat> Done it for us. Oh, nice! I think it was Dale that might have done it. They are super fun saves, I must say. Mm. Oh, dear, my throat is a bit funky this morning. Absolutely, yeah. So, basically, if you go to Preferences, and then type in Screen, sometimes it'll appear before you do that, and then hit Screen Flow here, and then I'll just, as an example, uh, you select competitions, so say, I don't know, uh, where is it? European Championship, right? Overview profile. Or you can do the fixture day. So you either want... That's the one that will show you the main one. That's the stages. And then you can do the fixture day one as well. Uh, so you have on match day and I do evening. So we'll add that in now so we can do the Euros as well. Um, and then just add that like that. And it will automatically take you to that page on the evening of each match day, basically. Results are falling well. Aaron, 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 Aaron. Thank you for the five bits. <clears throat> that was amazing. I feel like that's the sort of opinion of a lot of people. Italy High Linux and Malta. I don't know. Wait, Italy Malta, where's that? Where was Italy highlighted next to Malta? On which screen? Uh I'm curious now. Add in the screen flow. Oh, let's have a look. I don't know. Oh, you mean like Oh yeah. I don't know. Italian Youth Club Invitational. Ha! Huh. Hang on a minute. Let's just look at the detail. I just wondered if for some reason it was... Maybe, yeah, multi, maybe Maltese Club State part in it. That's... It could be that, yeah. Maybe the name fix doesn't have that in it, in fairness. Oh, that's strange. I'd never noticed that before. I do like that FM actually takes the time to highlight stuff like that. Oh, it's so close. Also, Al Shatty, good name. There's no Vincent Chato in this database, but always another Lebanese chappy. Plays in... Well, he's got international caps as well. Yusef Chato. It's not Chato, but it's close. There's loading the guy. Ah, fair enough. <clears throat> 
But as you say, I guess it's because Maltese clubs must compete in it in some manner. Xabi Alonso, what is he up to in this save, actually? Because we know Xabi, we know he's not at Bayern because if he was, they'd be doing a lot. Oh, he's still at Bayern Leverkusen. Damn, he's been there for 14 years. Leverkusen fans absolutely loving that. You got Chateau and Chateau. Oh, you love to see it. Oh, I see. <clears throat> but it counts as like Italy, and that's the reason it shows up under Italy and not under like world or something. Why don't I think there though? Uh, well, um, actually, let's just look at. I don't think they have, you know, because I remember looking up by Leverkusen last stream. Oh, they've won a Europa League. Two DFB Pokals. Okay, I take that back. <clears throat> that, the Sam thingy, or the whatever this one is, uh, those ones don't count. So yeah, he's actually won a couple of bits. Not a club legend yet. Uh, in fact, isn't he even favoured personnel? Wait, that's funny as fuck. <laughs> Bro's not even favoured personnel. Morian with the 27 months. How are you, friend? Love to see it on this beautiful sap Saturday morning. A stupid I didn't. I Basically, I watched... Um, I watched the highlights. The only game I watched is I caught the second half of the Palace game when I came back from my lovely long walk with Pog, which was lovely, like genuinely amazing. Um, and did I say Saturday? I've never, well, other than showdowns back in, oh no, I used to stream on Saturdays all the time. Just not for like a year and a half. <laughs> Whoopsie. It's the Monday incident all over again. Please excuse me. Pog and I were following this trail yesterday on a walk, and it just literally goes straight into a field that is full of sheep. Um, which was great, because we were just really close to all these sheep. It was fun. Oh my god. Yeah, Saturday is a double po it's a double po far. <laughs> we don't do Saturdays around here. Right. Is that a different Jorginho? He's not a clickable one either way. Um, so I've stopped it here because we've got this to do here also barcelona offered me 3.2 million for the 20 percent clause on tony sunday and i decided that that might be enough for us to take it because basically they'd need to sell him for like 65 million quid for us to even get that amount of money out of them so i figured they were offering me 800k before so i figured i'd take the three million pounds because it's just money they're still going to get the 10 million from them in like a year and a half because he's already played 15 league games so only 35 more for another 10 million that was the 20 percent of profit one if it, if it was 20 percent of next sale i'd have held on but it was only profit so i don't think they're going to sell him anyway most likely but if they do it would have to be like 70 million quid for us to make any money on it what we will get money for though is the other clause Here's a because back. Well, they owe us another 10 and a half million quid if he makes another 35 appearances and the fact is half a season he's already done 15 he could we could get that in the middle of next year so another 10 and a half million quid for free well not for free but <laughs> it's free money what the hell? holy shit steve thank you Thanks, very much chato and matto for the great vibes all the time also why are birds that cannot fly called birds instead of walks i reckon they should be called perambulators because they are ambulatory animals and such. Thank you so much for the tip, though. That's very, very nice of you, Steve. Hope you've had a fantastic Sundat. Look at me get the day right. And oh boy, Cal, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, that was caught up on that one. Right, cool. He actually is. I think it's because he's still slightly young, maybe low rep and stuff like that as well. Backburst, thank you for 33. Good Lord. Strutters, yes. Or as the Irish would say, Parody tree. tree. Hope everyone is having a good Tony. Don't remind me. God, looking at him makes me sad in some ways because he is still so much better than what we've got. But such is life. What I would say, though, unbeaten in the Champions League. Was he holding us back? No, no, he wasn't. <laughs> Not in any way, but he's great. Hello, Matto. Oh. Did you watch the race? <laughs> Ferrari finally had a good strategy and normal Sauber pit stop felt weird. Wait, did they not have a one and a half minute pit stop this time? Holy shit. I saw a stat the other... Firstly, thank you very much for the four months. I saw a stat the other day. It was something like... um, The Sauber pit stops for like the first four races of the season had already eclipsed like some entire teams from last year or something ridiculous like that. Oh, you love to see it. The new guys as well. I think I've done well. Like Kona guy has done well. Gert Gillet looks decent. Not yet, obviously, but still. Um, right, we've got to pick a team for this. We should be okay, but I think there's a couple of changes that might need to be made, but I wanted to just check. I didn't want to do this off stream in case I balls it up. That way, when I balls it up, I get to do it in an audience instead, and it's way more fun. Uh, Padilla is injured. Actually, he's been injured for a while. Not that it matters, because he wasn't in the squad anyway. Um, Henry's in. Salon Country doesn't need to be. 
Abdu's already in, so is Fafana. We've got to be careful if we sell Fafana, because that will actually lose us a spot for homegrown. Not quite the best the manager can get. Not yet, no. <laughs> I do love how you guys have just started calling him Kona guy. <laughs> We might, I know someone suggested that to change his name, but I'm, I'm leaning towards it now. Uh, we've got a few injuries, which is not ideal. Melman's in. Brandau is not in, but he's also a bell piece. Lahovi. I kind of want to register Lahovi. The question is, who do I take out? How's the Spina out for? Nah, he's fine. It's Sp not Sp Sorry, the Spina and Doyle aren't out for long. 2000. <laughs> Montagna. Oh, yeah, good point. Montagna might be one of those guys that's 21, though. <clears throat> oh, sorry, under 21. Uh, Tunkara, Gwakune, we need. Motuang, I like. Rojas is important. Tunkara is fine. Paez has been really good. Cazola is fine. Oh, Montagna. Ah, he's homegrown. We can't get rid of him because would, we wouldn't be able to re register. Or would we? Hang on a minute. No. No, we wouldn't, would we? Although. Archie Brown, gone. We don't need Archie Brown because we're bringing in Luhovoy. Sorry, Luhovi to be the Archie Brown. Or is you laying for Kazola? Maybe. But Kazola's good. And he does offer us something slightly different. No, for rule in Malta. Um, there is in real life, but this save is slightly different to that. I can't remember what the rule in real I think the rule in real life is that you have to have three players, Maltese nationality in the squad, is it? I think that's the rule. Let me get Lu Luhovi in first. <clears throat> Well, Lignon, yeah, let me just look at how many centre-backs we've got so we can make a decision on that. Because remember, we've got injuries there too because we're missing um, Espino and I wonder if we might need cover. Let me just see. So Palacio is not that. So we've got Paez, Rojas, Tuncada. We kind of do need Lignon because otherwise we'd have no substitute um, centre-backs. And the guy, yeah, but... <sighs> If we take out the left wing back to put in the BWM, we would only have one left wing back. And I feel like left wing back is an area of our. I think, ironically, they're both super important. Oh, you mean for like. You mean for Gazola, maybe? Uh. So, Kadri doesn't need to be registered. Wait, hang on. Let me just. Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot you can play midfield, can't he? Yeah. Malika, we can't get rid of because it's. Well, we can, but there'd be no point. Mm, it's a toughie. You're probably right, though. And Kazola won't get annoyed because he's a breakthrough prospect. So it actually won't matter if we deregister him and bring in Gert instead, and it might give us a bit better of an option. Yeah, because that gives us Gonzalo Diaz to play further forward. Um, Padilla, if he's around, can play there. And technically, I think one of the others can play there, too. So would should it come to it, anyway? James, thank you for the 40 months! That's a lot of months! Holy God! Uh, so our academy rating, I believe, is 2020. Um, the only youth player... We have no youth players on our senior team, but we have a couple of players that are probably just good enough to be on the fringes of it, but they're out on loan at the moment because they're doing more good for other teams right now. So Matthew Side is the guy, basically. Um, he would probably get in our midfield from time to time, maybe as a substitute if he was actually here, but he's a starter for Goodyear, so it makes more sense to have him out there. Squatters, right? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, Kadri can cover it, but unfortunately, I don't think we'd be able to let him. Oh, yeah, that's right. We actually do have more centre-backs because of Kadri. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. He'll complain anyway, but we don't care. He won't complain because fringe player. Nunez might kick off, actually, because squad player. But I don't really think else... There's not much I can do about that, really. I don't want to piss off the brand new player, though. That could be kind of bad. Let me just see if there's anything I can wiggle out of. Let me sort by playing time. Just see if there's any other youngsters registered that maybe... Wow, Vega's a breakthrough prospect? So is Payas, actually. Gert Gillet. Maleka is an emergency backup, but he still wants to be in the squad. <clears throat> Do you know what? I actually think I deregistered Lignon. When I was looking at centre-backs, I forgot that Kadri wasn't registered but can still play. So we actually have one more centre-back than I thought. And he can cover both roles. So I reckon we actually get rid of him and then bring in... <clears throat> bring in... Where's he gone? Nunez. Because he's going to kick off if I don't put him in because he's a squad player. And... He gives us a bit of extra backup in the AM role, given that Padilla is going to miss the next two matches anyway. So now I think we're kind of nicely balanced there, and I don't think anyone's going to get pissed off other than players we couldn't care less about pissing off, basically. I think that's about right. Uh, right, let's look at Denmark. My God. Denmark, where I will be going in a couple of weeks because the flights have been booked. You love to see it. 13th. That's actually pretty good. 
Like, that's very good, in fact. What's that squad looking like these days? So, loads of guys at FC Copenhagen, as you would expect. Lots of domestic talent, but also lots of talent at big clubs, too. A couple of guys at Juve. Uh, what the hell? Hang on. Uh, holy shit. Thank you very much for the five gifted subs. Holy Lord. Yeah, we're going to Copenhagen. That guy is Dan Strong. Da Dan Strong is that guy. Legitimately. Look at the state of him. Wait. I swear he was on more money before. Holy Christ. Thank you so much for the five gifted. That's very, very kind of you. Holy Lord. Ah. Uh, how's it going, Marvel Racer? But yes, we're going to be enjoying a little bit of Copenhagen. Well, we're only going for the day, so it's not going to be... Um, hopefully, we get good weather, pretty much, because it's my friend's birthday. He wants to go somewhere a bit random and see somewhere cool. He wants to go to Copenhagen, so we're going to Copenhagen. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Two months worth of weekly friendlies. Yeah, that's um, always a bit of an issue. But particularly as you don't get anywhere near as much match fitness from friendlies as you do from other matches, but two a week is usually good, and they just rotate the squad around. Or take your first team 11 that you want to play and like keep the bench pretty much as static as you can for those games and just keep playing them so that way at least your first 11 and subs will probably be completely match fit going into those matches we used to have to do that back in the treaty united days because coming into those champions league knockouts our team would be dead we'd like win the group stage comfortably like we'd like that might have even been before there was the uh, big group system we'd, we'd win every game practically and then <clears throat> Learning out players that need to play in European teams in your nation. Um, you, well, the best thing I could suggest, um, throw in Kyrie, is exclamation mark loan farm. We have a graphic that you can work through that sh is basically all the things that I do to get loans out, uh, basically. Um, also, we've got a couple. Uh, it's impossible. Um, one, I don't know if there's a game that day, and two, like I said, I'm only going for the day, so it's my friend's birthday. I don't really want to be like persuading him to do something like that when that would take up pretty much the entire time we're there. The chances of there being a game there is actually fairly strong, but again, like I said, it's not really my thing. Well, sorry, that would be very much my thing. I was actually thinking about this on a walk yesterday, but like we're going to kind of experience the city and stuff. I think if I was there for longer, I could maybe sway that, but yeah. That is very interesting, Adrian. That feels like a max video that needs to happen. But yeah, exclamation mark Lone Farm. Stay, no, we're, we're literally go, going in the morning, coming back in the evening. I think it's that one, isn't it, Lone Farm? Yeah, this is the cheat sheet. Um, ah, shit. Cooper, do not oh, does it actually show it? I am familiar with over 600 yes, it does. I, I didn't realize it would actually load it inside Mediafire. But this is the thing um, that you can get access to. You can download it, obviously, so you can get the higher res version of stuff. But it's uh, made by Tuffers. It was brilliant. And this is all the stuff that we do to get players out on loan, basically. Bristolian Chris, thank you very much for the follow. How's it going? But yeah, work your way through that, and hopefully it will help you. But there are other factors that could be involved as well. But yeah, I'd love to go to an FCK game, but it's just not going to be time, is there, really? But I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, right. Okay, so yeah, Dan Strong, great player. Denmark, absolutely goated. What have they done? Have they, like, maybe gained this for a reason? So Euro qualifiers, they've absolutely annihilated their group, it looks like. Oh, no, they actually came behind Sweden. God, imagine that. 19 points. 19 points and coming second there is pretty impressive. Then again, Belgium. Belgium always seem to do that, don't they? It it would be curious to see how the game actually does handle that. Yeah. Polish regen. Uh, oh, this guy. Ah, uh, I remember looking at this guy. Five team group. I said, oh, of course. Well, exactly. Yeah. Sebastian uh, Wellner was, I definitely remember looking at this guy back when he was at Legia. Um, because, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Andorra won a match? They must have beaten Armenia, surely. It has to be Armenia. Oh, damn. They beat Georgia. Yeah, he's not that great. He's obviously just played well in a Poland team that didn't even play that well. Okay. Um, Did he score a lot? He got five goals. Oh, he got five and four appearances. That's what it is. Oh, was he rapid? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a bit rapid. Much like our boy. Um, That's why I feel like Perez, um, Perez is going to be so goaded for us because of that pure speed that he's got. Like, he's so fast out of the traps. Actually, I won't do it now. Um, actually, I will. Oh, no, we'll, get, we'll go to the match day. We're literally on the match day anyway. We could look at him there because we are still missing a couple of guys. Now, the situation is simple, right? Bayern Munich aren't even in the top 24 in the Champions League right now. They've only won one match so far. They've lost basically every game. They've done crap for the last few years in Europe in general. They're going to beat us no matter what we do because it's Bayern Munich. Are they 32nd?
That's insane. Didn't realize it was as low as that. Uh, that's a stall. Those are stalls. Uh, Gonzalo Diaz, absolutely not. Ah, Paya's making progress. Lovely to see that. How many did they beat us by? Oh, it will be close. Like, we'll still play well, I reckon, but they will still beat us. I reckon... Well, we can do a prediction for it, actually. I'll sort that out in a sec. Since we've been doing more predictions for games now. Bring it, throw it back to the old days. Uh, right. Ongoing focus update. He's still intriguing, that guy, actually. Cannon Yaoundé. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you very much for the five bits. Also, I don't know if this was on stream or off stream. Mr. Jobless is gone. He's finally left us. Left these shores. Tis good times. Uh, he's still wanted by people, but the problem is his wage, and... He's so cheap. But he has got two Argentina caps. The Ar Yeah, but the thing is, right, we have also done two straight streams of being able to get good results. So you never know. Oh, speaking of Bayer Leverkusen, he does have good pace. You will. Oh, sorry, Vaughn. I didn't know you were in today. <laughs> I was about to take full responsibility, I'll have you know. Ooh. So the reason for the stalls now is because the reason we lost Tony Sunday is because I kept rejecting offers. So by stalling the offers, it gives them less time to put in another bid, which then stops the bid from going up too high. And if the bid goes up too high, they might take the uh, take things into their own hands. So I'm stalling every offer as long as I can now. That way the player values don't go up too much to the point where the board might sell them. Because <laughs> I was just dicking about with that, seeing how much we could get for Tony. And then the board went, you know what, I think we'll take that. And I was like, no, what are we doing? Yeah, I need to remember how to do it. It's a shame I can't do it from inside. Or can I? Let me just see if I can do X Men predictions. Oh, I can! I actually can. You love to see it. Look at me with my with my knowledge. Sotelo is interesting, isn't he? The problem is, right, he would insist on being a starter. That that's the problem. And he wouldn't be because our other striker is better than him. Is it worth a look though? Start the majority of matches. Minimum release calls. Bring in a guy to help him settle. Strengthen the guy in the... Uh, you, what you're looking for is tactics, uh, Rodriguez. And they are actually now in there. Let's see if we could go... Yeah, because the wage isn't a big issue. Uh, let's see. Which one is the... Hang on. God, there's so much text in here. <laughs> so much text. Just give me lower wages. Uh, something tangible like higher wage. Uh, explicit references. We don't want that. Although that might be locked in anyway. Too much too soon. Playing time expectations. There we go. So, no. <laughs> yeah, the intake is all ease, as is the way. But you never know, right? We got an alright guy last year. Yeah, it would be good if they kind of just like... Give me the TLDR. Let, let's actually have a look. There's really no harm in triggering the clause to see what happens. The fact is, right? The moment we trigger the clause, PSG will bid on him anyway. Slightly interested... More I mean, that makes sense. He would obviously have more interest in joining PSG, as they are the only club higher than us in Europe right now. Oh, regular starter. That's not happening. That is fine, because we'll just cheese it. Regular starter, bring in a suitable player to help settle. That's fine. <laughs> because uh, for those of you that are not aware of how you can get around this promise, stay tuned, you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, okay, let's see. 6k a week. Get rid of that. That's fine. I'm not super bothered about... I think he's a flip and sell. Like, bring in, flip on type of player. Uh, this is season 13, so 12 and a half years in, roughly. Can't see you in day. It's also because, to be fair, it isn't on the screen right now. But yeah, we're in 2030. Hang on, I actually can't remember. I'll show you properly. Shouldn't be a thing with Chileans already at the club. That is a good point, Jim. I think the way that the... To just be... To steal man the game's argument for a second. I know, rarity, right? I think what it's saying is... They want... He wants you to bring in someone that he knows. Which is also extremely dumb. It's kind of like the footballing equivalent of give my dad a job. Um, but I think the idea and the... In theory, the, the roleplay element of that is that it's... Yeah, it's kind of like bring his girlfriend or like bring his mate from home who just happens to play football too. Um, it is still very dumb and the way that it's implemented is hilarious. Yeah, the regular starter workaround. Uh, the regular, it's not a regular starter workaround. It's a workaround for when players say that they want you to bring in a player to help them settle. So basically, if they say that and you can only get rid of like a couple of things and 
getting rid of that as well. It's sometimes you can just get rid of that and they won't care. But if they do care, leave that one in and get rid of the others because there's a workaround, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Turn the hazard from literally, yeah. It does happen a little bit true, I suppose. Uh, right, let's see if we'll go for that. All right, look. Okay, bud. To be fair, these wages are not obscene. So I'm happy to give him that. Right, so I can only show you this when he if he actually signs for us, in fairness, which I suspect that PSG will just buy him straight out in a minute anyway. But basically, if the player says, bring in a player to help me settle, once the player has signed for you, go out and sign any player who has the same nationality and based in. I feel like that's important. But it might... I don't know if it actually matters, but the best thing you can do is find a player that is of the same nationality and based in the same country they are currently in. Um, it might not matter, but cover your bases, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to... If this works, we'll go and sign some random, crappy, unattached Chilean player. They then join you and it fulfills the promise because they're of the same nationality. We tried this randomly um, in the Treaty 7 and it actually worked. It's funny as fuck, but it gets around silly promises like that, basically. Um one time we even cheesed it even more than that right so when we signed Kamga and lend you know our star midfielder who is cameroonian we were in the process of signing frank basala who is also cameroonian at the time now we'd already agreed the deal for frank but then when we did the deal for Kamga, we did something kind of cheesy so we let the deal for Kamga go through i delayed the deal for frank even though that was the earlier one i delayed it by a week waited for Kamga to join us then accepted the deal for frank then when he joined us it fulfilled the promise on um Kamga and lend and that was how we were able to sign him <laughs> But it does work. So we'll see. It's just a way of getting around some of the cheese that the game likes to throw at you. Has nationality as part of dual nationality? I don't know, Bolsa Rob. Uh, it's one of those things where, frankly, you probably don't even need to find out because there's so many players available for cheap that you can sign that meet all the requirements of what you're looking for that you probably won't ever need to do that. Like, we'll just look straight away for a Chilean amateur or a guy who's unattached but technically based in Chile. The, the based part probably isn't even that important. It's just like, why not cover all the things? Hello, Dean. How's your head? It probably would, yeah. Start Roy in the Champions League? Probably not. Like, we've got to be serious about this because Roy is definitely going to get game time today. I'll give you that. But we have to take this seriously because we want Champions League points. Uh, intake hasn't happened yet. We've only been streaming for 30 minutes. Um, that won't come through until March, I think. So if I press it, why would I press it? That's true. Yeah, I can't believe So when I went to the pub on Monday, on the Bank Holiday Monday, I went to Dean's wife's parents' house first um, to so that he could give me a lift. And there was like a like a stair gate to stop the dogs from getting in. And he's like holding his child, opens the stair gate, dog comes straight through, cleans him out, both of his legs out. He's still holding onto his child, smack, head, forehead, straight on the side of the corner of the stair gate. <laughs> Quite a nasty one, honestly. It's interesting that he put Kamga in there, yeah. I think it's because Kamga can tackle a little bit. But... Obviously, we prefer Kona Guy, even though he's not got the match sharpness because he had that slight injury. Um, hmm. 38, in fairness, yeah, you're right. No, you're right. It is 38 minutes. Technically, if you count the intro, it's even longer. But yeah, the intro, the intake won't be for a little while yet. It won't be until... I actually don't know because we've got a couple of these ones. How many scouts? I think we've got 15. No, 14. It actually might be 16. Surely. Well, the thing is, Vega does have the passing and vision that Kamga lacks. I say lax, isn't as good as. It's marginal. And also Vega has the left and right foot. But he only has five assists to Kamga's nine goals and two assists. It's like, mm. He has played worse. So there is that element of things. I just worry about him being on his wrong foot. Better player. Yeah, yeah, but better player is great. But he's... You could sort of apply that argument to anything, saying that technically Kamga's a better player than Tunkara, but I wouldn't play him as a centre-back, right? So I feel like the roles in the midfield are actually fairly specialised, where Kamga, honestly, doesn't actually fit our lineup that well anymore because he's neither a playmaker nor a ball winner. He's more of a... Comp Ironically, Kamga might even be better retrained as a Trek. Like, now that I'm looking at his effectiveness in our team, other than the flair, I actually think he'd probably make a more a more useful Trek Ortista than he would a central midfielder now in this current lineup. But I feel like that would also be kind of a waste of him because we have Diaz and the others. It's... He is quite Trekky, isn't he? Um, which is why he worked really well as a Mezala. It's... Yeah, it's a toughie. Um, well, we actually have quite a lot of players available. Although... Well, more than last time, anyway. <laughs> when we had nobody available. Uh, is there anyone that I feel like is not going to get on the pitch? Malaika. We don't want Malaika, but we want Gertjelay in there. 
Doesn't have a lot more dribbling composure and off the ball. Yeah, true, but... <sighs> yeah, I suppose. The off the ball is very high. Now that he's 26. Yes, you're right, you should. Absolutely. The question is, which one? <laughs> what would be the best approach for him? What is he of the two positions better at? Surely it has to be advanced playmaker, right? I love the ball in midfielder doesn't even show Is that just not even showing up in there? Am I missing something? Is the game just not even considering him to be... Just It has to be just AP. Yeah, I, I think it kind of has to be. I was debating whether we maybe try and train him to play further up as that trek. But I don't really see the point. Technically, right? He's comfortable enough covering that role. Gets in a position. That's a great point, actually. That right there is a very good point. I hadn't even considered that. Because the whole point of our ball in midfield is that we want him sitting kind of here, uh, which is where he does brilliantly. Let me just check if Kona guy's got any kind of weird PPMs. No, he doesn't, which is kind of useful, actually. Um, Lilo Melababoy, thank you very much for the follow. And Simon MC, thank you for the follows, guys. That, that's the thing, Jim. I feel like it's a waste of time training him there because he can cover the position if we need him to anyway. So, yeah, I think you're right. We get him back in there. Maybe it allows him to get his passing and vision up maybe one or two more points over the time that's left. But the same. So basically what we're doing, Simon, is we're trying to make Malta the best league in Europe um, by firstly winning stuff ourselves as Sirens, but also improving the other Maltese side so that they also go and win stuff in Europe. So far, that side of things has actually fairly gone quite gone fairly well. It's just because we've started so low down the rankings, it takes a very long time to see any true results. And that and Hammering are consistently disappointing me. Kids dives into tackles. No! Imagine that. Gets into opposition area. So what he does is he gets red carded in their box. The note on Luhavoy. I think it was me trying to sign him years ago. <laughs> yeah, so this is... I think we set a note on him for when he turned 18 so that we could um, immediately get a contract in on him. He didn't say yes at the time, but we managed to sign him anyway. So yes, it's the sign please new note. <laughs> It's they're very fun save Simon because it gives you an end game beyond just win the Champions League, which we haven't done, I might add. Um because a lot of saves just like if you're playing in Europe anyway, the goal is obviously like win the Champions League, but then what? And I feel like that's what a lot of people maybe lose interest in their saves because it's kinda like you kind of feel like you've maxed out. Whereas with this save, that's only one step in the ladder, right? And also when you start caring about the other clubs doing well in Europe, it becomes extremely fun. Like we watch games from other Maltese sides in Europe because we're all on their team as well. And so you essentially end up supporting, like, in theory, seven to eight clubs towards the end of the save. Now, we're still are in we're still in sort of the mid to early stages of it so far, but I think next year things take it up a notch because we get five teams in Europe and we're pretty much guaranteed someone in the group stage, which is dope. So then your players. Um, so you actually, you can do that, but that's really difficult to get it to work because you have to, ex you have to get them to be able to buy the players. So we choose to build a loan farm instead where we sign loads of players that are not quite good enough for us, but have okay potential. And then we loan them out to the other Maltese sides when they're still quite young. So then they develop into really good players at the other Maltese clubs that they would never be able to sign themselves because they've developed on loan from us. So we give them a guy with like one star CA, but four star PA, which if he had four star CA, they'd never be able to sign him. But if he develops out on loan there into that player, then they get a four star player, which can absolutely carry them. Uh, to give you an idea, on the last time we did this in Hungary, we literally had a guy who was four star, four star out on loan at another Hungarian side killing them sorry not killing them. absolutely killing it in europe like we had multiple hungarian sides win i think we had like five conference leagues four europa leagues and a load of champions leagues and only we were the only ones that won the champions league all the others were other hungarian sides it's amazing how did us roll yeah i still don't know who's emerged there it, it can't be hammering because they are already established for me i feel like it could be good yeah but i do wonder if it might end up being someone like sweetie no one's really taken that mantle just yet. Anyway, sorry, I've been stalling again, haven't I? Um, right, yeah. Hamron are very much the French Farris of the say. The ones that are always there, but then sort of fall away. Luta, I thought it was going to be Luta, but then it just kind of... They've really been mid for a while now. They took all those loans from us and have barely taken anyone useful since. Okay, here we go. But yeah, so we currently have... Oh, Christ, how many? It was minus 82 loans, which is... I think it's 174 loans. Where the minus 82 is in loans. That's how many we have. Did I not put motor? Oh, crap. I forgot about Krastev. 
Oh, I should have put Krastev on. Inst Sorry, I should have put Motwang on instead of Montano. Oh, well. Oh, no, Krastev is there. Yeah, no, we're fine. Yeah, sorry, I thought I had Krastev in there. Ooh. I can't just with high use rate, but low standing. Come for an interesting challenge. Yeah, it's... There might be someone... You, honestly, Rob, if you looked in the editor, you could probably find someone who kind of fits the bill. But I, I, I wouldn't know off the top of my head, you know? Yeah, Krastev's actually... I think Krastev and Motwang are very, very good. It's a battle between the two of them as to who maybe overtakes Vida one day. My money's on Krastev. He seems to have finally started to emerge, but statistically, their underlying numbers are really good. It's been a while, like, Undoi could never. The numbers he put up in that position were just never even on the same level. Rocky all the place. Yeah, exactly. But we've coded it into the game, or into the database, that makes, basically makes it so... You know when you send a player out on loan, Ming, and they can't play against you? Um, we didn't want that to be the case, because it would make it too easy. So we've coded it into the database, that means that they, are, they have to be allowed to play against you as well. Davis must be fairly old. Uh... 35. In fact, they've got a lot of real players in this lineup. Kerfeld, who's 32. Wow, you must be really young at the start. Pineev, who's 31. We've also got Popovic up top, who's 30 years old. Good player, though, to be fair. But I say good player. They're, they're good players, but they're not Bayern Munich good. Do you know what I mean? Like, Paul Wanner probably is. Yeah, that's more like... Okay, I realise some, some of my face cam is hiding it. That's more like what you'd expect out of a Bayern Munich player. But it seems like some of them are just very mid. Right, let's go. And Melman can play there, true. You just get a skate boost. Vida's just... He's a different beast. We're still going to lose to them, bear in mind. Because it just... It is inevitable, uh, unfortunately. this is They are still Bayern Munich. So, so no matter what we do, we'll probably still lose. But I'm trying to be... No, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to be properly optimistic here. Oh, see you later, Simon. Have a great day. I'm going to choose to be optimistic. I reckon we can actually do this. And bear in mind, if we were to win this game, that would all but qualify us for the uh, top eight. Because it would give us 17 points with a game in hand. Well, like a game to spare, I suppose. And usually 17 is more than enough to get you qualified as top eight. Oh, dangerous. Come on. Here we go. Right, now he needs to make that run over the top, but he's not done it. Oh, careful. Nice. Oh, wait, go on. Keep it up. Go on, Perez. Go on, Perez. Oh, my goodness me. Juan Carlos Perez, 1-0 Cyrus. This man is going to lead us to glory. Someone said it in the uh, on the recap video when I showed the strike, showed him. They were like, that's the guy you win the Champions League with. Horrendous defending from Bayern here. But look at the determination from Perez. Like, look how far away from that ball he is. Just go straight for it. Bang. Pretty surprised to see him there. Really? But that's what I mean inside, right? You wouldn't... Knowing what you know about him and how he's played for you at Honvid, I'm sure he's been really apt and probably quite capable for you at Honvid, but you wouldn't expect to see him at Bayern Munich, would you? That's the thing. I don't feel like... I mean, watch now he'll score a hat-trick against us. Camgren Lent. Perez again. Oh, go on, Perez. Oh, he should have maybe scored there. This is why the 30 seconds... Yeah, camera... Oh, hang on. <laughs> I'll do it once the highlight starts. That was two more amazing chances, right? So the same settings I use, TV, and then the zoom all the way out on the left and all the way out on the right. Sorry, height on the way the left. So it makes it the lowest, but also the most zoomed in. I find that it's the one that most closely matches what I like to see from the TV setups. Cleared away. We've started this game like a like a train. Diaz, Vida. Oh, go on, Kadri, have a pop. Oh, even better. Unless we lose this ball and get counterattacked, that would be bad. But Vida's due an assist in Europe, I feel like. He's, this is some lovely link up. This is so patient from us as well. Just playing it around, probing, waiting for our moment, not overplaying it. Well, we are a little bit, but there's just not been a an incisive pass on for us so far. We've managed to maintain possession, not just rushing ourselves. We're playing super well. Like, keeping the possession nicely. There's always a man free for us. That's why I love this system. Diaz, quasi a war. Oh, he could look back inside here. Or he could just score. It's two. Sirens two. Bayern Munich two. Seydoux, quasi a war. I probably should have started Melman, actually. But then he had had a couple of proper shit games, hadn't he? And we did say that it was maybe a chance for... Qua what a passage of play that was, by the way. We held onto that ball for about 30 passes. And just waited for our moment. I'm surprised this gets through the defender. That's shocking defending. but And actually, probably worse goalkeeping. Which one to play FF? Ah, can't be done. Teams do well. That's that's the main thing, right? But it is weird to see him up front for Bayern. Maybe their actual striker could be injured, in fairness, and he's maybe their second. Oh, he did, didn't he? Yeah, you're right. Melman wasn't exactly in the best fitness as well, which might be an opportunity for Quasi. Oh, careful. There we go, though. This is beautiful. 
If we beat Bayern, it would show off just how washed they actually are in this save. But there's a long way to go yet. And it helps us gain some ground on Germany, I suppose, technically. This would easily... If we win this match, this would be our best ever season in the Champions League already. And we've still got a game to spare. Look at this football. Ah, oh, he's lost it. Don't give them even a sniff. Because the moment they get a goal, you know this game absolutely flips on its head. That's the problem. Right, there we go. Beautiful play. Oh, what on earth? Careful, lads. Oh, no. We're going to concede, aren't we? I can feel it. It's a long highlight. Loads of mistakes. I still think they score. Yeah, all right. And there it is. Unfortunately, that's one of those you know it's coming kind of goals. Um, that's just... Oh, that's actually shocking from Kadri. I thought that was the goalkeeper. But that was actually Kadri's fault. The keeper's getting that. He's totally getting that. And Kadri's just got in his way. Uh, right, the rep roll begins. Uh, we've actually not created that many chances in this game so far. I must admit, we've just looked really good in certain scenarios. As Paez heads it over the crossbar. Oh, right. Tell it we go. Yeah, it's the long highlights like that. And the way we kept giving the ball away randomly, the players would make really weird decisions. Like uh, when Palacios heads that ball to nobody. Um, oh, no, please. Don't, don't do this to me. Good save. Bloody hell. Yeah, you, when you play FML as much as we do, or, or I do certainly, you, you just start to see patterns sometimes in certain passages of play, and you can sometimes... It's better than it was. It used to be much worse last year. Yeah, fair enough, Potato. I mean, that's not a bad shout. I, I like... That's why I wanted to start the Make This Your Next Save thing, um, because it would give people, like, starting points are a little bit different than just, you know, the default at the start of the game. For, some, for no reason. Yes! All he has to do there is either pass it to his goalkeeper for a long-range distribution or just hold on a possession like we've been doing the entire half. It's that kind of weird decision-making. Now, he maybe has low consistency, which means his CA is not going to be at its max. Um, what's his decisions? 13. It's kind of mid, but you'd expect him to occasionally make a mistake, right? Oh, yeah, on the old FMs, you would be able to almost instantly. I still don't think we win this game, you know. I have a horrible feeling that Bayern are going to create bear in mind almost all of their xg came from that goal because it was a tap in into an open net oh dear diaz is doing some break dancing <laughs> i love that so much tell you what we might have a short free kick routine on here look at where quasi is i wonder if you could play this pass he's just gonna shoot of course oh no he's gone short imagine <laughs> oh my god I'm telling you, the short free kicks are unbelievably overpowered. Because if you're in free kick scoring range, you'll just score, right? But if you're slightly further out, oh my goodness me. That might be one of the best free kick goals we've ever skied, except for that one against Liverpool a few years ago. Look at this. Picks out the short pass, one touch out of his feet, bends it in. Oh, it's like a Willian goal. That was sensational. I have to clip that. There we go. It's one for you, Wandering Skylight. Holy God, it's 3-1. Yes, and just randomly... We've actually scored every shot on target, it must be said. Like, so fair play. It just gives us a bit of hope. Palacios actually had a really poor day, and I wonder if this might be the type of game that Lahovi could come in and actually do a job. Quasi's knackered. Also, I've just realised I, I meant to make early uh, subs than this, didn't I? I forgot we're doing 60-minute subs now, aren't we, because of the uh, new tactic. Yeah, we're going to go Lahovi. He's pleased as well, good body language. Defence looks okay. We're 3-1 up. Do we do Roy? Do we do 22 minutes of Roy Fleming? I'm tempted, you know. Just to keep Perez... Sorry, Perez fresh. Midfield's okay. Co's not... Kind of guy's not been amazing. I might even do Gert Gillet. And then save the other sub for Diaz a bit later. And maybe get Nunez in. 22 minutes of, of Roy. Watch us piss this away now. Now that I've said that. I'm hoping we can just hang on. It feels like we haven't actually seen that much of Bayern in this game. Lahovi with the ball in. Cleared away. Oh, I thought Roy was going to get that then. But here he is. Second appearance, I think, in the Champions League. He has scored in Champions League for us. Oh, careful here, lads. Don't lose the ball here. This could be desperately awful for us if we were to lose possession here because we actually have like a five on zero. Right, Kamga, that's more like it. Lahovi's made his way back over. I'm hoping he turns into a success for us. Oh, that's a pass. Wait a minute. Oh, I thought that was going straight to Roy's feet. That would have been amazing. Right, Lahovi. 
Great touch out of his feet. Can he get this across to Roy? Ball across to Fleming! Oh, Roy! What a chance for an open play goal for Roy Fleming that was. He's honestly got to be burying that, and I am horribly worried that that's going to be three all. I thought he wins the ball there, personally. I'm not sure that was even in the box, honestly. <sighs> it's such an FM you're playing in Europe penalty, isn't it? Right, Kadri against... Sorry, Freitas against Davis. And he saved another one. That's Freitas' second penalty save in Europe this season. He saved one against City that saved us a point as well. Holy shit. We've got very lucky in this game too. But, again, the reason we play the way we do is to get luck. Is to have those chances to get lucky. Oh, God, he's so much space out wide. They're just going to score anyway, aren't they? Oh, what defending from Lahovi. Freitas has genuinely been such an upgrade. You're right. No, he has. It's like the game's tried to wreck us, but we've somehow come out on top. Right. Eric Nunez for the final 10 minutes because it's our last sub. Freitas is just a one-man stopping the nonsense machine. I mean... I would say we're in a pretty good spot now at 3-1 up that we're going to qualify for the next round of the Champions League. And in fact, oh, well, go on, one more. Imagine if we got a fourth goal against Bayern Munich. I understand now why they're down there. They can't even score a penalty. Like, they've had two chances in this game, basically. A penalty and a tap-in where it was a mistake from our defender and nothing else, pretty much. Yeah, he's literally like a, an Uno reverse card. When the game tries to fuck you, Frey S just goes, no. 3-2 would be a little bit less good, but I don't think we can see two goals in the last minute of the match. Right? <laughs> right, chat? I wonder if a little bit of tiredness is starting to come in. Oh, God. One is through. And to be fair, Freitas' positioning on that was utterly gopping. But you know what? I'll, I'll let him have that. What I don't want to see is the kickoff. <laughs> well, I, very much, that was, I don't know how I'll um, Lahovi missed that, by the way. Freitas, what is he doing? Hmm... Just, I don't want to see any more highlights, FM. Nice. All right. Fortunate again, yes. But it's one of those games where almost all of their XG came from the penalty and the tapping. It wasn't like they created loads against us. And that's always a good sign. Not that we were that particularly great either. And we had that great chance with Roy, which he actually should have buried in a way. Uh, so we did get lucky though, still. And Freitas was fantastic. But there we go. That's it. We've managed to qualify for the next round of the Champions League. We are still unbeaten and have 17 points in Europe. God, imagine if we actually had some help this year. <laughs> It'd just be so nice if we'd had some help. Uh, I think that all but qualifies us for top eight as well. Not technically yet, I don't think. How did Inter get or have they not played yet? No, they've still got a game to go. Great news for us, though. Coefficients got up yet more. Um, 6.1. Now, we'll obviously get a boot. A, a boop? We're going to get a boop, chat. We'll get a bump when we actually reach the... um, When we officially get to the next round. But you can see the difference that it makes with not having other help in Europe. Because we've been brilliant this year. Christ, Germany have... Yeah, the Germany are doing really bad, aren't they? <laughs> Another 2.4 million pounds. Good money. Love to see it. Okay. See what happens on the Wednesday games. And that will probably qualify us, I should say. I still want to not lose to Inter, though. Because going unbeaten in the Champions League group, I think, is a real statement of, statement of intent. Now, we have got a bit fortunate in some of these games. I think it's undeniable. But I'd much rather get fortunate than... Uh, I'd much rather be fortunate than unfortunate, obviously. But I think what's happened is that we're playing a tactic that gives us more opportunities to be fortunate and less to be unfortunate. Also, that when we are unfortunate, it doesn't matter as much. I think sometimes you just got to go with that kind of approach. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> right, let me get rid of that. Now I can stay hydrated. Freitas has been sensational. He he reminds me of like prime burnt Vizhnevsky when we first got him, when we were playing weaker opposition. He feels like he could do that, but against better teams. Hello, Chris. Uh, you did. We managed to win by three goals to one, and Freitas saved a penalty. So we are now officially top of the Champions League group until Wednesday, when PSG almost certainly win again. I hope there's no massive bids in it. Christ, these are starting to get a bit big. I think we're okay, though, because we are rich. Oh, was it 3-2? I think it was. Oh, it was 3-2. You're right. Yeah, because Wanna got that one in the stoppage time, didn't he? Yeah. I'm preparing to ignore that. <laughs> uh, oh. 
I thought that was a song request, bay. Because of the little dash. Could I interest you in Jakob Plöner? Actually, it's just Plöner, isn't it? He's out of contract. You never know. Right. Uh, I kind of want to do that as a song request. That would be funny. Shrezzers. Oh, great shout. I haven't listened to Shrezzers in ages. I love me a bit of metalcore with saxophones. Right. AC Leopards. Enoch Yima. He's only 17. He might be worth a scout. Resolute Personality. Congo, which is an interest, slightly more off the beaten track. Oh, let's see. Benfica win. PSG win. Inter win. But yep, us and PSG are officially the only teams that have qualified as top eight already. Do we get coefficient points now or do we have to wait? We were at 6.1 before, weren't we? Nah, so we don't get them until it actually finishes officially. Eurovision would discuss. You'd think so, right? Shrezzers would have been perfect, except I don't think they're. Actually, I can't remember where they're from. So we are officially in. Round of 16. Bang. Love to see it. Also, FC Copenhagen have fallen off. And Frank Vert lost. Yep. Good point. Which means. So Bayern at Leverkusen. Oh, there's still a chance that Germany could lose three sides here. The only Gladbach <laughs> are holding the flag for Germany here. <laughs> the, uh, I guess you could say Frankfurt are as well. But the only one who look competent are Borussia Mönchengladbach. Yeah, get the Pope in. Wow. That's just going to make it more expensive, though, isn't it? Oh, there you go. They could get They could get it. Well, not at the moment. They can't. But they could, you know. One day. Do like some treasures. Right. Uh, That's decline. Cool. For progress, just wins and draws. No, no, you do. Um, so basically, you get what's called round progression points. So at the end of the uh, the group stages, you get assigned um, coefficient points, which I believe is the quality, sometimes as much as two wins for progression. Um, either, if, I think you get more for top eight, and then a little bit less if you just pure out and out qualify. And then you are assigned more coefficient points based on qualification through the rounds beyond the round of 16. Uh, now, it sort of staggers itself down in the Europa League and the Conference League. So in the Conference League, you only get progression for first, second, and third in the uh, thingy, but you do get extra coefficient points for it. Hence why at the end of it, England just get this giant chunk of points and you're like, hey, what happened? <laughs> it used to confuse us all the time as to why England all of a sudden had loads of points and it's because they get like five teams through. Twitch might glitch. Oh, I've got to see this. Do you think it might have done? <laughs> Even though Hadrian's just really trying to make a point. <laughs> He's just really rubbing in yesterday's result with me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're not letting you go to PSG. Absolutely not. I know. Spammy mods. How dare you? I wonder if Fida might have a better chance of convincing him because they play in the same position. Never mind. Uh, and Doi? Oh, you silly man. Oh, well. It's Adrian's wall of text. Okay, so we've only upset two players this time around. It's not the end of the world. Uh, Tasana. Oh, I love not having to care where I click this time because of Mr. Jobless not being around anymore. But yeah, it's useful to know that, Carlos, because it means you can sort of... Oh, my God. Oh, that scared the shit out of me. I thought that was another one of these we've accepted a bit above your head kind of craps. Uh, we don't care about those. Right, so we rest for Luta. Also, we're on a plus 65 goal difference now. We only need another 15 goals in our last 10 games. Um, what job did he get? Um, I can't imagine he got any job. He's most likely just an unemployed scout. Yeah. <laughs> And he probably will remain that way. I suspect. Unless he miraculously gets really good. Which he won't. Uh, they're not landing casually. And certainly not for £1.8 million. That's hilarious. Oh, one day the values might return. One day. Although, four years in and I've seen no signs of it yet. Every year it's the same thing. They go up in the window, then drop down to nothing. Sick heart. Little man! Thank you very much for the five months. How is your Sunday going, my friend? Looks like Brunda have got a, a few lads here. Might be worth a little scout on them, but I suspect... There's one from, I believe, the latest youth intake here. This uh, Gulbranson. A DM with nine tackling, and he's he's kind of a deep-line playmaker, isn't he? Oh, dear. Right. Almost over. Ah, I've got... Wow. Imagine my shock that two right wingbacks think that the other right wingback should leave. Imagine. Um... Held against their will. Mm -hmm. Expressionless. Come on, Vida. Be better than that. Silly peoples. I love that you backing down to them doesn't make a promise. It just kind of 
leaves it. Where if it comes out, you let me sign for Yeah, I know, but as long as no one else gets in there, you should be okay, right? Hi, Just set a note on the Hi, player Chelsea. on their birthday. That's what I always do. Jaytiz, thank you for 15 months. How are you, my friend? Hope you've had a fantastic weekend. I keep expecting to see Roy in there, but now he's not even in there anyway. Last year, how many years did you wait for the values to go up? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, because last year, remember, we were with Hungary, so it's an entirely different system, and it was, an, it's a different, it was a different game with a different database and different rules, so it's kind of not comparable. Um, so in Hungary, they went up just kind of naturally, but not, yeah. And they didn't crash in the same way. They did, they did still crash a little bit, but nowhere near the, as bad as this, obviously. Uh, right, we'll have to say no to the country ones there as well. And B plays! Thank you for the follow. Right, so we rest for looter. That is something, I suppose. Intimate Kazolanov. Oh, Matthew Pace, you say? Yes, please. Nice. Our other youth prospect from a few years ago. Going out Lodison Leia. He's not even that awful. He's not great, but he's no Matthew Sine, obviously. Right. Wow. 900 grand for Cam Grimland is unhinged. God, that goal reference is crazy. Yeah, this year we had like a... This was like the Wall Street crash. This was like 1928 levels crash, right? Um, whereas the one on the MTK was more like little dip, you know? Uh, let's have a look at these guys as well. No. Anyone new? Irving Bravo. Good name. Oh, wait. I think we must already be scouting him as it goes. More Great Depression. Yeah, exactly. Like, people queuing up outside the to get bread and also players kind of thing, you know? <laughs> back within five years, others ten. Yeah, it's so... I hope we at least get, like, some kind of bounce back because that would be a real shitter. Because it's the sort of thing that would absolutely destroy us late game in this save. Say we're... <laughs> just sent a back ration card. Oh, I'll have a candry, please. I'm sorry we sold him earlier. It would suck in the late game if we're, like, number two nation or something, winning Champions Leagues, and all our players are worth a million pounds would be utterly outrageous. Uh, right, so I'm actually just going to take the team that played the last game and then just swap everyone out rather than doing a quick pick because this way we know that it's not just going to put the same players in. Uh, Nunez would be a really good start here, actually. Now maybe Vega. Go, obviously. Mr. Gillet, no problem. Um, Luhovi, I want to give more football to. Since Krastev's being a silly billy, I'm going to start Motwang just to get his match fitness up as well while we're here. Uh, Espino can't play. Rojas? I forgot about Rojas. All players on freeze. Basically, yeah. It's the sort of situation you could accidentally stumble into. And, oh, it's a shame that Rob Hilton's not fit yet. I guess Thomas Rappel? It's not who I want to play there, of course. Top 12-ish. Oh, that's interesting because, oh, in rep. Hmm. We're not going to be close to that for a while. So, like, we're going to go 12th most likely this season in terms of coefficient, but we're still, unfortunately, like, 30th in rep. We're getting there. Yeah, Archie Brown might be better, honestly. If loan players ask for squad player and above, as long as the loan players are already on loan, it doesn't matter. So if the player's out on loan and they're looking to extend their contract, if they want squad player, provided the wage demand isn't too high, I wouldn't matter. It, it, as in, it won't matter because as long as they're out on loan, they won't, they'll be, that their kind of squad status for you doesn't actually matter too much. And I found that it doesn't seem to affect their willingness to go back out on loan in my experience thus far. We have some guys that are out on loan at the moment who have squad player status because they randomly requested it. But what I would say is if you're trying to sign players for Loan Farm, don't give them that status before you actually bring them out, get them out on loan. So if you're looking at a player and go, oh, he'd be good for the Loan Farm, but they want squad player, don't even touch them because they will get pissed at you for all kinds of reasons, basically. They'll be like, curious as to why you're trying to loan them out and stuff like that. Keeps the values quite low. Yeah, the one advantage you do have with, with Vaduz, oh, sorry, with Vaduz, is with it's just you... If you have an amazing season, you can get a sick load of points. Balanced bench, maybe. To be fair, it would have most of the good guys on the bench, but I think, honestly, if I I think if I clear the bench and just get it to pick the unpicked positions, it'll probably put the same players on the bench anyway, but I might just let it do that anyway, just to see what it comes up with. I suspect it'll be a very similar lineup. And it might just help us dig us out of a hole if they end up coming on for like 20 minutes. I don't think it's the end of the world, provided they don't get injured. Touch, Watch me say that, and then we end up losing this match because of it. Or worse, get an injury in it. This probably won't be a large result, I suspect. This is probably going to be... Actually, this might not be a draw, I think. I can't believe we've got 17 points in the Champions League. That's amazing. 
Three nil. And Henry, well, Henry really has fallen off, right? They had no, we, this back line stopped them having a single shot. Damn. That's not the first time this season we've managed that. Henry did score, Melman scores, Nunez scored, and Henry misses a penalty. Um, yeah, he's not it right now, but he's still better than Fafana. And the goal difference continues to climb. We're only now 11 goals away from our record goal scoring season, and we're surely going to do it. New TV deal. The thing is that the TV deals don't really do a lot. They do improve a little bit, but they're not... They still don't scale as efficiently as they should do, basically. Which is why we had to take matters into our own hands and actually create our own TV setup. Semi conference gets Champions League football almost every time. Well, yeah. Um, I've played the Oh, no, almost certainly not. 150. Fucking hell. Yeah, we're not going to quite get that. I reckon we can get 100 goals, though. Hang on. They've scored nine goals. Oh, my God. I'm starting to understand why they didn't have a shot against them. They've scored nine times this season. Then again, both of the relegation threatened clubs have also only scored 10 each. But the fact that Luter have won five games. <laughs> Imagine getting five wins while I'm scoring nine goals all season. To be fair, their defense has actually been pretty solid because they'd only conceded 17 before that, which is one of the best in the league. Yeah, what are they even playing? I think it was a 4-4-2, wasn't it? How are you scoring only nine goals with a 4-4-2? Yeah, sweet. Did they draw again? Oh my god, they didn't, did they? Have they not played yet? No. Yeah, they were on five straight draws. Hello, Divine Chicken Wings. Do you reckon they could score under 15 goals this season? That would be incredible. Speaking of the... How's the second tier looking? It's still looking kind of tight, and Nash are finally not bottling it. Unlike Valletta, who massively are. I swear Valletta were, like, miles clear at one point. Oh. I'm fairly certain after, like, about here, Valletta were, like, seven points clear. Yeah, Pembroke are our affiliate side, and they're not very good. Although, look at Dingley. Up in sixth. This might be the best season Dingley have ever had in this save. It begins. Now, bear in mind, we're probably going to get rid of Pembroke the moment we get three-star rep so we can get a foreign affiliate. Six... Oh, Jesus. Oh, they're... What if they're B-teams like that, too? Do you know they're kind of... They're not really... They're, they're fairly mid. Oh, they still yes, haven't many goals, soon. though. Lily, thank you for the not. follow. We will get top-tier Swallows. It can be done. But yeah, Pembroke will be the first to go once we finally can get that three-star reputation. He's an influential player. He's not, though, is he really? Like, we'll just sell him. Uh, actually, I could do this first. There you go. I refuse to make promises in there at all now. Uh, Start of rep. Only see the text description. Um, I don't know if that's not because it's the latest version or something, but it should just be there. Um, Or it could be... We might get it, Steve. Yeah, I don't know what it updates. We've got to be... Hang on. Oh, yeah, it doesn't update live, does it? FM23. Um, Then I... I don't know if that's even possible in that skin, because this is FM24. Ooh, Rail Saucy, that dude. James, when you see this on the VOD, which hopefully you will do, fucking get in. Your career's moving on again. Love to see it. Got the big career move to the... to Europe for Ibar. Killed it at Ibar over two years, and now, bang, Rail Saucy, that are in for our boy. Big team. Oh, I see. But does the big list update? As in the... Uh, National and three-star rep. Uh, three st I think it still technically would say national at three stars. I can't remember. I can't remember what the syntax is. But, yeah, I genuinely can't remember. Let me have a look. We can find out, though. Um, oh, we want this one, isn't it? Club list. Rep rating. That's what I want. We just find another three-star team so we can see. So like, these are all three-star teams, like Las Palmas. Yeah, so they're still technically national, but they are higher national than we are. Um, curious to see where we slot in here, actually. Now, I don't know when this updates. This might be a seasonal update thing. Uh, national 3.5. Oh, does it actually say? Oh, it literally does. I'm a moron, yeah. 
So yeah, natural state takes a while, but as long as you get three stars, that's kind of where it is. I'll just scroll down a bit. So we should be in it's kind of mad that our reputation is still lower than teams like Benevento, who literally play in the third tier of Italy. Yeah, that season update thing is kind of the thing. I do love that we're, we we have a lower rep than Rotherham. We're, we're top of the Champions League in the <laughs> It'll take a little while. Yeah, Benevento, it's because it hasn't decayed as much. Um, it does decay fairly. Well, it doesn't decay that slow, does it? But they have... I can't believe they're in... Are they already in the Mighty Menace? I mean, I don't need to, do they? They've knocked themselves enough. I'm like the first team in the AFL to get relegated this year because of that loss to Plymouth at the weekend. Or was it Friday? Another draw for Sweetie here would be funny. They're still trying to find more on the map. Hey, Sweetie, you won a game. Look at them go. It's actually quite a good result. Bows on no mugs. They beat Real Madrid. Yeah, it's... I guess it's like... Rep takes a little while to build up, but I feel like by now our reputation should start to have crept up a little bit faster. But I suppose you've got to have some kind of system of balance to it, right? Uh, Motemba Pembe. Frank Moak. Oh, he's not great, is he? Uh, Geishel. Oh, there's a, there's a Saka. You've got to scout him. No, I, I, I never forget. It was between like 2005 and 2008, wasn't it, when Rotherham won the Champions League three times in a row. It's crazy. Not many people know them. Yeah, I mean, that's clearly what it is. Um, so I suppose you... Because basically, if we were done... Say when we first kind of got to where we were, I think that we'd be... In real life, we'd be described as a flash in the pan that would be sort of picked apart and then would disappear. If I think like Malaga, when they were really good in Europe for a little bit. Um, was it? Yeah, it was Malaga, wasn't it? I know they had loads of money and that sort of defeats the point. But like, the fact that we've now continued it, it means it takes a while for other teams to be like, oh, actually, they are genuinely kind of good. Uh, he... We don't care about that. We'll just don't inform me again. Klaxvik, yes, yeah. Oh, it wasn't that, right. It was this one. I'm hoping that deadline day... I've noticed that January's been a bit thin on the ground as far as loans out goes. The interest hasn't really been there in a lot of our players, weirdly. So we might try another... Since there's a couple of days to go, now might be a good time for a cheeky little flick-on, flick-off of dev list. For the time being. Actually, I won't do it on anyone who's already got a bid on. Which I think is just Matthew Pace. Just in case taking him off the dev list like cancels it for some reason. So we'll remove from dev list. And we add them back to it, because for some reason this does a thing. Do you know if there's a train Which coming good. anytime soon? Oh yeah, so very uh, soon. Uh, the tweet. Thank you no. very much for the follow. Yeah, exactly, because it was against Dortmund, wasn't it? When uh, Dortmund versus Malaga was the game, was it not? Or was there a different one? Yeah, because that was the, the year of the Dortmund Bayern final, wasn't it? Stall that out there. Stall that. Whoa, 14 million. Actually, it was 18 million. Christ. Please don't do a silly the board. Zuri, okay. Well, good for them, I suppose. Exactly, yeah. So I feel like we've got our, we've got our dues to do. Just kind of see if that was actually going to drum up. I mean, it's drummed up loads of interest. Um, I think this almost does the same thing as offering them out. Which, in a way, is probably... Wow, the fact that Roy's getting offers from, like... Teams in, like... The championship is crazy. No, that happened. Well, yes. That's what we're doing, you melon. Huh? Yeah, that didn't appear to actually do anything useful. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, yeah. That's the first time anyone's actually... Was that... Yeah, it was a Premier League, Bournemouth. Bloody hell. It shows the levels that Roy's operating on. Right now, I'll take those same players, and this time I'll offer them out for loan. What if it provides different clubs? The idea being that basically we're going to hopefully go into deadline day and maybe get a couple of extra loans out. Try to get up to MTK numbers because we're pretty close to like minus 70 something. Only a couple more. Chat, it's just occurred to me that at no point did PSG try and match this offer. I totally forgot that we even put a bid in on Benjamin Sotelo. <laughs> just randomly PSG just thought, nah, don't want this particularly excellent striker. We've just veeded them. Right, so that means we get to show you this thing. So, if you remember earlier, I was saying that if a player has a promise that you're bringing someone to help them settle, this is how you do that. This is how you cheese it. So, he is one of those players. I'm not being funny, but we might even have a look at an intermediary on him immediately. I'm curious. We could literally flip him immediately and get cash. But anyway, for the time being, we won't do that. Um, Mirvang, I'm going to have to sign up, unless he's wanted by someone. They won the cup. They actually won the cup. No way. That's amazing. Fair play. 
it's incredible what they do when you look at their sort of the policies of the football club shitting out that's a lot of money but all right then he's a sign and flip type of chappy short deal is possible nice right so now what we do is we find a chilean player just a random chilean unattached player that's all we're looking for uh so nationality is Ch chile south america chile for the time being just to keep our bases covered i will actually say based oh no we want no, we can't do that because it's club, isn't it? Uh, so we just want a random amateur or potentially unattached him. Offers up. Um, the thing is, it will also kick off. And I don't know if we've got to have time to... With the, the fact that we've not got a lot of time left in the window, I don't know if there'll be enough time for the offers to go up. That's the issue. Well, we've actually used a lot of our transfer budget, haven't we? Um, let's just see if we can find amateur Chilean. There we go. No problem. Chilean. <laughs> Uh, why are they all so old? Oh, no, wait. There we go. Right. Boris Rocco. In you come, Boz. Office for intermediary. Hang on. Oh, so... Because I swear you suggested this last time and it didn't do that at all. But we'll, we will try it again. Uh, oh, he's under 18. Yep, you're right. We need an 18. Or, so we'll have the 20-year-old. We'll have... René Viveros. Because it's called René Viveros. Approach the sign. Youngster, assistant loan. I mean, but I'll be honest with you, that's not really your purpose here. Uh, six month contract. Five month contract. With low value and then with high value. Um, You can only get offers from intermediaries once like that. And we don't have time to do all of those things. We could even loan farm him, but I feel like with him, it's probably. Right. But first, I want to satisfy this bid. Five months for ninety pound. Yeah, exactly. One investment. I hope she comes in quick enough. Ah, ah, that's unfortunate. Um, right. But I want to show chat the thing first, so hopefully there's enough time. Hopefully, man, actually. Yeah, I mean, it might have potential for all we know. That would be funny as hell if he did. Uh, this doesn't check. Oh, so Teller's going to kick off now, isn't he? Oh well. <laughs> Give a fuck. <laughs> oh no, I made a mistake. You know. Uh, more of these offers. Offers for Padilla. I love that he's still getting low offers. That's great. Quasi war. That's frustrating as fuck. I really hope the board don't consider that too good. I think we've got enough money that they shouldn't, but you never know. Because if they come back and say like 40 million, we could be in a spot, of a spot of bother. And it could start to get actually quite annoying to the point where we basically can't hold on to any player because the board will just keep selling them. Even when we've got loads of money. They might have the cash to do it, yeah, potentially. No, no, absolutely not a sale. It's just that I feel like we tried that before and it very much didn't do what you said it was going to do. So I'm just... Maybe we didn't try that. Um, so his value not offer him out? It I, I thought you said transfer list him for 12 million. Um, the problem is that if you transfer list a player who hasn't got fringe player or any of the youth ones, they will kick off. And it's like a risk because then that can actually reduce their value too because then they say i want to leave which is ironically the very thing you want <laughs> um but we can't do anything until that guy joins us at the moment uh, these are all those random trialies yeah the board are going for a full chateau aren't they uh i've genuinely forgotten what these ones are even for <laughs> i think it was just random trialies was it not and always take it god man can't stay fit at all can he um that is a lot of promises. I was hoping that someone would bid on Fafana. Not the first choice option. God damn it. This man does really annoy me. Let me have a look at what they would say for... Because bear in mind, right, okay, this is a good example. So Fafana is listed for £9 million now. So in theory, based on the logic of that, he should now... Let's see. Yeah, so that's not even... That's like a quarter of that value. And I suspect that the same thing would happen with Sotelo if we were to transfer list him for X amount. We're not likely to get a huge amount of money. Because they're bidding on Quasi. Well, yeah, it's like... And they're not even bidding good money on it, which is the most frustrating thing. Uh, right, that's... Did Bayern just win a game? No, wait, hang on. They didn't, did they? Bayern just... <laughs> Bayern and Eintracht. Did they... That, that didn't just cost them Europe. Oh my God, that might actually cost Eintracht Frankfurt Champions League as well. Because if either Midtjylland or Hammerby... Or, honestly, for that matter, as Rangers or Stad Rene win. 
<laughs> Who are they playing? Have I be host? Never mind. Uh, Mitchell and Rowetch. Never mind. Uh, what about Rangers and Stan Reno? Stan Reno hosts Juve. Rangers are hosting Milan. I think Frankfurt might just sneak by. Maybe. But it is funny that both Bayern and Bayer Leverkusen are out. Also, where's Leipzig? Oh, it's Galera Talisman. Oh, yeah, shit, they do. Their goal difference might be. Then again, if they win. Oh, no, that's only minus seven. Oh, yeah, they're playing Bayer Leverkusen. I reckon Galatasaray might have a shot at this here. It would be so funny if Galatasaray knock out Eintracht Frankfurt by beating Bayer Leverkusen. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Dortmund. Yeah, so it's Dortmund and Gladbach. I forgot they had Dortmund in there too. Imagine having that many teams and still ballsing it up. Yeah, Leipzig have to be lower down. Oh, right. Uh, Eloy Lupopo. I was hoping that guy would hurry up and sign his contract. Otherwise, we might be stuck with Sotelo for six months. Not that it's the worst thing to have. He's just more depth, right? Um, there are a couple of reasonables right now. Missing the thing. Uh, so we beat Bayern. And we are currently top of the Champions League. You're a bit naff. You're a bit expensive. You're kind of mid, but... Wages would be all right, but you're way too expensive. Holy shit. Oh, that was that really good striker. But turkey tax. 12 million quid. Ooh. You got penny roll. It's quite a lot of money. Daniel Conde. He's not bad, actually, but three grand a week? Hmm. We really we have to be careful with funds at the t for the time being. We can't be overspending for now because particularly with these bids getting quite high. Pablo go, wow, hang on, look at him. Oh. Never mind, chat. Don't look at him. He's I saw that and that and thought, okay. But the def basically, he is the epitome of complete wing back, i.e., he's just a winger. Default value 1.2, 1.4 million. You offer. We'll get you offer 400k. Yes, but bear in mind, these are much larger values we're dealing with. Um, we're going to look again. <laughs> uh, never, unfortunately. Uh, you've been banned from seeing. <laughs> Jean Rodriguez. He's better. But he's also only 16. He might be one for the future, potentially. Pablo War. Oh, I remember like having, what was it? Jose Nelson, Jose Nelson Guerra was the guy I had back in the day. So PSG take over us again. So basically, if we draw against Inter, we go third. Mm, actually, technically, Man United could also sneak in there. So could Barca. Oh, no, Barca can't. Uh, maybe. If we win, actually, we don't go top. If we were to... If we don't, no, we literally can't go top, in fact. Yeah, we could get second, though, which is doable. I love that we haven't even got players on this list. Normally we do, but I guess we haven't played those early rounds, right? But yeah, I was. the hope was that we could sign the whole thing with with Sotelo and get that sorted. But unfortunately... Oh, hello. Alder Hale with Fafana. This could be a chance to earn some good cash. Please tell me this bid isn't like £2 million. 10.7. Not Most of which is installments, and he'll play those games. And he'll get those national teams. He basically gets everything. What are we saying? 10.7 million for Fafana? I'd say that's completely fair. Gives us 10 million pounds for a player that we paid barely anything for. He drops down the pecking order. And remember, we've signed Sotelo now. So we just replaced Fafana with Sotelo. So he just moves up. Get 10 million quid. But he's homegrown. He is homegrown. But the fact is, he's clearly not developing anywhere beyond where he currently is. And I think he's kind of reached his ceiling. But yeah, you're right. The homegrown thing is definitely an issue. But it just gives us a bit more cash. He's not playing football for us. He's played two matches, sorry, three games this season so far. And I don't think we're going to get much more from him than that. Roy Fleming will be homegrown soon as well. How's Roy getting on with I forgot, yeah, I love the fact that it didn't discount that. That is extremely fun. Wanted. Wanted by Norwich and Sheffield United. That's, I love how it doesn't suggest, I love when it just says wanted and doesn't say transfer. Reason unknown. I think I can think of a reason. I can think of a few reasons why they might want him. Yeah, <laughs> Ian wants a bit of Roy. Uh, I didn't actually look at the reason I went to look at Roy, did I? How far are we away on Roy these days? Please declare back, bud. I still think he ends up getting caps from Malta in the end, unfortunately. Ooh, wrong one. Yeah, literally, he's got 55... Next season, he counts as homegrown. <laughs> he's going to be a homegrown striker for us in the Champions League next year anyway. And then it might be the case that he'll actually just not count, not have to be registered at all anyway. Oh no, Roy doesn't matter because 
He doesn't have to be registered, but we can register him if we want to. He's in that little uh, cheeky bit right now. 13 million for Quasi. That's okay. Sunkara, that's a crappy bid. Yeah, the fact that Norwich... No, it wasn't Conference League Ninja Chicken. It was Europa League. They actually got to the Europa League semis and then got relegated. Saying Leia won a bit of Simunich. All right. No. Wait, what? Why am I having to reject these when you're on the dev list? Weird. Oh, no, he's too old for the dev list, isn't he? You have to do the manual dev list thing with him. Uh, Shabo, Rodriguez, Mercado, Diaz, Wells, Fleming, Norris... <laughs> Clayton, Mayakos. I think we're going to have to just wait till deadline day and see if there's any interest from Maltese clubs. No, but do you reckon it's just Bayern being like, do you know what? Fuck it, we'll have him. Uh, so a couple more loans in there. Formosa is wanted by Leah. So why are they not bidding? Not the first choice. Ah, I see. That would explain it. So basically... Dev list only works till the player is 23. So when you add a player to the dev list, you know there's like a if you right click on a player, um, and then go for example with Gillet, not that I'm going to obviously. If you go to transfer, you can add him to the dev list. But if I click on Vizhnevsky, right, who is 27, that option doesn't appear. But you can add any player of any age to the dev list by going into transfer status to loan status, and then down here where it says director of football, you can use the development list, which allows you to add them to the dev list even if they're older. But you can't do it from the context menu, which means that they often get left out of that, which is obviously the reason that um, I was having to decline those offers, basically. It's just a useful way if you've got some slightly older loanees, basically. Uh, right. FCSB. I feel like it's about time they produce a player that's worth looking at in this save. And, oh, hello, they might well have done so. Nikolai Zanfir. Something there, potentially. Yeah, it's it's odd. But it's useful to us, which is the most important thing. Okay, Motowang's back. Espino's nearly back, but he ain't really playing this game, is he? Right, we're all Galatasaray fans today. <sighs> okay. First team squad should be pretty stacked for this. I hate the fact that my assistant just doesn't seem to like Co. Like, what are you doing? Palacio, Vida, Paez, Kadri, Tunkara. Espino would start, but he's never fit enough to play this game. Uh, get rid of these as well. I'll turn this back on for deadline day. I want Gilet on the bench instead of Maleka. We've got left backs and right backs on the bench, so that's fine. Yeah, that'll be right. Um, It's the same lineup as the last game, basically. Co. Oh, it's because... Wait, why is he not match fitness? Why, why is he not match fitness? Was it because he went to the Asian Cup or something and then just didn't play? Or did he just have an injury or something? It must have been an injury. Right. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. God, Freitas has his four-star role ability now. He is just nice to look at. Like, that Portugal cap, he's only 27, which means we should be able to get at least... Provided we don't find an absolute godlike keeper. I reckon we got eight years out of Freitas. Easy. We are all, yeah, sometimes the match fitness is the friends you make along the way. <laughs> he doesn't have enough miles yet. I've been impressed, though. Two goals and two assists and a 7.14 for a ball winning midfielder is very impressive. Vida with only nine assists is actually a little bit surprising. Palacio with four is even more surprising. It feels like this new form of the tactic seems to get more assists from the middle of the park as well. The head of youth intake. Romeo is like his, uh, hang on. How much reputation counts for head of youth intake? was awful the last few days. He's okay. Um, reputation has zero to do with your youth intake quality, as far as I'm aware. Your youth intake quality will be based on the club's youth recruitment level, the youth level of the league you're playing in, the country, sorry, and your reputation as like a tiebreaker. That's all it really comes down to. The staff members will only affect the personalities and positions of the players coming through as far as I'm aware. So if you have a guy whose favoured formation is the same one you play, you're more likely to get players coming through that will play in your formation. If they have a really good professionalism as well, it will affect the professionalism of the players coming through the youth intake. Um, but it won't affect the quality of the players. Cap stop him ever from playing for Malta. Um, as in Kona Guy? Or, or who? Why is he not match fitness? I, I don't know. <laughs> Just irregardless. Yeah, pretty much. With, with us, it is, for sure, yeah. Mm. The goalkeeper, yeah, unfortunately, he's never going to declare for Malta. Um, actually, he might still technically be able to. It depends. 
Uh, hang on, let's look at the big profile. International debut. Where does it even... Against Hungary. That suggests to me that sounds like a Euro qualifier. If it was a friendly, then maybe. Uh, we'll have a look. So that was 2030. Well, it was five years ago. So they played Hungary five years ago in 2031. Yeah, it was a Euro qualifier. And he's declared true. Yeah, so that's... that's on. That won't happen. That's okay. They've got Arvid Vlaar. And they've also got Marius Key, technically. Okay. Reset their nation when they aren't even close to representing all they're sticking with. Um, not to my knowledge, but if you're doing national team management, you can talk to the player and convince them. What's your favourite? That's the problem in sight, because if you play a wacky system like... Well, I say wacky. Our system is at least in the game, I think. But it is hard to find. What I tend to do um, with systems like this is I'll basically just find any member of staff that plays a back five, because... Usually they'll have some centre midfielders in there, most likely. They'll get the back five, which is the key thing, to get wing backs in it. And you'll get some centre backs. There's usually at least one striker in that system. There has to be, usually. So you're going to get strikers in it. And then the rest is kind of much of a muchness. But also, especially in this save, given the, how bad our youth, in, um, youth level is... Hang on. They're playing the same shape as us, just with DMs. Cheeky. And with Bart Verbruggen in goal. Okay. Yeah, so I remember I once... When I was managing Scotland years ago on fm i spent the entirety of the save <laughs> trying to convince shay adams to declare for scotland now you'll note that of course that's something that's happened in real life but he was adamant that he was gonna get i think it was england caps in that save he never did obviously yeah the u.s beta said was like the two who was it we were trying to pester the entire time to become american i remember we got that italian dude or that argentinian guy who plays for portland timbers i think to declare it is a waiting game yeah it's like I don't get involved with, obviously, because we're never doing national team management a lot of the time. He did... This <laughs> is logical then. Something like that. We did. Uh, we, we was under the national team. Right. Which is why, unfortunately, I think it's unlikely we're going to see Roy declare back for Anguilla again. Because he's never going to get England caps, because it's... Come on. But he's got under 20 caps now. And I think what's going to happen is in about three years time he declares for Malta instead which is a shame it's good for us because it makes him even more of a legend but I would have much rather he played for Anguilla because that would have just been dope right yeah wingbacks that would be a tough one for you I suspect yeah luckily with us with there are a lot of systems out there that have wingbacks I guess if you could find a guy that's got like a 4-3-4 you might be okay because at least then you'd kind of get you'd get strikers then midfielders and center backs which is kind of what you need I suppose I think he could lead them to... Yeah, 4-3-4. Four, three, four. Sorry, three, four, a 3-4-3. Three, three. That's what I meant. <laughs> if you could get a 4-3-4, four, four, that'd be way better. <laughs> I would highly suggest it. We are unbeaten in the group, yeah. Regardless of our ability. Interesting. I had definitely done it when I was a national team manager a couple of times, but most of the time I wouldn't bother with it because it would just get repetitive and annoying. Most... Like, like most things in international management, sadly. Wally. Oh, that's unfortunate. I... Um, that was just a really nice pass. That doesn't go that's the plan yeah i have wanted to do that video at some point with archaic system this is an unbelievable pass from from shizek really like it's a great run great finish as well there's just no complaints it's just a good goal we do need to be better than this but i wonder if because we've already qualified as top eight they're just on the bench a little bit right freighter system somehow still on a seven <laughs> he just seems to gain rating he does make a lot of say. Wow, we've started really, really badly here. Like, this is probably the worst I've seen us play for a very long time. Or certainly this season, anyway. But, you know, this is why we do this. We hang on in there, see if we can grab a bit of luck. Oh my god, there's the opposite of luck. Quasi's shot just gets deflected into the path of the goalkeeper. <laughs> ah, you know what? We've had our fair share of luck. If we're just going to get beaten hands down here, so be it. It's one of those things. Gazzle ah, Gal losing as well. Yeah. That looks like... I mean, we're not actually in a proper battle with Germany right now. It would just be nice if they just did poorly this year just because of the memes. Let's grab into the top 24. I think we'll be okay. I think we've established that we're kind of... We've got the squad to actually be able to play like this now and get aggressive against bigger sides. And sure, we may not get as many points next year just because we've had some luck in some of the results this year as well. But I think we've established that this is definitely the way to go. Although, in a game like this, like... 
it's just not happening for us because the whole point of the system was just to get a larger quantity of chances even if they weren't as good in the hope that you just get a couple of lucky goals every now and then um, but today we've just not been able to even create anything and next year we might have some help in europe too which means we don't have to carry us all on our own back there right 60 minutes subs are needed i think fuck it you know what we're losing anyway right there's really no downside to a bit of roy um nunez for another appearance wow vida's been shit <laughs> oh wingbacks have actually been kind of gashed the last few games uh Paez has been poor as well do actually no i'm not making five subs here i mean what am i doing right but at least we've got four teams helping us in europe next year we might get a bit of luck we've actually kind of grown into this game ironically we are only a goal down you know and the chances seem to be coming a bit more now watch roy get us an equalizer or something uh, anyone gonna tackle him at all wow that is a that is a bad miss i'm pleased for barbara bruggen i suppose that was a big chance we've not actually really seen us have any opportunities in this game i must say but just getting more match game getting more match time under roy fleming getting embedded into the champions league squad here we go krastev come on back post for roy imagine wait wait roy Fle oh no oh my god roy i i love you bud but you've got to be burying that it's a free header at the back post he actually should have scored oh my god what a dreadful touch this touch is like that that lets me know we're not going to get anything from this game unfortunately oh <laughs> what on earth oh roy those are the moments bud he's got to bury it we've not actually been as bad in the second half of this one as things go uh right kamga's dead on his feet yeah i'll do a bit of says our vega maybe he can provide a lovely pass through for roy or something oh, i can't believe roy actually was in a position to win that header in the first place but the defender really should have been clearing that very easily we have grown into this game quite a lot like one nil is still a fair like it's still a fair loss we were the worst side in the night but we have managed to create a few things and on another day that shot actually does go in and we steal another cheeky point although it does look like it's more likely gonna be a two nil loss here and and in fact you know what that 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 tracks that's okay oh, the lovely football oh they should have scored there too uh no vita's not injured he um was playing absolute trash so i took him off where's the next siren the, so the season reviews uh, i have said this before but i realize this obviously not everyone's heard it the season reviews go out at the start of each season basically so we recap the previous season at the start of each season so they it'll be out on tuesday uh provided i can get a thumbnail but um, as you know the agent video didn't go out unfortunately flute had some computer problems and it means that i still don't have a thumbnail for the video so i couldn't put the video out without a thumbnail unfortunately so i've just been sat on it which is it's annoying as a content creator but it is what it is right you can't help it um eh, unfortunate but Vita was shit there at least we beat Bayern yeah and that was our first defeat in europe this year and it was by a, the odd gold at inter in a game that we actually had a golden chance then again so did they yeah you've seen it of course you have yeah. some of you have seen it of course on the patreon it's, it's like i don't need a, a thumbnail for to put it up there you see so in the end we come fifth that's i believe our highest ever finish in the champions league 17 points fifth in it as well good stuff Yes, Paddy. Well, I feel like the vibes have been very especially excellent lately. I've been trying my best to help with that as well. Galatasaray lost as well, unfortunately. Um, oh, they scraped in. Wait, Parzan won? Oh, no, but that was, that was in the previous match day, wasn't it? As in, that was the Tuesday games, which we already knew about. God, literally, they survived by a single goal. Sunday scored twice. Oh, he did as well. Where are they playing him? Like, I don't think we can see that, can we? No, because it's not a league we've got switched on. That's a shame. Probably playing was like an attacking playmaker or something. All right. So we get another 800 grand. Co is going to be suspended. Knocked out Frankfurt. Out. <laughs> Check tactics. Oh, true. Yeah. Because he would have been the last game there. Yeah. So I'm so used to. Barca 3 4, chap. <laughs> Check the game itself. We probably could, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that makes way more sense. So he is operating. That looks more advanced. No, we can't really see it. that. When I mean, we can see that he's playing in midfield and he's looking slightly more advanced than Pedri of all people. Let's go. Also, has the youth intake happened? Uh, no, not youth intake yet. That's not till March. Uh, Toppy, 14 cap. Thank you very much for the five months. Is that a, a different name? I don't recognize the name, Toppy. But thank you so much for the for the five months. That's very, very nice. Uh, he's not. I don't think he's the best player at Barca. Uh, he's just a very good player. They have an insane team. Number nine CDM. Wait, he was wearing number nine. Oh, God. It's a Rudakone all over again. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. 
being a mess. He might be. He's certainly not the man for the job, but he looked more advanced in that than Pedri did, certainly. Oh, I f understandable, Toppy. Fair enough. 1980, Daniel Kadavak. Thank you very much for the follow. Yamal, um, probably. He doesn't. He isn't he the only player that's got like the 200 PA or something, or something close to that. Right, taking part. It's deadline day. Can we do a big one? Trading interest. Oh, hello. Okay, chat. Um. Firstly, Sweetie want Miguel Torres and Dinko Kristic, which would be brilliant. They also want Roy. This prevents us. This presents us with a conundrum. But then we don't have Roy, so it's a question of: Do we do it? Hmm. Because he would develop there. And if he doesn't play, we just bring him back. We need Roy. I mean, but do we? Because we've got Sotelo now. <sighs> You're right. I feel like... Me I think Roy actually might be good enough to play for us. And he will keep developing if we play him. Yeah, I know. I actually kind of agree. <sighs> I think that Roy might be... I reckon we could hold on to Roy for a little bit. If he doesn't play... Yeah, the homegrownness of Roy for us could be quite useful in Champions League as well. It would be nice. Yeah, I, I actually think we hold on to Roy. We'll give him Kristic and Perez. Sorry, Chris, not, not Perez. We'll give him Kristic and Torres. Are they the same? I think they are different positions. Wow, Torres is... Oh yeah, Torres was the guy we didn't know what to do with. He'd be quite a good loanee, actually, for someone like Sweetie. Yeah, if, we've, if we're suddenly noticing that Roy still isn't getting much game time, he's still well within that sort of... um. Other special reason be playing with a couple of seasons. I I want to give him a chance, one more season to try it out. Because even if he's not, then by eight, he'll still be nineteen and fully within that window to grab a loan. I, I would say, unless his CA goes up too much. It's interesting that they're after two star players. First things first, though, we get um Kristich and Torres out to Sweetie because that could really help them. Both of these guys look to have okay. Well, Kristich we think has got really good PA anyway. Torres has got okay PA. He's quite good now. Just not sure what he would do for us, but that's fine. So we will say, we'll provide depth. I think he'd start for them, honestly. God, they have a lot. Of, they actually have quite a lot of loads, don't they? Uh, let us see. Bladley? Bradley? Bradley. Are you the one? No, a lot of potential. There we go. That's what we want. Players to exchange. Holy shit. How many players do you want? We know they want Kristich. I mean, we could try and but Out of interest. I'm just purely speculating here. Could I get away with loaning them five guys in one deal? Because I don't I want to leave Roy out of this for the time being. I think they say no to this, because the most I've ever seen them accept is three. Nah. They they won't take them all, no. Um I found that they just won't accept. But we might be able to get away with three. Could try five different deals, but bear in mind they all play in the same position, so we end up with a Nashar type situation again. I could try these three though. And Mercado's guaranteed to say no, isn't he? <laughs> He is just an outright bell piece, that man. So I say for oh, could go for that right now. Right. Let's see. Some rumors going around. Uh anything new here? It's annoying that, that deal hasn't come through for um Oh shit, they accepted it. Holy Christ, they actually accepted it. Alright. <laughs> I was expecting them to turn down the third guy. Um but as long as we didn't add him, as long as he doesn't say no, we should be okay. If we get three more guys to Sweetie, that could kickstart their second half of the season. Um, yeah, you're going to have a five month contract. £170 a week. Enjoy. Uh, we'll just stall that for the time being. Okay, anyone, anything new in here? Yeah, I think for the time being, we, we keep hold of Roy. 
Uh, wow, that's a lot of interest. Holy shit. I'm hoping that Sweetie... Well, bear in mind, as far as I remember, Christich can now play CM. Yeah, so he's now fully natural as a CM, so I think he'll be okay. The issue before is that he was only green, which meant that they weren't going to play him. Amateur I know, where is the amateur Chilini? He still hasn't signed for us yet. There he is. Bro simply will not... But actually, now that we've sold for Fana, or are about to sell for Fana, we kind of need to tell her anyway, so it actually doesn't matter when this guy joins us. It should be okay. Uh, it's annoying that Thomas Mirvang is taking his time deciding on this contract, though, because, like, I want to use it. I want to be able to offer him out. A loan approach for Kazola? Yeah, no, lads. Probably not going to do that. Uh, Rojas will say no. Yeah, the fact that he's still got potential is ideal. Because he's not lost it for those two years at kind of mid times, which is a good sign, actually. Now we need to make sure. Wait, I swear I didn't have it set. To... Did I not have it set? To... Oh my god. I'm an idiot. I thought, because those guys came up, I thought I didn't have it. But those two were both first team, weren't they? Right, one sec. It's annoying that it def. Oh my god. Matthew Pace is already under bid. You're already under bid. You're already under bid. You're under bid. So the only people left that are wanted, and you're wanted by Sweetie, which we know isn't going to happen. You're wanted by Leah. I mean, I'll offer him out. But because he's not their first choice, I don't think they actually bid on him. But yeah, thank you for that. I forgot that. Because we were getting bids on players that I didn't... I forgot they were first team. Uh, discuss personal matters. Uh, Abdul and Doi. Yeah, we go. Cool. So two players upset in the entire window is not bad. It's probably a new record for us in many ways. So if we can get... Yeah, that's a Benfica loan. That one... In fact, I, let me just... Is he even loan listed anymore, actually? Just check. No, he's not actually listed for loan. He's just got loan interest. mercado has gone. Wait, what? No, he hasn't, right? Oh, yeah. The, the reason he's gone is probably because um, they are looking like that deal's going through. So they're going to sign three midfielders so they won't want Mercado anymore. Okay, so Rene Viveros is in. Let's see if this fulfills the promise. Uh, Youth and Deck hasn't happened yet. That's in March. Uh, Seiko Fafana, £10 million, pounds, nearly £11 million. Pounds, and we will get all of that money because he's going to play 50 games for them easy. He'll get caps. How many caps has he got so far? 21 already. He'll definitely get more. And the rest of it's over, uh, what? Something to do with... There's a load more money, basically. And we can sell that clause. Given that he's going to be... Hang on, let's see how much he's going to be worth because we might be able to get some decent cash for that. Those trials are finished. Anyone interested? I, I will have a look at the agent offers with like five hours to go just in case there is anything crazy in there. If there's any, like, Bs or something. There's a B plus there. Wait. He's already on 16 grand a week. Oh, it's Qatar. It'll be... Yeah, it could still be decent money, though. B minus there. He's at Milan. And it's on 50 grand a week. Cheers. Uh, yeah. These are not really the sort of players I have any interest in. It's because, basically, they count what you've got available as your wage budget. And because we happen to sit with quite a large wage budget a lot of the time, all the agent offers are just players that want exactly your wage budget's entire amount. It's... Burgo at Bayern. Yeah, but how much would he want? Yeah, he wants 30 grand a week. Like, cheap player because he's out of contract in six months, but he'll want, like, £30,000 a week. Highest wage, I think, is 25, which is uh, Perez and Kona Guy are earning quite a decent amount now. Most players are under 20, which is still good for where we are, I would say. Right. There you go. So tell her happy promise kept. That's all you've got to do in those scenarios. Also, Viveris is absolute trash. And the best thing about it is you can just release them immediately. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, sorry, bud. I've just Abe Simpsoned him. Right, so he's gone. Still worth £12 million. Pounds. Like, we could probably still get a million or two out of that deal. Filtered under the third tier. He might well do. Yeah, he's not a great player, is he? Skewed towards air clubs, can get a better ones. Um, not really, no. In fact, definitely not. From a statistical standpoint, no. If you've got the best youth recruitment in your country, you will get the best players. Or the best player. Because it works on like a draft system. 
Uh, so if you have the best youth intake, sorry, if your youth recruitment is 20 and no other clubs have 20 youth recruitment, you will get the best player. Um, in theory, or statistically likelihood anyway. Over, like, on average, you will get the best player. Uh, now, if you both have 20 youth recruitment, then it will be based on reputation. So you might have lower rep, potentially. So <laughs> I'm so sorry, Rene. Holy shit, we did it. So uh, Simunek is gone to Senglaia. Aquilino is joining, which means Dinko Kristic. So just to clarify, that's insane. So on the last day of the window, Sweetie have just picked up Dinko Kristic who is an unbelievable centre midfielder slash attacking midfielder, who could carry them. Adrian Rodriguez. Wait, hang on. Holy shit, no. I didn't realise that was him. I thought it was another random dude. This is that really nicely well-rounded midfielder that we liked. And Miguel Torres, all in the same loan deal. This could be the sort of deal that propels in like three years. Sweetie could become an absolute monster with these three. I didn't realise it was Adrian Rodriguez. I thought it was like a, one of those random wide players or something. Holy shit, what a deal. <laughs> That's incredible. Those guys, I feel like, could develop into monsters, potentially. Kristic, especially. Pace is gone. Rail, Saucy Dad, get James and Kathy. Nice. Yeah, those guys feel like the kind of players that could get you maybe even three-star. CA. Mirvang's in. Oh, I've got 10 hours to flip in. Can, we be, can it be done? Any new interest? Nah, it's just Perez. I should check the first team. Oh, no, it's, we don't care about that because it's only... I suppose it's always useful looking at transfer interest in case a random guy gets transfer interest from a multi side and we can flip him on that side of things too. Right, Mirvang. Boom. Uh, we want as soon as possible. I don't care how much. Cool. I should have offered him out for free, really. Where there's a Will, there's a MacArthur FC. Good point. They're always about lurking. Yeah, so Leah didn't want him. Bass then. Uh, not as far as I know. He's from uh, Burkina Faso, right? And has played at Ibar. So, uh, hang on. Real Sociedad can sign players that aren't Basque, right? I thought it was only Athletic Bil I thought it was only Athletic Club that are purely Basque only these days, right? Zurich. A loan approach. Optional future fee. That is very annoying, but because we know they're never going to trigger it, but at least it gets him out of the way for the time being. We'll sign him on a on a freebie to them in the summer or something like we did last time. Plus, we get to find a new a new club for Danny Hume this winter, which is always going to be good. Uh, all right, six hours. Uh, what does that leave us with? I think that's pretty much. I don't think we're going to get any more loan outs. By the way, what are we up to for that now? <laughs> Minus seventy seven loans. That means that we are now at 179 loans, I think. I might be wrong about that, but I think it's one... I think it's... I think we're at 179 loans. One more and we hit 180 and we've never done that. I might be miscounting it. But I don't think I am. I think that's actually 100 and... Yeah. Jetson to Pembroke. We could actually, yeah, maybe. Just grab a load of them. Yeah, they've got, um... What's he called? Uh... Not me, no, me, no. Fucking... Kokofusa uh, Kubo. Uh, right. Let's just go for... We just filter by Malta, although that's not really going to help us much. Actually, Malta and Young. Wait, what? Oh, hang on. The fuck? Oh, turn these on as well, Matt. Get the entire squad going. Right. Okay. So these random here, Aquilina, Saliba, Dimech, Baldacino, Fennec. Um, we, need, we need Fennec and we also need a guy called, um, oh fuck. We need a guy called Octane as well while we're here. Those guys can't be loaned out. Did he just deselect the damn thing again? FM! Stop it, you bastard. Right. To Dingley. Hello, Alec. I'm good. How are you, my friend? How's your Sunday going? We do have Mario Kart. This is true. Oh, it's squad, isn't it? Uh, we have three affiliate clubs, yeah. Actually, you're right. Pembroke would probably be better. <laughs> See if we can get these guys out. Yeah, we've got three affiliate clubs, um, all of which are in the second tier. One of them is definitely not going to be next year, though. <laughs> um, the plan is to get rid of Pembroke the moment that we're able to get three-star reputation, because then we should be able to get a foreign affiliate, but we can't do that yet. 
Uh, pretty cheap deals on Rojas is fine. Dugapulia. Nah, nothing really there. They do have a guy called Drajan Ban, though, and I do like that. How do you find the best youth? Um, you mean like scouting? Personally, for me, I feel like a combination of team report scouting, bit of 20 is plenty, amateur scout. It depends entirely on where you're at in your save, really. Because like, what year you're in, which club you're in, what season, where that club is up to, etc. Uh, let's see if I can get some of these guys out. Oh, damn. Wait, they actually agreed. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Pembroke are like, give us anything you got. <laughs> we want all the loans. Holy shit. Um, did we just get like seven guys out on loan in one smooth motion there? Yeah, look at all the happy promises. Oh, I'm making their day. These bridges are... Every river is a new river. Every man is a new man. What can I say? Yes, I went for a walk kiss and then my brain is healthy. <laughs> I don't cry about heat. Ah, don't apologize at all. How was your holiday? They are literally like, please, sir, can I have some more? Less Pembroke, more Oliver Twist. It's a very Dickensian football club. A little bit, honestly. I do not. I had a bloody lovely time. We went for like an 8k, like a five mile walk yesterday through the field, saw some sheep. It was delightful. Genuinely. Got Pog, got Pog playing Balatro. It's a dream. Absolutely smashed her first run. Um, right, where's Greg Bacon? <laughs> Bankruptcy company team report scouting. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the key rule with team report scouting is do not get team reports for teams that are outside of your scouting range because you will pay for it. Just try to hit the multi international job. There's no point. Uh, it wouldn't help the save. It would just slow it down and make it really dull because international football management and FM is really annoyingly bad. And it would just, yeah, the sa everything would take twice as long, basically. And then we'd never make any progress in the save. And it wouldn't also help the save in any way. Uh, so how many loans is that? 20 seconds. <laughs> Holy God. Also, what's with all the Premier League games today being on stupidly late? Like, isn't there a six o'clock kickoff tonight on a Sunday? Like, what time did you call this? Just scouting all the new players. Oh, uh, hang on a minute. What? Hang on. If the if the teams were within your scouting range, that means the players are also within your scouting range. So it doesn't cost you money to scout them. That's what the scouting range is for. So I, I'm starting to think that actually that wasn't what happened. If, if you scout a player who is within your scouting range, you don't have to pay extra for the scouting. That's only if it's outside your scouting range. <laughs> you might do next year, Viking. There's always the playoffs. <laughs> right? Uh, right. Shortlist. Ah, that could be it, yeah. That can cost you sometimes. Particularly if they move. Right. <laughs> what are you lying for? <laughs> I just read that in that voice. Ooh. Move from Monday night to the pressure. Oh, really? That's... But then why is there just no random 2 o'clock kickoff? Was that considered too early? Kickoff times are always a bit of an amusing one for me. Uh, so, minus 70. Oh, one more loan. Come on. Hello, Inferno. How's the conference? And as we're jumping upside down, to be fair, we do love it. We do love it. What's it called? Is it a schwa? No, that's not a schwa, is it? There's a name for it. Inferno will know it. <laughs> Lion <Lionfall. laughs> Oh, it's the EFL. Ah, that makes sense. Hey, Bento. Right. <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful word of advice, Socrates. How's the Sunday going? Hmm. Yeah, I forgot about the EFL trophy final. Um, which I believe is actually where Wandering Skylight is this weekend, because if I remember correctly, 25, 30, nicely done, my friend. I just went walking for ages. Um, we should be able to go with Angelo. Maybe some of these guys get Mario Kart. Do you know what? I might just go a bit silly with it. Like, we're going to do that thing where we, we do a silly one. <laughs> oh, he's 16. We can't do him. We're just going to do a silly one. Just send them all to Pembroke. Okay. Right. I think it's that it will let you offer him out, but nothing will actually happen. Uh, so they're all under bids. That's fine. I shouldn't have done... Why did I do loads? <laughs> I was trying to get to minus 69 loans, and now I'm going to go way past it. Okay, maybe not. Some of them have rejected it. Wait, he actually accepted it? Dipsy! Get in, Dipsy. I've just remember these shit, that's why. Um, 
Chris, Chris from a rose was not after that. But as a party is, so is Rob Atkinson, so is Harry Saunders, and so is Big Mario Kart. Barry Scott's not having it. Look at us go. How many is that now? They might go to Dingley, potentially, yeah. We're at minus 64 now. Let's see who's left. Have they gone yet? We just sort by age, actually. It's probably easier, right? So we got Roy we don't want. I could just try and shove some of these guys out randomly. Obviously not Gert. Uh, McCart that would be funny as fuck. There's really no harm in trying it, is there? Wow, we really have very few players left. <laughs> I just realized how few players we actually have left to loan out now. <laughs> Chat, we have actually mastered the loan farm. So we'll try Dingley. Yeah, they either don't play here or they don't play there. We are stat padding the loan farm. I want to get to 200. I don't think we will, but you never know. He's rejected it. He hasn't. He ran my Wait, wasn't he an unironic loan signing? I swear he was a guy I actually signed for the loan farm. Clayton's rejected it. Jean-Paul Banamwama, good stuff. Wait, Luis Diaz said yes. I mean, I figured these guys would say no, but... Well, I'll be damned. Dingley might have a chance here. So what's that now? But when you think about it, boy, when you consider how many loans out, like usually I'm used to offering out like 35 people each time and we are down to quite literally... Okay, that's more than I thought. <laughs> that is more than I thought, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm willing to give it a go. Just all of these guys. I realize that we've already done Dingley, but they're not going to go to Zuri. But some of them weren't in the Dingley original. So this is all that's left now. And a lot of these guys are older players that we only really have for the memes anyway. So they're not serious loan signings. So he said no. If even one of these players says yes, it'll be hilarious. Here's a fun fact. Voltaire contracted syphilis just two blocks from here. <laughs> Wait, didn't he say no the first time? <laughs> I swear Chris Rose said no, but now Chris Rose, a, oh no, he said no to Pembroke, didn't he? Jemmy friend, thank you very much for the follow. Did I miss a lookup? Oh, the line four. I'll get to that in a second. Um, it could be the squad strength snowball. True. Yeah. One more try. Maybe Chris Rose has pushed it over the edge. One more go. This is intriguing to me. I think they've all said no. Yeah. But that's not bad, is it? Like, that's a pretty good bit of business. So what have we ended up on in the end? Minus 59 loads. I'm trying to work it out in my head. So it's 41 plus 28, which is 69. Nice. Added to 128. Are we at 189 loans? Or is it 188 loans? 196. Is that 197? Oh, fuck, it is, isn't it? Are we three loans away from 200 loans? <laughs> I can't do maths in my head right now. A cycling fan. Uh, I have never watched any cycling event in my entire life, so no. Um, I do like cycling. I find it fun. 197 loans. That's a new record for any... Um, Building a nation save. 197 loans. <laughs> Which makes me wonder how big our squad actually is these days. I know the game won't let me actually control A on this screen now because there's too many players on it. Are we up to 250 now? We have 256 players. And nearly 200 of them are out on loan. <laughs> uh, the control A doesn't work on this screen. Oh, we did that time. I find that it's really inconsistent whether it actually lets you do a control A. It's really strange. It worked the second time, though. Ah, oh, lovely. Beautiful. We are going to need to get a couple more out. But the thing is, those guys as well that have just gone out. <laughs> I thought it was just a bit of Lyle Foster. I'll refund points for that. Um, Archie the Goat and Abdifata Osman. Thank you very much for the followers, my friends. If you love loans, you're in the right place. 
this must be a record for the amount of loans out, right? It certainly for me it is. Look at us go. A hundred and we just need to sign some more fodder for the summer, really. We need to go up our fodder game in the summer massively. Lots of youngster clauses. Like, cheap amateur Brazilian Colombian players. Get as many of them as we possibly can. Not because we feel like it's actually going to benefit the nation too much at that point. Mainly to try and see if we can reverse the stack overflow. That's what I want to do for the memes more than anything else. Whilst also focusing on good loan farm players too. But in fairness, as much as those loans were mostly gashed towards the end there, it might still have an effect on Dingley as they are doing better. And potentially... um decent seven loans seven loans is um is an amount it's not that many but it's a good amount it's got to get started somewhere reverse seven that's a lot of loans fair enough three more though yeah yeah <laughs> it is annoying we just don't have the players left but give me this and decide where to keep the clubs or is a numbers game um it was so basically yes to both so up until the final day of the window there that was always the plan so it's like are these guys actually going to play are they going to help the club so we before the deadline day or actually on deadline day we made a brilliant move genuinely to get oh my lord <laughs> uh there we go the sweetie guys these chaps here so we sent three guys on loan to sweetie all part of the same deal this guy who's ridiculous this guy who's ridiculous and now it chooses to reset itself no it hasn't has it there we go and this guy who's ridiculous this was all like actually going to help other teams in our nation then we had a lot of fodder players that were sort of left with and we were able to send those to our affiliate clubs just to boost the numbers up for the memes more than anything else yeah zuri is an option but yeah it's 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 both a, the numbers game thing is more for the memes stack overflow twice i think it's possible yes here we go now he complains uh but it's fine we'll um sincerest apologies Oh, my Lord. You've been here for, like, two minutes. Pipe down. I don't believe Mario Kart did, but it would be funny if he was on loan for two years whilst having a country. <laughs> ah, it's because he's... I've just managed to loan out a player who doesn't even belong to us. <laughs> he doesn't even have a contract here. He's a non-contract player, but he's gone on loan. Maybe it's because of his age. I don't know. It just means he could randomly decide to leave at any point. It's a load of our youth intake players there. Plus, it's also the random fodder players that we sign from other Maltese clubs to make the loan walks work. Stack overflow twice. Fair play. So that's what, like 250 something? It's a verbal agreement. It's a napkin agreement. Right. We've got to get going. We've got Champions League and like youth intakes to come. That was a pretty successful deadline day, I would say. And right. Okay. So now we actually are missing a space in our squad, but we are going to have to either register someone. Basically, they have to be homegrown if they're going to be registered. Which means Sotelo is going to get on my titties. Unless there's someone I can deregister now. I'm trying to think if there's anyone worth deregistering at this point. Uh... Padilla doesn't count, and Doi is homegrown anyway. Krastev Nunez, kind of guy. I think we might be in a bit of a pickle here because Sotelo does kind of need to come in. Actually, we could deregister Gert because Kadri can cover that role in the midfield for us and Gert is really only going to play in the midfield. He's not ready yet. I think I'd rather have Sotelo in to give us cover. Where is Sotelo? There he is. Because he'll kick off otherwise. So Kadri can cover us in the midfield if we absolutely need him to. Uh, Archie Brown obviously is going to kick off again, but she's fine. Um, where's the one where I say... Okay, fair enough. Why wasn't I able to say... Or did I say... Was that a transfer or was that just like a loan? I actually forgotten. It's played on an emulator. <laughs> or, well, I don't know why he's dropped his footballing concerns. They're considering he hasn't played for us since, but sure, we take that. Ooh. Now we get to play at the next level of the Sweetie Massive. Right, Viking under 19s. Um, probably not that good, honestly. Scam attack app, not yet, but we are now up to 197 loans. So, arguably, it's gone very, very well for us today. Wow, they are really bad. But great name. Uh, Giadoni Mba and Edu. Good name, bad player. Promise the loan would never be bid. Ah, true. That that would explain it. 
Yeah, and all these using tech lads, we might as well just sign them all up. Because they're going to be shit. But that's okay. We expect that. We've got ages to go. I'll just let whoever wants to play in these games play, frankly. Um, without losing too much match sharpness on key players. Did my assistant just unironically put Rob Hilton in that team? I love it. Rob Hilton's just sticking around for one purpose and one purpose only. Right. So Teller gets a squad number. Um, go on then. I think he's just... I think that was Safana's number, which has now been vacated. Yeah, Rob's just kind of stuck around. He's a very useful sort of third choice centre-back to have that we can always bring in in these random games where there's just a few injuries and we need to be a little bit careful. Another 4-0 win. Two more goals for Perez. The goal difference is now plus 72. We are closing in. Only eight more goals needed in our next eight games. Was he 65? Really? Oh, wow. I think I might have updated him to 69. Sorry, to uh, 11. Did he play in that game? Good question. They might not have had time to bring them straight in. Let's just see who their 11 was. So they had Kristic and Kontosau in there. Oh, I forgot they still had Chawa Piwa. Uh, did they seriously not play Rodriguez or Padilla? Now, they maybe didn't have match sharpness, in fairness. Uh, so we beat Bayern Munich, Banksy 3-2. And then we lost 1-0 to Inter, but we were already qualified uh, as top eight by that point and only it was only one nil lost winter we actually had a great chance roy hit the post with a header in like the 78th minute so we could have had the extra point but it is what it is right toshi didn't want a game yet mr shadow bro thank you for the four months how is your weekend going my friend i hope you're having a fabulous one i hope the weather's lovely where you are uh oh and mirvang's gonna go to zurich i don't think he's gonna get part of our loan fee cheeky vincenzo I want to be able to click on him so I can change his profile picture to a picture of a dick. Uh, ah. Yeah, I think Oruwela, I'll be glad to see the back of him in the summer because he's on 16 grand a week and he ain't playing. Roy's just too nice. Like you say, he's like, they deserve it. He thought it might help, Ger well, might hinder Germany slightly. Wow, Hamron. They'll probably still get second and that's kind of what we want. I am a little bit concerned about the cup. Now, if you recall, both us and Hamron are out of the cup. So <laughs> it really is... A bit of a mishmash for who's left. Tarshin, Birkikara, Hibernian, and Sweetie are basically the teams we want to win. There's someone there. Revolution's gone well. He has... We had the opportunity, actually, to loan him out to Sweetie on transfer deadline day, but we decided not to because we felt that we wanted just to give him a little bit more of a chance to play for us for a little bit to see if he could maybe get a... Uh, to see if he's good enough, honestly, to legitimately be an option for Sirens. If not, we can loan him. Hey, Stealthy Assassin! Welcome aboard! Welcome back, I should say. How is life treating you these days? Uh, hang on, they had a guy called Furkan... Furkan... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Yep. They they do indeed have a guy called Furkan Cock. Back to back cups. Yes. Um, One of them was deliberate, where we threw the cup to Hamrun on purpose to stop um, Zabar getting Europa League football. And one of them was us accidentally getting knocked out, as we've done this year as well. <laughs> Heptic Titans! Thank you very much for the four months. It, at the moment, it's Quattro Titans. Except that's not Greek, or is it? No. <laughs> that's definitely not Greek. Uh, let us see. Nice. Oh, I'd love to see that. Stuff the Assassin. Love to see that. From the cup. Yeah, so at the moment, our cup rep isn't that important. But it does become important because, like, for example, with in the Hungary save, um, the Hungarian Cup or the Magyar Cup became the most highly rated cup in Europe, even more so than the FA Cup. So giving it to other teams was actually quite helpful for us. Um, there's a guy called Socrates playing for Santos, who's half Brazilian, half Polish. Now then. Now then. <laughs> One of our favourites. Yeah, it is kind of useful, um, Krabbitism, but the problem is it's, it's usually only good if Hamron win as well. <laughs> the problem is they're also out of the cup, so we have the risk this year of someone shit winning it. Socrates. What do you reckon, then? He'll be called, like, Juan... Yes, he'll have Rob... Bobby Tree's name. Nah, it'll be something boring. Or it'll be something amazing, like Juan Pablo Boashikowski. Mario Kart name. Um, basically, his name is Mario... Car... His name is very similar to that. But basically, he genuinely got the injury in the game of um like a stubbed toe or something or broken toe from a golf buggy accident. That the, it was an actual thing that was in the game. So as a result, we called him Mario Kart. 
Tanty, Mario Tanty, that's him. Yeah, he got an injury in a golf buggy accident, so we started calling him Mario Kart. Uh, anyway, what are we saying? Socrates Pilaski. <laughs> Love it. Socrates Pilaski. I feel like he'd lead a sex cult. And he'd have really long hair and a robe. Where you'll sort of sit in the Amazon rainforest and he'll force feed you pierogi. Good stuff. Love that. We've got to make sure we have a closer look at some of the Brazilian teams for more names like that. Um, damn, Conan is doing very well out on loan. Perez, as always, is doing well on loan. Sorry, Anto, who's got the most assists? Jean Dong sucks still. Wow, three, two and a half stars now. He's the only two and a half star loanee at the moment, in fact. But look at that. Four guys out on loan with either five star or four and a half star PA. Look at the number of four star, three star guys, though. This is this is what we want. Wait. Why is he back? Why is Mario Kart back? What? <laughs> He was only loaned out three days ago. How dare you? <laughs> I love this man so much. I probably should give him another contract, really, shouldn't I? <laughs> Just for that alone. Oh, you've earned it, Mario. <laughs> he's done his lap. <laughs> what? Basically, he's a Starton Park player. He's only here for the purse money. Oh, that's crazy. And he actually played as well. Bro, he caught himself literally. <laughs> He's flown his 25 missions. He's back home now. Oh, dear. That's amazing. That's one less loan. Deary me. Yeah, he has 25 minutes on the karting track. I, I can't send him to an affiliate outside of the window, unfortunately. So now that he's back, he's got to stay until the summer. Carpio? Ooh. Wait. Hang on a minute. That's first nationality Philippines. Yes, please. Christian Carpio. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, ironically, we should have sent Mario Kart to Tarshin Rainbow, really, shouldn't we? Now that I think about it. Oh. We're going to get so many like, of those reports that you get of player wants to complain about the lack of football. They're getting out alone from all of those guys we just shipped out. Uh, we'll send you home. Sotelo's got a tight hamstring, probably from all that complaining. Yeah, funny we still had Yoshi. Montpellier. They might, they'll probably have a guy in here worth... Oh, wow, that's really not good at all. Usually Montpellier are better than that. Either that or we're just getting better now. We do have some quite good players. But Tony Sunday. <laughs> for, ex for example, Tony Sunday. Everyone's favourite. Oh, there'll be Yoshis all over the place. Um, Tayo Yoshi Yoshisaka. Uh, Yoshifumi Tamura. I wonder if there's uh, any Nakanishis knocking about. Yoshio Takayama. Jinpei Yoshida. Yoshihiro Suda. That's a good one. Masayoshi Watanabe. Not bad. What we need is a guy called Yoshi Peach. I'll refund your points for that. That was a silly one. Son of a Barca. Uh, he had 15 league matches. There's no Apesh. That's nearly the same. I'm sorry. I don't know, JCM. Um, all I know is that we accidentally tested it out one time and it's been the best thing ever. So if you did, then I'm so sorry that I didn't listen. Let's have a look at old Sundat. Try that again. I refuse to type in Sunday. <laughs> he's no pesh. He's only had two points. So yeah, he's started 19 games for Barca this season. Three substitute appearances and... He's played already 17 league appearances too. So we only need another 33 more for another 10 and a half million quid. Which is delightful. Uh, Miyamoto. Imagine if there was a Yoshi Miyamoto. Wow. Oh, hang on. Would help if I could spell. In fact, would help if I could spell all of the letters. Junpai Miyamoto. Tatsuyuki Miyamoto. And Nobuaki Miyamoto. Let's have a look at old Junpai Tatsu Miyamoto. When did you get 50 million for Tony? In the summer. Uh, because the board sold him and we couldn't do anything about it. That is in we, we we had no say in it. They just sold him out from underneath us. So we have... I mean, it's not cost us too much. Let's put it that way. 
We've actually done better this year without him, ironically. But we are still weaker as a team. I feel like we would have done even better if we'd still had him. But such is life. I feel like Gert long-term can be the guy. Whoa, Fred Mayale. He's really expensive, though, annoyingly, because it's Manima Union. What about Papo Mbanza? He's a bit cheaper. Yeah, yeah. If we still played the DM, we'd have been in trouble. Uh, it's, it kind of worked out. It's pretty rare that... Wait, what? Oh, go away. The silly bollocks again. You can't play every match. <laughs> it's just ridiculous nonsense. Ah, oh, dear. Cyprus. Um, I, I don't know. I've never managed in Cyprus. Actually, that's not true at all. I have managed in Cyprus. I've managed both Ermis and Achironis back in the day. Hey, Gasman. Yeah, I think as far as losing a player goes, when you have no control over it, that's about the best that could have worked out. Like, we got loads of money, which is great, I guess. And it was a player that we actually were slightly able to replace, and we were already pivoting away from the tactic where he was the sole man in that role anyway. So in a way, this kind of worked out for us. More so than you'd expect. No player restrictions. Um, I don't remember there being a lot of them, I must admit. Cyprus might be quite fun, actually, for a future building a nation. Uh, Cespedes is playing for Guarena, back in Paraguay, I think. He was one of those guys that just never quite worked out. Like, he hit the ground, and then he became a dick and would never, ever go on loan. And he seems to have flourished back in his native Paraguay, so I can't really fault him for that. But he's more of a story of what could have been. One of those guys that we sign at the start of a save and you think that he's going to be an absolute monster and then it just doesn't quite work out like that. Like, think of that guy. Who was that guy? I think it was Carrera, that centre-back that we all thought was going to be the next Miggy Montiel and he just hasn't turned out like that. It turned out Palacio was the Montiel all along. The guy we get really early game that actually turns out to be really good. Right, what a result that is. Could you lose again? Lads, could you not... Please don't miss out on Europe entirely. If you could, that'd be wonderful. Uh, so we better start Palacio this next game just to appease him a little bit, I suppose. Uh, play whoever we want there. Actually, to be fair, I probably should start making sure Kona guy gets some starts because otherwise... <laughs> they did, yeah, because they only had nine goals. Perez again. I don't think I should. Uh, let's see. Hey, Root! Uh, okay, that'll do. Have they got a Nigerian? They do. Yahya Hassane of Marsu, who they actually paid money for. They have a Nigerian international. I'm excellent, mate. How are you? Right. Let's press on. We've got we've got stuff to do today. Oh, imagine if we could finally win a knockout round. I think the problem with that happening is very unlikely just because... Then again, we are at least going to have priority draw. But it'll probably still be someone good. 5-0 again. Four goals for Quasi. And an assist. I think this is why Melman's had it as our starting trek. Padilla is great, but he can cover two roles. But Quasi is the starting trek on the right. I think he's just got that role nailed down now. Two more assists for Diaz. He's brilliant there. Like, Quasi is not far off top scorer in the league now. He's given Melman numbers. 20 goals and 11 assists in only 17 starts. He's absolutely insane. And he's unhappy as well. Uh, we finished fifth in the Champions League group in the end. Like, laugh at our easy take. Exactly. Other teams are spending a lot. Yeah, Wellman is still one of those players I'll keep around. Oh, God. Oh, no, we're fine. Uh, was I checking? Other teams' wages. They are nowhere near as much as us. Like, let's put it that way. So we're spending 35 million on wages a year now. Hammer are spending 4.3, which has not gone up by much, but I think it's because they've got more loans now. 2, 2 million for Goodyear. Sorry, for Sweetie. 2.4 for Goodyear. 2.5 for Hibernian. Sorry, for Birkikara. 1.8 for Hibernian. Zabar, 2.3. Team stats. Yeah, you can see it here as well. Um, 1.3 there. In a big table. I know. And you can see it here as well. 800k. I just like this screen because it shows you the updated stuff. Whilst we're spending quite a lot. Melita are the biggest surprise package for me. The fact that they're only spending 800 grand a year and are actually staying up again by the looks of things. But they have got a couple of good low knees in fairness because they've got um, Mitchell Bum. No, M Michael Bum, not Mitchell Bum. Keep, I keep saying his name wrong, chat. Would you believe it? Out loan, 196 now. It was 197, but Mario Kart recalled himself like a bastard. Financial scale, yes. Uh, that's why the changes that we made, I think, are really, really important. Because I, I don't think this would have been possible if we'd just done it on the default one. Mario Kart's got a new deal. There he is. Now we can get him a loan in the older... Shit, we owe him 90 grand for that. That's unfortunate. 
Squad unhappy with the treatment. Oh, yes. Just let our best player go. Why not, lads, eh? I'm just going to give him the playing time. Because we are going to. I just have to keep starting. Still in Europe? Yep. We're still in Europe. We came fifth in the Champions League. Um, we haven't got the next round draw yet, of course, because there's still a round in between. Hammering with a big win. Sweetie with a big win. See, it's happening. It's coming along. Background characters like Mario Kart. Yeah, but we always have them. Think like Rick Rolls, for example, on the last save. Oh, oh no, we're coming up to that bit where there's a huge gap, aren't we? Uh, facing uncertain route. I do not remember that ever happening, but sure. Bop as Nash are bottling it again, it looks like. Mostar are one of the teams that could end up in Europe next year. Dingley are falling off again. God damn it. Fat on cake, yeah. New oh, dear. That is a shame. Big win against Goodyear, although I don't really want a big win against Goodyear, but... Nash, Nash, I'll feel like the push gas of this save. You're right, yeah. Okay, so the, the Champions League is starting to happen now, which is good. Oh, God. No, I don't want Melita in Europe next year. Although if they were to get into Europe, they might take a load of loans because that's what happened with Zabar this year. When they got back into Europe for the first time in ages, they, they took so many loans from us. One of the domestic rivals with the highest spending club. Wow, that's really good, actually, then. Maybe they should bring some of that to the main to the main version. Kadri's now up to three stars. He's looking very good. He just lacks that natural fitness. But I'm liking what I'm seeing out of him. Two years left on his deal. Oh, he's got a three-year extension. <laughs> Never mind. We're fine. J uh, yeah, JLo, of course. Yeah. Pog actually works with um, a girl whose name is Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> JLo and Jarju. Yes. Uh, Ollie Cherry. He was doing really well for them, which is odd. I love that it's an all-German round as well. So Germany get even more screwed by it. Is she from the block? I don't know. Do you know what? I never, I never asked. Uh, no longer wants to leave. That's good. So that means Quasi Awu is going to be happier again now. Excellent news. Which I mean, he's playing well without being happy. So imagine what he's going to be like now that he can go for it. God, Buba Niang was one of the first ever loan farmers. He's been on loan for 10 years now. He's 27 years old. He's not quite that guy that we had at Dundalk when he was on loan for, I think, 17 years. No Kanye West, but a lot of people have appeared. The closest is Danny Figuera for some reason. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really understand why. <laughs> I'll refund your points. As Darude plays us out. Right. Plays us out? Where are we going? I actually, I was when I read it over to Gav's stream, what the hell? Okay, so Hibernians are through. Sweet Ear through. Tarshina through by six goals to four. Uh, what a game. One for the neutrals. Also, how are you only just beating San Juan? These guys are semi-professional. Oh, Colo Colo. But yeah, when I ran over to Gav's stream on Thursday, he did this football bingo thing, um, which was really, really cool. Might be something I actually might incorporate into like the end of a stream at some point. So Chelsea narrowly beat with Dan Strong, obviously. Villarreal, 3-1 up against Liverpool. That's some, an interesting... Because the thing is, we're not drawing someone like Liverpool or Chelsea anyway, because it's just how it goes, right? New England Patriots, thank you for the five bits, my friend. Welcome in. How's it going? How's your day? Do a true save. Nasty restriction of 10... Ah, yeah, that's what they'll get you. Unlock... Removing restrictions. Wait. There's unlockables for that? Does it cost money? Chilean Haitian, that's pretty cool, but none of them look that good. I mean, obviously, with I think it'd be quite expensive as well, because Colo Colo. Uh, okay. Richard Agimang Badu, not quite bad E, but still. Gonna earn them through gameplay. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. Not ideal, I suppose, but I guess if you, at least you can earn them through gameplay, right? Uh, did I scout? Yeah, I did. Cool. Lilipor! Wait. Yes, thank you very much. For, sorry, Lilipor. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, do you remember when you could do, like, scenario mode? That was so good back in the day. Always disappointed for you. I've only really ever done one, and that was with Chapa Quince last year. Build a nation. Uh, truthfully, I would never want to do it, Atiku, because you will just get absolutely wrecked by FFP. So I will never break my wage structures. Like, even now, when we're coming to where we are, as far as being, like, a top eight team in Europe, at, at least this season anyway, our wage structure is still toit. So, like... Our highest basic wage is 25,500. And that's for, ironically, a squad player. Uh, but that's just because we try to keep players on lowest. In fact, we only have one guy that's now a start, an important player, which is really useful. No Danes on the team. Um, Danes are expensive, basically. Doesn't have FFP. Oh, fair enough. 
Um, but I was talking about Atiku because I didn't know he was playing on console. Randra. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Randra wasn't, I suppose. Yeah, but Danes are expensive a lot of the time. That's the problem. We did have, we had a couple of cheap Danes, but um, it wasn't... We haven't quite got to the point yet where we can grab guys from like FC Copenhagen and Midgeland or Norgeland yet. We're not quite on that uh, level of financial clout yet. And weirdly, they've not actually produced as many amazing talents as they normally do. There's been a couple, but for the most part, they've actually been slightly disappointing. Usually it was like every time we get a report on FCK and Norgeland and Midgeland, there'd always be like a guy in there who was five stars and way out of our price range. But lately, it hasn't been that case. Either that or our knowledge of Denmark is just gash. I think someone's having a, a like a bonfire. I could smell smoke. <laughs> Either that chat or my PC's on fire. Let me just have a little check. No, I think we're all right. probably up a bit now yeah yeah you want to sort of stagger it slowly up you, what you don't want basically is one guy earning like 50 to 60 even 70 percent more than everyone else because that then means that when they next come in for a contract they'll want another one oh you're a brumby fan i was telling well brumby have some good ones as well um i'm actually going to i'm looking forward to going to copenhagen next month no this month in fact uh unfortunately for our belizean here mike paleo he does appear to have ruptured his leg which is a sad time uh great olympics mm, they're not so great after all are they sad Hang on, was that guy's name Torres Dodger? Oh, Odger. That's Torric Dodge. Torric Odger. Love it. You'd like to think it would blue screen before it would blow up. <laughs> oh, right, I see what you mean, yeah. Uh, what's that name? Oh, it's the uh, the Juarez guy. Wow, the in progresses here are a bit naff lately, aren't they? Give him a chance, I suppose. Danny, thank you for 38 months. Holy Lord. I hope so too. Little, hopefully. I'm going to go for the day. His name is, in fact, Todger, yes. I, I see nothing wrong with that. Uh, right. Does this help out? Look at Luta go. They've just... They've absolutely burst at the seams. Have now got 18 goals. They've doubled their goal scoring for the whole season in the last two games. Look at them. They know what's up. Uh, Balzan, Balzan do have a lot of players on loan from us, including some quite good ones too. Um, they've got Gorgoni, uh, Mateta, Meziani, Zoran... Uh, they're not that good, are they? Did they change management? They might well have done, actually. Nope. Elvis has been in charge for two years now. Big up, Elvis. Toshin still yet to win a game. Has anyone actually gone winless through an entire season? Oh, yeah, Marsa did it with five points. So at least Toshin aren't going to be the worst team ever. And we're only now three goals away from the record. We can get to 100. Probably do it today against Goodyear, right? Nice little 4-0 win or something. Need to make sure I keep starting Palacios. So Palacio, Matt. Christ, get his name right. Could have give the poor guy a uh, an inferiority pro complex. Just keep playing that system, I suppose. The one will not derby. It's true. Although they are, I don't think they're going to get close to Swindon's record of goals conceded. But there's a chance, right? Right. Okay. More goals for Perez and quite twenty goals apiece this season. Now, that front. I feel like this is the future of our front line right now. Quasi who's only 21 and Perez who's only 20 these two I feel like lead the line for years to come I think it's going to be a long time before anyone gets close to these two god it's so weird that we've now just over the course of this year gone from like a Henry and Melman partnership which are good but I think these guys are just better I, I think they're the guys that send us to the stratosphere when we get the bodies behind them when we get maybe Gert develops a little bit more, hopefully, um, some of those centre backs like Kadri start to come into their own. Padilla will continue to develop behind them. Oh, we conceded a goal. Fiona! Three more goals scored, though. Uh, Christ, I genuinely thought I saw smoke then. No, it was just my eyes deceiving me. Scrab on! Thank you very much for the follow. How is your Sunday going, friend? Both wingbacks get assists, which is nice to see. We also conceded a goal to Matthew Side. So, you know what? If anyone's going to score against us, I'm glad it's him. And that now officially does it. With six games to spare, we've officially scored the most goals in any season in this save, and we've still got six more matches to go. I reckon 110 is not out of the realms of possibility, but what I really want is a plus 100 goal difference. Our best goal difference is already met, unless we lose a lot of games. It's it's looking good. This tactic was definitely the right way to go. We're not scoring quite as many goals as we were originally. I reckon we've got another random 8 or 9 nil win in us, just out of nowhere, like we do pull off occasionally. Particularly once we're out of Europe, although... Now we've got a little gap while the European stuff continues to flap on. 
Premier League, get some friendlies in there. But it's that late March stretch where it's really annoying, where there's just no games. But we criticize it now, and it is very annoying when you're not. But once we start getting latter stages of Europe, that little gap in March is going to be absolutely goated because it's going to allow us to focus solely on European games for basically the entire month of March without having league games in between that we have to rest players for. So we just keep the momentum going there, and that's going to be so useful later, I think. The stalls. As soon as the player values started rising, other clubs won't own out offers anymore. Luckily, Sol, <laughs> in a way, you're going to get a price crash on your players anyway. So, <laughs> in a way, that might explain why our loan farms actually got more successful again. Hey, Nimrod. I'll get that in there as well. I'm a six, you end up in the same competition. Really? Imagine if they finished above them. That would be a bit embarrassing, wouldn't it? 144. I think that's possible for us later on. Um, but hopefully, in a way, it doesn't happen because... God, that, they really none of them really want Europe do they <laughs> I, other than Hamron the rest of these positions are not safe at all 161 shitting hell made the same mistake yeah, I did I, I don't think that starting the second tier was a mistake that was exactly what we were planning to do um, the mistake in Ireland was not waiting a couple of weeks for them to fix the database <laughs> um, to fix whatever glitch it was that caused us to have huge issues I really enjoyed the fact that we started in the second tier Thirty-six. Ah, yeah. So extra ten games will certainly give you that extra benefit. I feel like you're right. At the moment, we're developing that sort of group of seven. Oh, Kerry. Yeah, sorry, Kerry weren't in the save uh, when I did treaty because obviously they didn't exist as a club yet. But they do look like they've been a bit whipping boys lately. Yeah. It'd be nice to. What you want to start doing is establishing like seven to eight clubs that can kind of. Oh dear, that's not good. Can kind of compete. And we are starting to get that. I guess, actually, you're right, yeah. Because if Goodyear... Because we know that Goodyear are good. They're still a decent team. They've not got worse. Which means that what's actually happened is those teams have got better and are now on their level. So it's going to start to matter less who actually gets Europe. Although the cup one is the worry for me. Hopefully one of those guys that's sort of top 7-8 gets a cup win too. Um, having Benali, I think we've seen him before, haven't we? He's got caps though. We definitely look again. Hey, hiya, bro. Right. Ooh. Lots of stuff in here any absolute clodders that we can probably get rid of yeah they're all too expensive for loan farm fodder unfortunately we know where to go with that later anyway uh random loanies you're listed at manchester city for very cheap but you don't play a position we use do you alan Fifty-four thousand. what am i even thinking <laughs> what is even on there uh matt whittles of burnley he's all right but he's fully scouted now doesn't look all that good let's see the Filipino guy at Bodder still looks intriguing. Oh, God, I've got something in my eye now. Oh, there we go. Using the editor in Yugoslavia. Oh, fair enough. The build a nation. Um, I don't know because it sounds like you're doing it where you're building up the national team and that's not the type of save I've ever done before. Whenever I'm doing building a nation saves, I'm only ever focusing on the leagues themselves. It's going good, Bente. Um, we're coming up towards youth intake and hopefully next round of the Champions League very soon, which will be good. Mm, he is fully scouted. He's really not it. But he's only 16, which means we'll scout him again. With Espanyol. Oh, fair enough. Back to visit Ireland. Tenuous. Maybe the same clubs. I mean, I guess. Right? Has he really scored in every game? It's nice to see him finally getting a chance to play and actually play well. Now, Hungary didn't do anything, but then that was never the goal. Like, we weren't trying to build the Hungary national team, so it didn't really matter whether they did well or not. But as far as I know, they didn't do anything in particularly interesting in that save. It's a really strong start. It's what he was missing when he was at Nashar, particularly given that he's gone from a second tier side who, where he should have been the best player by a comfortable distance to being in a team where he's probably not the best player anymore. But maybe that's what he needed. Right. Tibor Angela's their fullback. <laughs> I will not stand for this Tibor Angel slander on these parts. Reach nine. Oh yeah, we should have got the bonus for qualification, shouldn't we? What did we get? We were at 6.1. So yeah, we got 1.2 points. Weirdly. Yeah, 1.25 was what we were given for coming fifth. Either way, it's more points. Um, So we are still gaining on the year, but it's still going to be a tough ass for us to even get close to like... That's what how important it is to have other teams help you and have those early rounds that we got bypassed this year for no reason. If we just played 
those two qualifiers, which we should have played, we'd have been sat on 9.3 right now because we'd have won both. Almost certainly, let's be honest. Gilet's developing well. Good. That's what I like to hear. Has he? No, he hasn't learned the role yet, unfortunately. How much did Germany just get? 12? So they just got five points for that. And that's probably because of Europa League and Conference League as well, right? If I had to guess, they probably, whoever was in the league phase almost certainly did well here too. Okay. Uh, Europa League, anybody? Did the Germans not make it? Ah, so there's Schalke, who came 19th. So where the fuck did Germany get all those points from then? This is where I don't understand the game sometimes. How? So they got one team, which was Schalke, who came 19th in the, conf in the Europa League. And then they got... Dortmund in 14th. Gladbach in 17th. And Frankfurt there. And that somehow gives them five coefficient points. Bear in mind as well, theirs is going to be divided by like eight as well. So it means that they would have to get even more co- How the fuck does that ma- How does that work? This is what I don't understand about the game. I'm so confused. Because they wouldn't have had to go through like qualifying rounds or anything. As well, that would have already I'm trying to figure out where the hell the maths is on that. They gained five points. Only have six teams? Nah. Actually, we can find out, can't we? Let's uh, have a look. I'm just trying to work out this. I feel like every time we think we've got this worked out, it just seems to change. Um, Germany season summary. Right. So, so they had Union Berlin in the playoff round of the Conference League. But all those points would have been assessed before then anyway. So they're getting divided by seven, remember? And somehow they gained five points from that. So you, Union must have been knocked out. And besides, all those points we saw would have already been allocated. Now, they would have gained some points for wins on the final day. Because I think there were some extra points that were given, would have been given for that. But it wouldn't have gotten much. Because a win would have only been getting them maybe like 0.275 probably. That math doesn't make any sense to me. How did they suddenly get four coefficient points worth? Don't we just one as well. Ah, true. Yes. Good point. Yeah. And Gladbach might have got appearance money. It just seems very strange, but five points? Because in order to get five points, that means it's five points after the divided bit as well. Crazy. Full German final in the UEL last year. Yeah, but you, last year is irrelevant. Um, getting through the group. No, it is points for getting through the group stage. We're just trying to work out how they got that many of them. <laughs> like three teams, sure. Well, technically four of the Schalke, but you get less because it's uh, less for the uh, Europa League. The Europa League, maybe they have. Yeah, maybe they have. Uh, no, they haven't, have they? Wait. Oh, that's Conference League, my bad. Shaka have won the first leg in fairness as well, so maybe it is accounted for it. It just seems like a lot of points to get for the bonuses, considering we got top eight and got barely anything. Three got through in the Champions League, it's a point each. Um, But is it? Because remember, it will be divided by seven teams. Hmm. Four points per club in the Champions League. If that was the case, we'd have got two. But we didn't get two. We only got 1.25. Point isn't divided. So why was ours divided then? If it's four points, then why did we... Everything's divided. All points are divided by the teams you have in Europe. That's simply not how that works. Yeah. They, they must have got a lot of points there, of course, from the three teams going through. But it's the fact that the, after being divided by seven, it still equals such a large amount. Considering we only got 1.25 off of that entire thing, which means it has to be divided. Viewed as a bonus. Yeah, but... Okay. Objectively, that is not true. Because as I said, ours was divided. Unless... Unless... Well, maybe it wasn't divided, actually. Well, but you said it was four points. Because if it was four points, it has to have been divided. Right? Because we didn't get four points. You're also here. Yeah, but this... I've noticed that FM seems to ignore this a lot of the time. Um, ah, okay, here we go. Right. 
Stand, stage rank nine? What? Someone else said five. Oh, okay. But that doesn't seem to be true either. So divided by the... I can see how... I guess my question then becomes, how the fuck did we only get one point from it? If we were we were there, right? So we should have got 10 divided by 4, which is like 2.5 point, 2 points. When we didn't, we got like 1.25 points. So why did that get halved? That's what I'm confused about. About. New point change. Oh, so you mean FM's not got it registered properly? This is why I always get confused by it, because it seems to constantly change. And it's really hard to get a wrap around of what's actually supposed to be happening. Because every time we think we've got it mapped out, you just see England get like 50 points. And it's usually because of that, generally speaking. In FM, five points for teams finishing top 24. Four points for top eight of Europa League. But what about... So you don't get any bonus for finishing top eight. Big FIFA. Oh, God. And now our striker's out for seven weeks. Germany, they knew they did the old Gonzalo Freitas. It seems a bit weird that you wouldn't get a bonus for finishing top eight. Because otherwise, what's the advantage of finishing top eight then? Other than the fact that you progress through an extra round. But if you don't get any kind of advantage of it, you feel like you should be rewarded for doing so, right? I think the conclusion I've come to is I'm still none the wiser. Gets you less points. Yeah, that doesn't that would make no sense. Why would they punish you for finishing top eight? Because that was my concern about this originally. Because um, last year, you used to have this weird glitch where you still got rewarded progression points for coming for getting through the playoff round. <laughs> it's so very strange. Seven weeks of Royal New Striker. Well, yes, yeah, Sotelo's going to have to get in there, right? Get points for knockout finishes. Well, we didn't last time, uh, which was very intriguing as well. We didn't even get any progression points when we last got knocked out in this round, <laughs> which just confused me even further. <laughs> Oh, hello. That's a nice batch. Oh, well, that's a very nice batch. Oh, well, I would say we'll figure it out, but we probably won't, will we? Uh, Pavlos Siftis, though. This guy looks very intriguing. Everyone just has it. Well, there's every chance that that is the case. Um, every time I expect them to finish, fix it. It seems like it doesn't get fixed. Also, Guayaquil City guy. I don't think I'm scouting them. Right, let's have a look at Pavlos. Oh, Pavlos. I think you're right. Maybe they are just guessing about it. But surely someone would have gone, hang on a minute, why is it that you get more points if you do worse? <laughs> that would make no sense. Surely. Play test it. You could do that as Man City and everything. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Was he six foot five? Yeah, that's insanely low jumping reach for six foot five, I must admit. It's going to heavily come down. I, we've, we're in February now, so we may as well actually fully scout him because he's not going to he's not going to suddenly get po uh, poached by anyone in the meantime. I wouldn't have thought. He's kind of intriguing, but he's more likely to be FM good. English points are correct, and nobody else is yet. <laughs> it's just got a big thing that says if England give points. <laughs> if not England, fuck you. Six XG is decent, although he did underperform it. Anyway, I don't like to dwell on that too much. I know it can get a bit frustrating to watch as well because I'm not understanding it and you get loads of stuff all kind of, yeah. True, I guess at least he's, no, because his jumping reach takes into account height, doesn't it? It's true. I'm bloody hate England. I hate Uncle Jamie. In this case, Uncle Jamie is England. It's that big England bias. I'm convinced. Oh no, it's not, it's not impossible. It has been done already by people like, I didn't do it with MTK and Hungary, but people did using the same save, same save database. God, is COVID back or like what's going on here? Uh, what's Nortiz? Well, I think he's out of contract in the summer anyway, isn't he? Oh, he's not. I want to test out Lords of Hell's theory. Uh, uh, what I have just done there, by the way, is encounter MacArthur FC. So let's try this then. Let's asking price of 7.5 million. He might kick off, but I couldn't care less because who cares, right? Um, now, I want to see if I offer him out and see if it changes it. Ah, so I'll have to wait for the next day. We'll try that. A distant didgeridoo has been <laughs> uh, No, so because we got the bye to the next round, we're still sort of progressing through that round to make sure we get there. Aussie, 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 loans, loans, loans. 
Deportes Colima. Not Colima, Tolima. He's seven. He's 20, but the other guy's more intriguing, potentially. Christ, we've actually got to motor a little bit here to get youth intake and our inevitable demise out of the Champions League. Because we'll end up drawing Manchester City, won't we? we? We're just going to, aren't we? We're going to... Have they got a guy called Chalk? Chris Chalk. I kind of like that name. It's really, like, basic sounding. I feel like he would have played for Manchester City in, like, the 1950s. I bet he wears black boots. He's like Scott Parker. Nah, other multi-sides were gone long ago. Uh, none of them even got into the groups this year. Yeah, Frankfurt out. That's more points for Germany. <laughs> ah, see? <laughs> they didn't get any that time. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could try all now. I don't know how long you actually have to wait to do that. It is actually slightly higher, in fairness. Not much higher, but it is slightly higher. Except that's transfer loan. Let's try this again, then. I'm curious. If I just randomly give him a 300 million pound asking price. <laughs> that would be funny if it actually did scale based on that. I would say great minds, but, you know, we're more blind squirrels in this situation. Oh, any fun nickname combinations at Gremio? There's Kevin. Kevin Lasagna, maybe? Kevin Goreshi. To Hamron. Ah, uh, Nothing. They're just vibing, I think. Uh, Ronaldo Alfredo, good name, but... Hamron is still there, right? Is he another bloody face in the game? Of course he is. No offers. Oh, no, I haven't actually offered them out. I'm just... Hamron. Oh, and they got knocked out against uh, Sigma Olomouc. Which is really annoying, because Sigma hadn't been in Europe in, like, 12 years. So... Next year will be easier, though, because Hamron will actually be in the Champions League with us. So they'll get more opportunities to drop down. Set to break record? Yes, we are. Wait, isn't that already our record? Wait, what? Oh, this isn't where I put Holy my shit. car. That wasn't even the current record. I assume this was maybe when the league had more teams in it. Because Hibernian scoring 97 goals in a 26-game season seems a bit unhinged. Ah, here we go. Slim Jim. Sorry, Slim Slim Jim. Thank you very much for the follow. Let's go. Right. Who could we get? Did I just click skip draw? What's happened? I could have sworn I just clicked view draw. I like. I definitely. I'm almost certain I clicked. I know you can't see because my face cam. But I'm certain I clicked view draw, not skip draw. Okay. That feels doable. Honestly. What are the other draws out of interest? Of course, when they do beat us, they will get 17,000 points. Um, I was about to look for the other German side, but obviously they don't exist. <laughs> what other good ties are there? Inter Benfica is kind of curious. The rest are all absolute Fs, but still. Yeah, sorry. When we when we inevitably knock Dortmund out, they'll still get like 50 points. Okay. Oh, it's right there. This is what I mean. I, there's no way that, that that is how the draw would work in real life. That you wouldn't get your draw until like five days before the match is supposed to be played. It's a European tie. Logistically, that would be a nightmare. Golden stars for multi teams. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Like, what is? I don't think there is a team in multiple golden stars, or is there? Are they like a Gozo team? Um, boom, boom, boom. That might be one of the better draws we could have gotten, truthfully, yeah. We're going to have to rotate for this game, obviously. Uh, I'll get rid of the friendly against St. George, because that's not needed, right? Amount of Germany's points as of now. Yeah, true. So we'll get a, a, a snapshot before the game. Oh, sorry, before the tie, I suppose. Um, Tipo Sugar. Nah, that was always going to be a tough one, because it's Tanzania. No one do that. Cool. Before we get to the game, so we have currently 7.35, Germany 12.4. What the fuck? Go on, start with the team. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah, we used to do that with MTK as well. I don't think we've got 10 yet, though, do we? I think we've only got... No, this, this would be our 10th, actually, as it goes. I don't... Oh god, there's another stadium expansion coming. At least they don't care about the cups this year, I suppose. We've got that on our on our side. So this is rotation, massive rotation. Uh, except we've got to be careful with the rotation here because 
Who the hell's going to start up front next game? It's probably going to have to be Sotelo, which means Henry starts with Melman. The first start pasty on Sirens nipple. Yes. Melman's all the way down there. Could even start Roy, honestly. In fact, fuck it. I'm going to start Roy. We're keeping him around for a reason, right? Padilla's back. But is he? Absolutely not. <laughs> not even a little bit. Um, I'd actually rather start a half for Eric Nunez. Ortiz is fine. Cazorla's fine. And is fine. Lahovi's fine. Del Castillo. Vrabel and Hilton, although in the middle, perhaps. And then Richard. I guess we could... Oh, yeah. Brandau's fine. Yeah. And then... Who the hell is Giovanni Simmons? I genuinely didn't know who that was. We we'll might as well start our keeper. Because, you know, no point in not starting him. You got a screenshot. Nice. So we're going to advance next year. Uh, we're looking at going up three this year, despite our horrendous year. We're still going to go up three places for the time being. So that will take us to 12th. Okay, that'll do. Who's getting squad numbers? Oh, both of them. Okay. How goes our keeper? Very. Our new keeper, he's already saved two penalties in the Champions League for us this season that has won us points. Technically, the Bayern one didn't win us points because we won 3-2 anyway. Oh, no, yeah, technically, the Bayern, yeah, he's he got us the win against Bayern when it could, would have been a draw if the penalty had scored. And he got us a draw against City. 2-0. That's fine. It's more points. Brandhouse now hurt. Great. Got a goal before he got hurt, though. Yeah, all the other Maltese teams are knocked out already. They've been out, out for years. They, they didn't even make the group stages this year. Good God. So we're back in the Champions League. Lots of budgets for next season. Wow, that's actually a really nice, healthy bump on the transfer budget. We take that. Ungom spotted. Nice. 11 in a row. All right, we take that. So, Dortmund time. I'm a bit concerned about the fact that we're not going to have our star striker. And I think, honestly, the lack of Perez is probably going to be what cost us this. I don't think that Sotelo or Roy is going to be able to do it. And it's a genuine question of who do we start in that role, Sotelo or Roy? I think it has to be Sotelo because on pure attributes, he is better than Roy, obviously. Um, but Roy's definitely coming off the bench. Hammer win again. Balsam win again. All right. 10 bits. Thank you very much, Aaron, for the 10 bits. I really do. Sorry, Aaron, 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 Aaron. It's nightmare difficulty exactly as well. If we were going to have any luck, we won't get it in the knockouts. We've never had a single lucky moment in the entirety of FM in the knockout so far. And this is our fourth attempt to, albeit only the second time we've been in this round. We've still never won a knockout tie in the Champions League in this save. But this is, I would say, the best opportunity we've had so far in terms of opposition. Because so far we've played Inter twice and Arsenal once. Always going to be tough. And last time we did a better job against Inter, at least managed to win a game. Okay, so Lahovi's making some good progress, which is not bad, considering he doesn't seem to have... He's looking quite good, actually. Like, I'm, I'm fairly impressed with how he's actually starting to look. If he just gets that marking and positioning up, there's a re we'll make a good wing back out of you yet. How are you developing? How could you possibly be developing still? But this is why we've moved him over to roll... Oh, wait, have I got him on the wrong one? No, I don't. Okay, we're good. To roll training now, so he can start to get that second bump. Seems to work. I need to have go look through the squad at some point and actually see who else is needing that. Yeah, Luhovi's better than him. And I feel like he's going to be... Maybe not better. He's not going to be better than Palacio. I think if we can get Luhovi up to like three and a half star CA though, which looks possible, I think he's a really usable backup. And he's still quite young too. Uh, Quasi on the right. And then my boy Sotelo through the middle. Let me just look at his attributes. Is he fast? Yeah, he's fast. He's faster than he can finish. And that's kind of like Perez, basically. Um, da -da 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 -da. we want Diaz. Ah, shit. Right, this is a problem because. Wait, no, hang on, I've got an idea. Oh, no, Kadri's not available either, is he? Fuck. Yeah, this is the issue. Basically, the guy is suspended and Kadri's injured. Maybe I should have kept Gert in the squad. Um, such is life. So it's going to have to be Vega. And wait, it's Camera Lend injured as well. Oh my god. Oh, we're in trouble. And is injured as well. We took um Gile out in order to bring Sotelo in, because we wouldn't have been able to have a strike we wouldn't have been able to register him otherwise. And I figured that with Gert not playing in the Champions League for us anyway, and we had Kadri as cover and technically Kamga as cover, we didn't really need Gert in Europe. But as it happens, the guy's suspended, Kadri's injured, and now Kamga's injured. And Sotelo would have had a tantrum about it if we didn't include him. That's just, yeah. You can't really legislate for losing all three players in the same position 
I think we did the right thing. It's just unfortunate. Um, honestly, I might just do a selection of ice again and see what my assistant says. Vega and Nunez. What's Vega's tackling like? 11? He doesn't have the work rate for the role, though, and I think we're going to get absolutely rinsed in the midfield because of that, because he's too creative. But Nunez is going to have to start alongside him. We're just going to have to rely on the fact that we need the defenders to play really well, and we need the midfield to essentially just do a job. Diaz and Nunez. Yeah, the problem is... <sighs> Carney? I mean, doesn't... What's his passing like? Oh, yeah, no, you're right. It's a shame, though, because Diaz, we're going to miss out on... Actually, to be fair, he doesn't even have good finishing. He just scores goals. He shouldn't, but he does. Yeah, that was a better idea. Okay. It's a lot of pressure to put on Nunez. It's, hang on, where's Padilla's... Yeah, Padilla's not in any shape to play. He'll be back for the second leg, probably, but I'm just not sure we're going to have enough in the tank here. I think those injuries might be what cost us a chance in this round. Although, we will have Nagai back next round. He was only suspended for one game. So it might not be the end of the world, but... And this is the away game first, which in a way I think actually works for us. I'd rather play the away game first because we'll have the stronger team available for the home game. If we can just get through this match without being like embarrassed, like if we lose this game, then great. Well, not great, but make it be like a one goal defeat that we can turn around. Break the shape of the tactics. Um, nope. I mean, we've been doing it the entire season, so it seems to work just fine. I just follow my sister's instructions again. And it's, it's worked for us so far this year. That was something we tried out with the old tactic, and I don't really think it had much of an effect. But now that we've moved over to something a bit more aggressive, I think that we can just do what we were doing. Uh, it's tactics, because there's... Um, it, well, it has always been the command, but you also get both tactics in there. Too. Not that we've really used the other one this one as well. Uh, right. Uh, just to prove that, I don't know why it... <laughs> just literally the guy's name got auto-modded. I think the longer we can stay in the tie... I just don't want to be losing it like 3-0 or something. And that would just give us absolutely zero chance at home. But I feel like with this new style of play, we're always good for a random goal. Like, we're just... We're generally good for like a random moment of quality. I still feel like we could do better from set pieces, but we have at least been able to score a few this season. Hasn't been like crucial ones by any means, but they are still getting us some extra goals. I think that might be why we're tracking up in the league. Ironically, Dortmund are playing the ball around a lot like we were against Bayern, right? Please don't do something stupid here. Are we about to... Oh my god, I thought we were about to get rep rolled immediately. Wait, that was the highlight. Ah, oh, Jesus. That was the highlight. The, a back pass that our goalkeeper just clears easily. Th that was the entirety of that highlight. This is round of 16, yes. Okay, you know what? So far, 20 minutes in, possession's crap, but we are having a couple of shots here and there. We're not looking like we're getting destroyed by Dortmund by any means. I feel like we're in this game. Yeah, it was the goal line technology um, because the ball went near the line. Not that I've ever seen goal line technology give the ball over the line. It always just only shows it when the ball goes near the line. Which is funny as hell. We're shutting them down defensively. We're being patient. But it does mean that we will concede a goal off of a random mistake. Because uh, that unfortunately is how it just goes. No, I'd say this is probably the best uh, draw we could have had, honestly. All the other teams are very... Look at this passing play. Oh, that's such a shame because that was a really nice little bit of playing through the press there. This has got back post header written all over it. Nearly was as well. I actually don't think we're playing that poorly. There's never an easy draw really in the round of 16. But I think we got one of the better ones we could have got. Vegas already on a book. Look at that. That right there. That's usually a sign of bad things to come and winning the ball, losing it again. The ball is right next to him and he doesn't bother to try and pick it up. Oh, Jesus. It's stuff like that when you're just like, please! And now we can see the goal off of it, probably. Yep. Ah, loan farm, we're up to 196 on loan. That is proper, like, Rashford work right there. Is that going to be given? No, it's not. It's offside. I didn't think that looked offside, but I will. Like, the ball is right there, buddy. Just show a little bit of energy. Now, in fairness, he doesn't have the highest match sharpness. Oh, he's miles offside. Take that back. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, he is as offside. He didn't quite stoy in the goal. Don't want to growing into it, but we're not doing bad. I take If we got a nil-nil in Germany, I would be totally happy with that. Ease off tackles. Yeah. And there's not really much. You can't, like, put tackle harder on them, can you? Right, come on. Just drop it here. Look for the pass. That's a great pass. Diaz. He's all the way through. Diaz is all the way through. Go on, shot. Oh, what a save. 
I just smashed the microphone. How'd you figure out before it got... Oh, so if um, it goes to VAR, click this, expand this menu here, and it will show an assister. And if you see an assist listed, that means the goal is about to be given. The only time you won't be able to do that, obviously, if there is no assist. But that's how you know if it's going to be given or not. Start season in Europe. Uh, seven. Oh, big save again. We've had a couple of openings there. A renowned attack. Um, I don't know, but we use one and it works. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, when it comes to tactics a lot of the time, I can't really explain why I do what I do. I just try things until it works and then try to sort of reverse engineer the, the explanation. Right. I've been fairly impressed with that. Nunez has been carried a little bit. The midfield is where we're struggling. Shocker. <laughs> it's where we're missing all of our players. So it actually isn't surprising to me. And Sotelo's not really played. Has to have an assist if it's offside, no. Uh, technically not, because if, say, the ball is played through and it comes off of a defender, but they're in an offside position when the ball is played through, the game doesn't count that as an assist because it comes off the defender. So like, say it's actually like passed by the defender. So the game is weird about it. Basically, you can see sometimes there won't be an assist. There are certain scenarios where it won't show an assist, but it is still technically offside, basically. But like 90 times out of 100, you'll be fine. Why is it 90 times out of 100? What? Nine times out of 10. <laughs> right. For example, right, with own goals, um, say the ball is played through to a player who then squares it and it goes in off the other player. It's still offside from the original pass, but you won't see it come up there because it's an own goal or there's no assist on it, you know? Right. Mm. Here we go. Come on. 91.7 times out. Exactly. Now you understand. Oh, that's a pass. Nunez, can he make up for the first half? Miss. Oh, no. Oh, hey, Markwood. How's it going? You know, it'd be going better if we could have scored that. Oh, what a chance. Do you know what? I would have rather that fell to pretty much anyone else in our front line except Nunez there. Hot damn. That was such a good moment. Do you know what? Considering this is a weakened side, particularly in a key area of this team, I've been very impressed. Oh, no. No. What was that? Good save. Is he Darwin Nunez, literally? Oh, I think Nunez might have to come off. I don't know who to bring on. But his lack of match sharpness could cost us if he... And I think that's part of the problem as well. He isn't the sharpest tool in the shed in many ways. I'm very impressed that we've literally matched Dortmund here. Particularly with the away disadvantage and a weakened side. I just noticed that a guy called, just got, called Rutherford. Tom Rutherford for Porto there. Right. Okay. Nobody's played that well, but we've made do. Padilla might honestly, just for the last 30 minutes, it's not ideal because he is already as tired as the player he's replacing, but we kind of need someone in there. Uh, Vida's done well, so he stays in. Palacio and Vida's really no reason to take them off. Quasi were, I don't think Melman. Added height. And to be honest, I feel like we might need a bit of Roy. The rest of the team we leave... Might have to replace one of the fullbacks, maybe, because Vida's on a booking, but not yet. He might be like a 75-minute sub. Okay. Imagine if Roy scored. I probably should have brought Henry on, in truth, but I'm just favouring Roy at this point because I feel like his attributes are pretty good. Vida, basically Vida hit Max CA, it seems, and everyone has sort of grown around him. So he's still as good as a player as he was. It's just that everyone else has got better, pretty much. Right, Vida's on a booking and is tired. Oh, he's getting better, though. Hmm. What I will say, of the players that could come in, Lahovi has is replacing someone who's played worse than Vida, and he's got better match sharpness than Krastev, who would be replacing Vida, even though he's on a booking. And we still we can actually do both, in fairness. I forgot I had a third, the fifth sub. You know what, fuck, I'm going to do both. Krastev and Lahovi, just for fresh legs. For 15 minutes of fresh legs on the wingbacks could maybe enough to create one opportunity against the tired fullbacks of Dortmund, although they have actually replaced their left back. This is some away performance. Like, we've been the better side here, and actually probably it would be good value if we got the result, which doesn't look like we're going to, but a nil-nil draw would be a fantastic result for us away from home. And it means if there is a winner and we get it, we would probably be deserving of it. Oh, please not like this, FM. Don't you fucking dare. Wow. That was very nearly some pure cheese from SI. From FM there. Goalkeeper randomly misses it in the 94th minute. Luckily, he hits the bar with it. Bloody hell, what a chance for Dortmund. We got away with that one. I still think we were a good value for the draw. Can't believe there was no goals in that game. But 
We got away with it. An away draw is actually doable. Like, I think we can beat them at home. We definitely take that. And it's coefficient points, albeit for Germany as well. So, ah, we should be able to see. So both of us should have gained after this game. So it's one point for a draw in total, which means we should get 0.25. And Germany should get, oh Christ, like point... What should Germany get? 0.1 something? Let's see. So they go to 15... I think that was correct because they had like 12.4 something, right? And we've now gained a little bit more on that. That looks correct. So far. Germany's correct and ours is fairly easy to work out as well. So, right, we cancel that friendly. So we got a nice week off in between. Cool. Now we don't have to worry about that. It's great not being able to, not having to like rotate for the next game. We can just play the game. Correct as well. Excellent. Indecent. <laughs> They're just rounding up and up and up. <laughs> okay. It must have been that they all just won on the final day and then they got all the extra points for qualification that we tend to not see as often because uh, Dortmund Dominant, not really, no. Um, they have won a few titles, I think, but not to the extent you think. It's just <laughs> Bayern are absolutely shocking. They've actually only won the last two titles as it goes. <laughs> Bayern didn't even get... In oh, that was when they came fourth, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, Ortiz, let's see. Sorry, we've been busy focusing on the uh, Champions League. Uh, Ortiz, let's see. So intermediaries have no interest now. Now, is that just because the fee is way too high? Potentially, that could be the case. It seems like there is an upper limit, but we could always try and drop it down to like, I don't know, 50 million. See if there is like a, a point where the game does kind of consider it to be... It'd be nice to find the pressure point. I love how he hasn't actually kicked off about this. Let's try 50 million. I'm still waiting for the uh, inevitable loan bid from MacArthur, honestly. If I could get a million quid for him, I'd take it. To be honest, anything we can do that gets slightly better value for players that we want to get rid of, given the situation that the game has put us in, I think I'd take. Uh, we go to the 8th of March. Oh, my birthday in-game. Love to see it. Oh, speaking of which, we should have a youth and take in a minute. Right, there we go. Youth and take. What are we saying? What do you reckon? Three times the initial. Uh, well, we already went to 7.5 million off of, like, 700k. So that was 10 times, and that works still. One good player. I'm going to go one guy who's three-star. It has to be, right? What the fuck? Hello, random center back who's the only man in Cadiz's Youth Academy. If there was a four star guy now, I'd be absolutely elated. Oh, hello, was that 15? Philip Disler, okay. It's rare that we see anyone in that particular pot. Okay, top player's bound to be called Matthew, and go. Oh, that's bad. Two and a half. That might be the worst one we've ever had. Get a nice inverted wing back, my favourite. Any fun nationalities? Not one. There's is there even any Matthews in here? There's a guy called Charlo Martinelli. That is the worst one so far. Um Right. <laughs> oh Carl Grek. Ruben Ferrugia. Let me just check the Oh, yeah, you can't see the information, can you? I want to see if there's any second nationalities in there, but I don't think there are. We'd be able to tell. For it. Look at the Camilleries. Camilleries for days. Yeah, that is definitely the worst intake we've ever had. So, yeah, we'll probably... What I'll do is I'll wait around, and then when the trials are expiring, because they'll all appear in that squad, I can just mass sign them all up at the same time. The, the, enjoy Pembroke, is all I can say. And they shall. Yeah, they'll just go into the loan farm. That, they'll be the guys that will take us to 200 loans. Like, we're up to 196 loans now. Those are what will push us over the edge into the 200 mark. Chris, if we do get past Dortmund, we're doing another round of uh, Champions League today. We'll have to go long if we need to, because we're finishing the season today no matter what. Actually, where are we? Because mm, that we could more time. We'll have to see. See what the time's looking like. Because there's still stuff to do. Ortiz check. Oh, yeah, good point. Uh, Wilson Ortiz. Ah, 
that? Oh, now it's dropped back down again. I'm not sure it's decided by that at all, honestly. Because that's now less than we were looking at before, is it not? When it was set to 7.5 million. I might be wrong. Hmm. Intriguing. Don't believe any of them are good. Ah, uh, well, well... Let me just only filter by under 19 squad. And then we will ask my assistant to... Wait. Can I not? Wait. Add his transfer target. They're free. Can I not ask my assistant to... All right, fuck it. Let's try that. It'd be weird, but let's see if that actually works. I thought I could just select them all and have him, like, give them contracts. But apparently not. Nepal, that's dope. To be fair, a guy came through in the Norwegian um, from Bodder with Filipino first nationality, which is pretty dope. Uh, Joe, you know if we were going to, if we do get through, actually, who would we even want? There is not really an easy tie if we go through because Benfica are actually really good. Oh well, he's going to sign them anyway. It's just a weird way of doing it. Oh, Giovanni Simmons. You're the guy we got from Willem Tway, which means you can... Well, there's no point in offering him out here, but I might as well just to establish it so it puts him on the loan list. Cool. Want to get through first? Oh, of course we do. Um, but, hey, you've got to... Sometimes it's still cool to look to the horizon, even when there's traffic in front, right? <laughs> Live, love, laugh, and such. <laughs> so Benfica are through. Barca are out. Juve are out. Liverpool are out. Although Liverpool only scraped past uh, Villarreal, in fairness. So that's not hugely surprising. And also, they've lost to us in this save in the not-so-distant uh, past. Maritzburg, well, that's surprising. Surely they've got a couple of players or two. Wow. They've got Azula, but he's, he's 19, which means we've definitely seen him before because I recognise the name. Scouting update. Uh, wow. That's a really bad scouting update. Actually, for the time being, I might just send them around again. We've got bigger things to focus on. Oh, they're coming in slowly, but surely. <laughs> laugh, laugh, laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Me whenever I go for a walk. Oh god, this song. <laughs> ah, put in the cunt in country. <laughs> Let's see. It do be slapping in fairness. In some in many ways. Right. Uh Dortmund time. I'm highlighting the wrong team. Okay, who's back? Nagai is back. We want is Padilla available? He is, but I'd rather play him... Honestly, I'd rather play Diaz there. No, wait. Fuck. Diaz there, Padilla there, and then... Sotelo through the middle. That might be our only choice here. It's a better team than the last game, particularly with Kadri being back as well. Do you need to sign Jarju? Yeah, we... I don't think I signed... Did I sign Jarju in the... With Treaty United as well? Yeah, the wages in Ukraine are extremely large for... Well, and the values of the players too. God, I think losing Perez could be what cost us this tie. Because we had chances in that first game, but they weren't taken. Because they were falling to players that weren't really capable of doing it. Bit of match sharpness issues could cost us too, but there's really limited to what we can do. Padilla's just a better player. Having Padilla there, he's such a better trek. The, look at the, the finishing and composure that he's got. He does lack the physical still, and I think that's what's going to hold him back from being Henry. Nah, because Henry's got even worse match sharpness. Albeit minorly, but he actually has even worse match sharpness. And also, I believe Henry's only good on his right foot. I love those shots across the keeper. So, having Padilla back is good. Having Nagai back is good. Having Kadri back is good. The squad is better, and it allows us to put players in slightly more comfortable positions today. Not really give up on Henry completely. We just have better players than him, right? Like, he's still here, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to play a player who I think we have better players than. I think Sotelo at the moment is slightly better than Henry. And more importantly, I think they're around about the same level, but Sotelo is, has slightly higher match sharpness, and that's so important. Right, let's go. Moment of truth. Can we progress to the next round of the Champions League? for the first time ever.
have an Eeyore. We, we do. It's not actually his name. He just has no confidence. So chat calls him Eeyore. Oh, yeah. We'll still find a way to lose because Dortmund are going to bring out the big guns here. I thought we were so good in Germany. We played so well in that first leg, considering the team. Right. Although, as you're seeing, it's already started off with Dortmund having all the early chances. And now he... No, he can play through that. Here we go. Quasia will. It's a dangerous pass, but we've got the chance now. Palacio. We need a big game out of Palacio and Vida. And we're getting it so far. Palacio's... Oh, dear. That was such a you're playing in the knockouts kind of touch, wasn't it? A couple of... Uh, well, an early yellow for Tunkara is not helpful. So tell He's offside by miles, right? Yeah. Not even close. Good finish, though. Um, they're always better at finishing, I find, when they're offside. They always seem to go in. But it's nice to see that he was able to finish it. That was better than the chance... Actually, to be fair, he didn't really get many chances in the first leg. Oh, yeah, he's absolutely miles offside. <laughs> it's like he was dragging his back foot like he was going over the blue line in hockey. It's not how offsides work in football, bruv. Don't see that. Sometimes you do, actually. But I've seen some pretty bad misses that were also offsides. Yeah, I think Kona guy will be able to recover. Well, that's three bookings already. Shows that we're doing a good job of the press, or at least we are pressing. <laughs> we are pressing. We, we are pressing, maybe. No shots in 37 minutes, though, concerns me greatly. This reminds me a lot of the first game, where we kept them quiet, but we aren't creating anything ourselves this time. Right, here we go. Kadri. Oh, dangerous. Palacio. So Tello's through. He's got to finish this time. And it's another big save. I just feel like Perez buries these chances. How is it still nil-nil in this tie? Quasio was drilled one. That's going to be another corner, I think. Oh. Offside? How? It was a direct header from a corner. How could he possibly be offside? Okay. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. Unless it was the guy that was running after it, but that... It was already going out of play at that point. How could that possibly have... Oh, it did count. It did count. Because that must have been the header, right? No, it was the chance before that. It actually was given offside. FM, have a word. This has been a poor performance so far. Kadri's really struggled. Sotelo struggled again. Henry or... I might bring Henry on instead of Roy this time. It's inside the goal. <laughs> right. Band Parody of Angels. It's it's going to come. It's just that I've had things... I've basically just had other work to do, really. Like, stuff like that. I, if I'm going to do that, I want to do it well and actually have it be kind of fun rather than sort of half-arsing it. So I will do it. It's just, you know... It's lower down the priority order, so to speak. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with that. So... I, I have a horrible feeling we're going to get a random red card for a second yellow, which means I think I will prioritise that for our first set of substitutions. Mr. Deborah Bruce, yeah, but we didn't have a lot of time. There was only literally like five days in between, and I wasn't about to like deprioritize the things I was working on for it, really. Right. This has been really bad from us, honestly. What is going on? Um, okay. It's annoying, though, because it's players that. We'll get Vega in for Diaz because he's playing shit and he's booked. I'm going to bring on Henry. Fuck it, we're doing Watara as well. Uh, yeah, no, I'm doing Melman too. Extra height from a corner, maybe. We've got no one to bring on from the guy. Oh, I guess we could push Kadri further forward, but he's already on a shit rating. But I think that might just be a better option at this stage. <laughs> Save one more sub that we can use for one of the fullbacks, maybe. Because they're going to get tired. And Vida struggled anyway. Right. Okay. Just like a throat. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, that's why I was finding it weird that the game disallowed that well not disallowed it but didn't count the shot because it was offside apparently right okay we've only had one corner in this game I'm tempted to put play for set pieces on yeah always try to save us up for an injury just in case especially as things stand it's going to extra time as well so we'll get another one there I suppose but right here we go I feel like playing for set pieces particularly with Melman on the pitch now might help good oh, <laughs> I was going to say good tackle but Vida's just thrown himself at that really annoyingly could clear. Oh, no, no. I thought, I thought he was going to get to that. What do you reckon? A long range banger from Dortmund or something. Like 68 minutes into the second leg. It's still nil nil in the tie. Cleared again. Oh my God. Oh no. As if that's the goal. <sighs> We've not been good enough in the second leg, basically. All that good stuff from the first game has evaporated. And we've been presented with no attacking threat. 
like just yeah there's nothing to keep you can do about it that's just sec that's just champions league football unfortunately um but we now might as well make that second sub because what difference does it make at this point i might actually get padilla off for nunez because he is struggling now i think it's particularly if we you know if we were to get the equalizer somehow we'll go to extra time anyway ah oh dear oh let me guess we're now concede a corner goal of our own oh as if <laughs> that's a shame but it, it is what it is when you're in the sec when you're in the knockouts of the champions league it's just difficult they are just better like seriously that's how we can see the goal wow um okay they've just been way better than us in the second leg it's kind of embarrassing we haven't scored a goal over this um but that's just just what it is well go on nunez the thing is we will now score uh, that's usually what happens. Once they get the second goal, then you're normally allowed to score. So I could see this being a Melman backpost header or something. Oh, wait, is this going to be a third goal for Dortmund? Right, Vega. Vita Zinia, there it is. Now, part of it also could be that the importance of the match is greater, but I don't think the game works like that, does it? The importance of the match is based on the reputation of the competition you're in and not the round of the competition. So Champions League match is going to have the same reputation no matter what the match is. Um, right. So we are back in it with Vida of all people. Is there still hope? I mean, that's our first shot on target of the game. We wouldn't deserve any... Oh my God, imagine. Imagine if the play for set piece actually, actually worked. Vega. Oh my god. If that's us, it's in the net. <laughs> if that's us, that's just a goal, isn't it? Palacio. He's through. Palacio! Yes! Sirens 2, Dortmund 2. Get in. We don't deserve it. But we are level in the Champions League again. <laughs> this was such a cheesy goal, by the way. Like, I would hate it if we conceded this. Like, look at the way they defend, or don't. That touch from Palacio, straight past, top bins, 2 all in no way deserved but we'll take it i guess based on the first leg as well but the first leg was fairly close this one hasn't been um we'll still probably lose but at least we gave it a go we've got back into the game at least before then throwing it away top bins gotta be hasn't it oh clips the bar right 17 finishing Nah, i don't think it's as good as that it is in fact five <laughs> It's not quite as good as 17. It's close. Oh, no. Oh, actually. Go on. Yes. It's gone to Melman. Breakaway. Come on. Counter-attack him. Imagine if we actually got this back and won it in normal time. Oh, my God. That was a dangerous bit of play. Oh, fuck off. There we go. Well, I hope it's been fun. Uh, it's been, been fun chatting with you a lot today. Oh, it's offside. Oh, God damn. I thought we were being very dangerous playing through that press there. And then when Se when Vega took that horrendous touch, oh, damn. Uh, so if you go to penalties, in fact, no, it, the coefficient counts after 90 minutes, I believe. Uh, so it will count as a draw, I think, no matter what. Or it might be after normal time, I forget. Oh, hang on a minute. Vida, ball in. Palacio! How has that not gone in the net? Oh, no. Holding us into this match. Uh, well, it's two all. <laughs> Ball in. Cleared away. Go on, get across to him. That's a great foul from Nunez. Really good foul. That'll probably get us to extra time. Oh, I don't know how that's not gone in. I think it hits the defender before the goalkeeper gets a chance to save it. That's the only explanation I have. Because the thing at the bottom said, to Carter blocks Baidu. And I was like, what? Because I think that was Palacios again. Uh, right. Okay. We get an extra sub. The question is who the hell comes on? And Doi, Krastev, Lohovi, Fleming, Rojas. Okay, so the strikers are fine. It's going to have to be one of the fullbacks who ironically have played just as good as each other. But Palacio is on a booking. And Vida has scored. Then it's so... I love how both of our fullbacks are the ones that have got the goals. Um... Anxious, whereas Krastev is anxious and has worse match sharpness. That's literally my decision. It's based on who has more match sharpness. They're both anxious. We've only got one sub left, though, don't we? Yeah, that was our last sub anyway, because we'd already used five. Uh, right. I think the play for...
Slave Set pieces has worked. Like, we've definitely looked like we were threatening a bit more from them. And with the added height on the pitch, although we've lost a little bit of that now with the substitution there. But I think that might help us slightly, right? This is better. Retire. Yes. Right. Still free to avoid red. Um, yeah, the problem is, though, if we stay on feet when we just keep losing the ball, uh, we won't win the ball back as fast. I'd rather run the risk of a red card. What? It's 3-2. He's offside. I'm not sure, you know. Nope, that's onside. We're leading. We're leading in extra time here. If we put stay on feet on basically, we've tried this for a bit, actually, with get stuck in, turned off. We just could not get the ball off teams anymore. And it was so bad. Wow, we lead. From absolutely dead in the water to this. What a pass from Vega. I would not have thought that he'd try something like that. Dreadful defending from Dortmund. And Henry is not dead yet. Right. Which, the problem is we've scored really early in extra time now. We're already on um, play for set pieces. So that's one of our time-wasting things already ticked off. But we can't really start time-wasting too soon because we'll just invite pressure onto ourselves. But hey, look at us. Look at us go. Melman now. He's got Vida with the overlap. Oh God, look at the space. Vida's got bodies. Oh, wait, no. We still got it. Edge of the box. Go on. Kadri, there's one more pass. Oh no, we overplayed that so badly. That might have been a situation where the work ball in the box did hold us back, but more often than not, it's what actually gives us goals. We will now concede off of it, bear in mind, because we're not going to mark this guy. We're just going to let him all the way through. Oh, what a save! Yeah, Dortmund have gone full out attack against us, and it is going to allow us counter-attacking chances. The issue is just the tiredness of the players on the pitch, because we play such a high-intensity game. That could cost us. I might move to some light time-wasting for the second half of extra time, a bit earlier than normal, because it is extra time. Oh god, it's straight off the kickoff. But I couldn't actually make the change, I don't think, until I'd clicked start second half. I might have been able to, but oh well, it's done now. Hindsight's twenty twenty. That's nice. Oh, hang on, slip him in. No one, pass it. Yes! Henry to kill it, maybe. Henry Watara! Oh my god, he's hit the crossbar. He's hit the crossbar. <laughs> that has to be a goal, Henry. Right, now we start killing it off. Oh, what a chop what a great bit of football. Um, right, so. Tempo down a little bit. That's such a great start for us there, right? Bit of time wasting. Tempo down a little bit. Scowls in Soltero. <laughs> yeah, Vida is dead. Kadri's dead, but lowering the tempo should help with that, but it might also upset our balance slightly. Right. Now we go to the last set of that. Keep the passing short. Okay. Oh. Try some long balls. Uh, Not messing with the passing set. There's no reason to, right? But we're winning the game. Changing the passing settings to me just seems like a you're asking for trouble because that's just going to give them the ball back repeatedly. I think our best bet is just to try and strangle the game and just see it out if we can. That's better. I I'm surprised Vida's still walking at this point, honestly. He must have zero fitness. But Melman still finds it with the pass. Yeah. That wow, what a dreadful pass from Dortmund too. Lahovi cuts inside. Lahovi finishes it off. Sirens 4, Dortmund 2, Uri Lahovi puts us through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Shout focus, that never works. Um, oh, 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 oh. By the way, four of our, sorry, three of our four goals have been schooled, but scored by our wingbacks. Like, what was their defender doing there? Lahovi drills it low. Oh, they, they are as tired as up. This is very true. And now, surely, we're going to the quarterfinals. For the first time ever. Our first ever progression to the knock through a knockout round of the Champions League. We were 2-0 down and dead. We didn't score until the 78th minute in this tie and we've managed to turn it around. Holy shit, what a result that is. We are through to the quarterfinals. Coefficient, baby! Except it's going to count as a draw, isn't it? But we'll get progression money. We, we'll get progression points. The XG, yeah, fully. I fully agree. We didn't even start playing until this game. Our first shot was the first goal, I think. Free money, which is really nice. We do love a bit of free money. Holy hell, man. Milan beat Chelsea. Atletico are through. We beat Atletico before. Eight million quid. Right, okay. Coefficients. So, Germany, they didn't gain any points. We've gained a little bit, I think. Well, we definitely have gained, obviously. 8.125. I don't know how much we gained from last time to see how that much that was actually worth us. I don't know if it's... It might be because the round's not finished yet. Because there might be games on... No, this is Wednesday. Should have been a draw. True. Maybe... What did, did we get any points? Maybe it does count after extra time this time around. Maybe they've changed it for this year. 
Oh, at least we've got a bit more. Maybe you do from the extra time results. It used to be that it was, um, <laughs> round 16 provides no shocks. <laughs> Point 0.5 for the match. Yes, okay, cool. Nothing, no bonus pro progressing in the last 16. Well, it used to be. There definitely used to be. Um, okay. 700 grand is very tasty. Uh, my attempts to capture him have failed. What do you mean failed? He's free. <laughs> okay. Round of 16 staggered. It might be. Yeah, good point. No, it might be. Uh, it isn't, but it... Oh, it, it is staggered. It's just not... We were on the other end of the stagger, it seems. I think. Yeah, all the rounds have happened. It looks... Yeah, we didn't gain anything. And Germany didn't gain anything either. Yeah, and, and you didn't take that. It was just like, I know what you're doing. I know where you're sending me. I don't want to end up at... Uh, he just doesn't want to go to Pembroke on loan. No, other multi sides went out. They didn't even get to the group stages, unfortunately. Such is life. Started doing interesting transfers, yeah. Um, depends what you define interesting as, I suppose. But really, no. Uh, they're just sort of signing the normal types of players you'd expect. They haven't got the money to do the big transfers yet, really. Hammer are the only ones that have... Uh, Hammer and Goodyear have got a bit of cash around them, but they tend not to sign too much anyway. I don't understand that at all, but it is what it is. Oh, God. Less than ideal. Okay. Final updates. Um, so we've just reached the quarterfinals of the Champions League for the first time ever. How's my boy Roy? He's good. He's We could have loaned him out, but decided not to in the end because we actually want to give him a little bit of a chance. Get the English guy. Uh, yes, but it wasn't high. Uh, he went to someone else. I think it was Zabari went for in the end. It wasn't Hibernians. It was... Hibernians were the team that were in for him, but someone else actually ended up bidding him in the end. I think it was Zabar. Uh, right. They do hoover up some great talent, but they're just, yeah, very small budget. They will eventually start signing a better team once they, yeah, have a better place in the same position joining. I guess so. But it's just like... So he'd just rather... I guess it's just like a priority thing. Whoever signs first is just like... That's it. Adam Ida, that was it. Yeah, because he scored against us, didn't he? Those guys might be worth a little look. Atleti is definitely an option, I would say. But I reckon we just get like a PSG or someone, right? Uh, we can play whoever we want because we haven't even got a draw yet. So it does give us a chance to get some players back fit, though, potentially. Like, imagine if we could get per per I mean, no, there's no way Perez. I think Perez wouldn't be back until the semi final if we were to somehow get there, which is just not happening, is it? The irony is, right, we're gonna ha we're having our best season in Europe ever. Best season in terms of points in the group stage, best season of progression, and we're gonna end up with, like, our worst year. That's just hilarious, isn't Happy it? Happy Twitch dating. Join them here! Thank you very much for the 24 months, my friend. A minuscule win there, but we do get the result. Right, before I do any of that, I will just be quickly getting us a bit of a Hulk yoga. I believe, um, East yes, there is an Iswatini guy at... Um, Slima, I think. There's some pretty interesting nationalities knocking about. What? Oh, did, did Vega just get hurt as well? Should be the winner of Arsenal Porter. Uh, I don't think they. Oh, to be fair, we don't know because um, I accidentally or the game sort of either I skipped the draw, which let's be honest is something that's likely to have happened. But I could have sworn I didn't click skip draw. So with them being drawn at the same time, I guess we'll have to see. Right. Uh, every Chinese random. China's a national team. Not spelled like that. China. Yeah, we're still having a good year, but it could have been so much better. Like, honestly, just having Hammerin in Europe with us, we could have been looking at a 13, 14 point year, maybe. That and the fact that we missed out on two full coefficient points because the game decided to give us a buy. I wish it wouldn't do that. Um, it's annoying that we were given that priority. So, Chinese national team is actually a, this guy here who was the guy we had on trial, ironically. Uh, is it all domestic players? It doesn't seem to be a single guy in the national team that doesn't play in China. As it goes, there's Li Gang. Yang Dong. Good stuff. I don't know. Maybe his middle name is China. <laughs> you never know. Who's the random uh, wonder kid? I'm, I'm curious now. Oh, good. He's broken his arm. Uh, We can do protective stuff. And Henry's hurt too. You love to see it. Does that mean we won the league now, by the way? So our next game is the... Does it even have it in the schedule yet? It's not till bloody April. Fuck me. I don't know if we're actually going to have time for this today, you know. We'll see when the... It might change when the draw's actually made. That would 
be weird if it was the quarterfinals there. That might just be like a placeholder until we actually know for sure. Oh, it's there on the 21st. Okay, we'll find out soon. I am going to have to take a pee break though. I was going to try and hold on, but like I literally can't if we're going to be going a little bit longer than normal. There's no way I can hold this any longer. So whiz quiz for you lovely people. I'm going to have a wee wee, grab myself a Dr. Pepper. Blasphemy, I realize. And I'll be back in a moment, friends. Uh, where's me button? There it is. It was, of course, Mr. Luciano Vieto, who was utterly useless for Fulham, uh, along with the rest of our squad that season, naturally. Ah. Not quite uh, the Beppis the opening that we were used to, particularly as this bottle was already half open. <laughs> well, not half open, it was already open. Mm. It's just well, there isn't an early Premier League kickoff today, isn't there? Because we've got to be going a bit longer today, I think. Right. Okay. Adam I just scored. For for some reason in my head he's he's a Norwich player. He will always just in my head I can just picture him in the Norwich City kit. Right, Hammering win again. Tarshi can continue being shit. Melita nah, they're gonna be fine. It's gonna be Gzira and Tarshin to go down by the looks of things. Right, a little bottle of water. Exactly. Except it's not water. A bottle of Dr. Pepper. As long as it's not, there you go. Uh Christ. I'll quickly schedule friendlies in here, which will then get cancelled because, Christ, there's a huge gap. But this is where this gap comes in handy. The sheer lack of game time here means we'll have... Ooh, wait, I can just schedule a random game against Barca there. <laughs> Both Barca and PSG must accept these friendlies. I'll save the PSG one in case we play them. That would be bare funny, though. I probably should have waited, actually, because then we could have seen if we were going to play one of them and then scheduled a friendly in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot about those. And they have to accept, don't they? They're not allowed to say no. Uh, put up Mario Kart with Hartak. Yeah, just kill them all. San Jose Earthquake want Lignon. I guess... 450 grand is money, right? Perez is back in training. Tell you what, he might have a chance. 
No, he's not. Well, I want to wait to see where the um, Champions League games fall in before I schedule the trading schedules because I'll just have to change them anyway. Uh, right. Okay. Cool, we might get to bloody FM Christmas here at this rate. Let's see. Play a bit of Master Scala. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't expecting us to progress. I thought we'd lose to Bayern and Inter, scrape like top 16 or top 8 or what? No, yeah, top 16, and then just get dumped out by whoever we play against. Wait, did I actually rescout them? Yeah, I did. Cool. More of these. I love that he's just doing them one by one. Just like call them all up. Get them in a room. They're already here, bruv. Right. Semi final draw. Wait, semi final draw? Could we maybe have the core final draw first, lads? Might be nice if we could just find out who we're playing next before. Maybe that's what that is. Oh, it's this quarter final. Okay. Both. I know. I just find it funny that it's just semi final draw. Uh, another failure. Leon's going. All right. Four hundred and fifty grand's not bad. Right. This time, view draw. All right. It actually worked this time. Weird. Okay. Hmm. We'll get to the Harrowbridge Waters in a second. Let us see. So we want overview. Build a nation. Uh, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make the Maltese League the best league in Europe, basically, Holman. Um, one of the ways we do that, obviously, is by being good ourselves and winning. But it also means we have to strengthen the other teams in our nation um, to make them good too. Now, this year, they've not been very good at all. But that's mostly on them, not on us. Milan, Milan would be intriguing. Annoying to miss out on Milan or Atletico in the same round. Because now everyone we play is going to absolutely wallop us. Because Benfica on their day could... Uh, Arsenal? We've played Arsenal before. Yeah. Which means it's PSG versus... Chelsea? In the other one, I think? Oh, Man City. Right. Oh, shit. Yeah, the semi-final draw. Right, okay. I might just advance it like this. Oh, Wow. So even if we were to somehow get past Arsenal, we'd have to play Manchester City or PSG. It's not the side you want to end up on. <laughs> Let's be making that clear. That's a midweeky boy. All right, so we'll cancel the Nashville friendly. Because that's four days before. We'll still play the Barca one because lols. Yeah, I think what this is is, the, uh, is us going out. But that's okay. Like, that's okay. We've had bigger challenges. Malta no longer has a team in the Europa Conference League. <laughs> Cheers, news from August last year. <laughs> thanks, lads. Just thanks for letting me know. I wasn't aware. Yeah, it's going to be another 8 million quid, which is going to be really helpful for us in the summer. Just getting that extra cash in the bank. And we'll get extra money after that as well when we get knocked out. So what we have to do in terms of money now? 60 point... Yeah, we've got really good cash, which is going to be great. Might allow us to spend a little bit in the summer and not have to worry too much about the board doing silly bollocks. Or at the very least, it'll stop them from doing silly bollocks. Which is always nice. So I tell the swamp donkey a sack uh, but Jesus, thank you very much for the follow. And now, what about Red? Good question, actually. Very, very long type of save. Yes, it's an entire year kind of length of save. Uh, nope, still national. But I think that's going to change, potentially. Three all now. Holy shit, man. That's crazy. Uh, right, Harry Bridge of Ultras. You know what to do, chat. A five. A four. A three, a two. A beanie Mac, thank you for the follow. Harold, Here's take it away, back. my friend. Well, oh, I'll wait for this well. just then I shall press the Harold button. Once it disappears, Harold button will be triggered. Just stays on screen the entire rest of the stream. And Harold. Like you did. <laughs> I try not to lose my temper with myself. Oh, goodness sake and shit and balls. The minute you get uptight, you're dead. He is right. Do not get uptight, chat. You will be dead. Just don't do it. Uh, lots of complaints here. That's all fine. That's going to be televised. Of course it is. Wait, the I love how we get more money for a friendly. <laughs> I swear we get more money for that friendly against Barca than we do for them if we were to play them in the Champions League. 
I don't know what the exact like threshold is, Bear, but we're just using 40 as like a kind of baseline for the time being. Because uh, we went down to like 19 in the summer. And that's when Tony got sold. Because it was partly that. It was because we hadn't got the Champions League prize money in yet, basically. And the board basically don't consider... Oh, no. Oh, suddenly pulled groin. And, yeah, he's going to be genuinely... Little... We won't have much time... With the next gen list, we'll literally just... We will look at it and scout anyone who looks slightly decent, but we're not going to spend too much time on it because we do have to get to the Barcelona game. Sorry, Barcelona game. The uh, Arsenal game. More good news, though, on Mateus Paez. I think he's looking really, really good. Money well spent, I'd say. Yeah, the game basically thinks we're failing FFP because it doesn't take into account the fact that we're going to get money for the Champions League. Uh, hands enter. Enter hands, man, eh? Right, cool. We're still getting these offers put in. Oh, Elton Tumor's gone for four months. Not that we care. Mexico Montserrat. That would be impre... It oh, I thought I said Mexico Montserrat. That would have been impressive. Where did the hands enter? Wouldn't you like to know, friend? Yeah, we want basically rich ever secure if we can do it. Although, from what we can tell, there's still ways that you could lose a player. But I think it's unlikely. When you're rich, you're pretty good. Do we want to know? Well, maybe you don't. I don't know. It's, it's none of my business. Uh, have Genk got another monster? They've got Brunetti. He better have... Yep, well, he he has to have brown hair. Roy Homegrown. Yes. Wait, where did it say that? Oh, yeah. Roy Fleming now homegrown. Love to see it. Now we just have to wait for his inevitable. Still another another two years. We have had the youth intake. It was shocking. Uh, the worst we've ever had in the entire safe. Genuinely, no one in it is even like worth looking at. It, in some ways, you might say that we haven't had a youth intake just because it was so bad. And if you want to see the best player, uh, genuinely there isn't one because there's no player that could be considered best. Is this the Barcelona friendly? I love that. Just casually beat Barcelona in a friendly. Now, they probably didn't put... They, I suspect this isn't their first team squad somehow. <laughs> Archie Gray is in that team, though, so you never know. What do you expect? Uh, good point. Bit of standard Liège. The, the regions have now got, like, facial blemishes on some of them. Uh, that's probably what you're seeing there. Uh, anyone? Oh, 24? No, that's the one from before, isn't it? Tony, Tony couldn't even be asked to turn up. Useless. I think it was just a big scale. They're just pretending to be a youth intake. It's actually a youth theatre group that are just role-playing as a youth intake, it would seem. God, look at that. We're burning through it now. Mm, are you joking? That's not good. How much money do I just owe him for that? Oh, he scored for them as well. You don't even play for us. How the hell are you getting Mexico caps? 8k. Oh. Right, he's getting sold in the summer. Hello, Zim. Wait. Branko Tanic has just scored, got a cap for Malta. What the fuck? Okay. That surprises me. I thought he was going to be really good. It was a youth outtake indeed. Yeah, oh Christ. Wait, Lahovi got a cap. Good God, he's looking... He's actually looking insane. He doesn't like training at the moment, which is weird. I don't really know why he doesn't like training. He doesn't like the fact... I mean, clearly it is beneficial, as you're doing well at it. National team approved. Uh, it hasn't, really. I mean, a little bit. It's... 158th. They're at their highest point they've been in the save so far, but they struck. I mean, draw with Kosovo, there's something, I guess. It's early in the year, I suppose. Uh, Botev Plovdiv. Nah. Uh, two matches there. Okay. Oh, hang on. Wait, I probably should whack a friendly at least in on the tomorrow. <laughs> Just to give us like a something in here against a reasonably competitive team. It's annoying that hammering game's in there. Yeah, Vida's the new Teddy Tuma, exactly. What many caps Vida's got these days? Oh, there it is. Right. Next gen day. What are we, what are we saying? I'm going to go Spanish Valencia. Really boring, I realise. Also, Simonek's hair is truly astonishing. He looks like Medusa. Somehow Danny. <laughs> I'm trying to think. It could be. Could it be one of our players? Probably not. They're all too old, right? 
Oh, it's as if it's Kebby. The guy that we had on loan last season and then couldn't sign. And then he moved to Porto for 3 million quid. That's annoyed me. Beck Hansen as well was another player we looked at. There's a guy at St. Trouden. Jesus Christ. Okay, hello. We're scouting you. Am I scouting St. Trouden? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, Lecoq, Kurt. Lots of Turkish players. Oh, Garcia. Hello. Oh my God. Octavio Garcia do be intriguing. I have no idea what he would be. Probably a trek, obviously, now that I look about it. Oh, Eversy Dan, thank you for the 43 months. You won, Newcastle. Enjoy the win. I hope it makes you happy. Dear Lord, what a sad little life, Newcastle. You ruined my day completely so you could have the three points and I hope now you can spend it on lessons in grace and decorum. Oh. Because you have all the grace of Diego Simeon's Atletico Madrid in any football match ever. So we Eddie, Jason, take your money and get off my property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to sign him without scouting him properly because if he's wanting... The money he's looking for there is like top end of our wage budget. And I want to at least see his attributes. If I'm going to, I can't punt on a guy who's on 25 grand a week. Uh, Konya Spore guy. Worth a look, I suppose. But we probably have to pay turkey tax on him. We do have a couple of players in it, apparently. Got Vitesse. Caliguri. Worth a look. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Jesus Garcia. Most Mexican name. At... Well, then. We've scouted him before, but he... look at that. That extra. It's a lot of cash, though. And the 20k a week is a problem. Well, who the hell are... El Coyar, oh, he's on a loan. God damn it. There's your Spanish Valencia. 17-year-old from Conor Oh, wow, they've had a double. I don't think he's going to be very good. But the fact that he's already played 31 times for them is a little bit weird. Uh, Newcastle, Pablo Henrique. Good God. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> okay. Oh, Markovic. Spa Prague is intriguing. Got a cap already. Zurich guy. Magosha. Swiss Montenegro. What, what's with all the goalkeepers? It's going good, Dan. Oh, and other than the game yesterday, it's going all right. Elite fact, that's never going to be a player for us. Benfica. Pumas? Lascari? Ah, we've scouted him before when he's mid. Another guy at the corner. What are Norwich doing? So what the... How in the... How is he considered that bad? Uh, Kloch. Wait. Sorry. Kloch. Okay. 15 foreign players max. It's it's sort of doable, yeah. I mean, he's already on seven grand a week. Wait. Random Japanese guy at Heronvane. Daichi Shibata. Another guy at Zurich. Sandro Testolini. He's not... He's okay. I'll put him in the reports anyway. Yeah, he gen there too, which is kind of cool. Uh, obviously, our boy, which is nice to see. Considering he's not played that much, it's nice to see him on there. He's developing. I guess the model citizenness of him kind of helps, right? Uh, oh, what a name. <laughs> right. <laughs> Kowodzijic. No, hang on. Kowodzijic. Kowodzijic? Kowodzijic. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Mr. Kolo. It's, it's Mateus Kolo. Uh, Koba Jaychik. Okay. I've always pronounced the J bit as like, yeah. I, I, mm. uh, oh, Puon. Lovely. What's he pooing on? Okay. Manop Puon. <laughs> I know we've scouted him before, but you can't go wrong with Matt, with, with Matt Op, Poo, Manop Puon. Good stuff. Well, oh, that's a good name as well. Sattel, Christopher Sattelberger. Wait, he's actually quite good. Like he's he's very expensive, but he's actually quite good. Um, I met a uni. Okay, he's a pizza oven, but that's good. We've got Bogovic here from Lokomotiva. Uh, worth another scout, I think, honestly. Hayek, Selma's brother. Uh, man up, who want? Indeed. Uh, oh, that's uh, UAE. He'll be great. If thirty-five. Hang on, he was six foot eight. Did you say what? Sattelberger. Oh no. Wait, who was 6 for 8? Uni? 5 for 8? Hayek? 5 for 10? Who was 6 for 8? Or Puon? Oh, Bogovic. 6 for 6, but still incredible. 
holder, a Minawi of Rabat. We don't know much about him, which is sometimes a good thing in these. Uh, Mubarak. Ateshka. He looks pretty. Wow, he's got caps already. Miller for. De Wait, what? Hang on a minute. Sleema unironically have a player on here that is not one they've got from us. Andy's from Oman. Abdullah Fadel is on the next gen list. This is probably the first time I've ever seen an Omani player on the next gen list. And it's cool to see just a player that's not from us on there. That's just a great little. He doesn't look like he's actually that good, but still. Uh, another Japanese player. Sleema apparently doing things. They are wandering. Maybe they enticed him with the shopping center. Oh, hello. A guy playing in Nigeria. There's a lot of center backs. Is he any good? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Uh, I think I have scouted him, right? Oh, I didn't. To be honest, he looks okay. I mean, to be fairness, he has no heading, no jumping reach, and he's five foot ten. So as a centre back, probably not. Uh, shit, I put the wrong thing in there. I'm like, it's a midweek game. Um, he has no interest in signing a new contract. I think all of the out on loan guys, except for these guys, although they should be okay to do let's try this again now. Actually, yeah. So some of them would say, some of them said no before because they were on um, transfer listed, but I think the rest of these guys, I'm happy to let leave for the time being anyway just clears up some wage budget like when you look there's like a 16k 18k 11k that's good money to get rid of uh buying in case uh well there's no point in buying them off them because we, we don't sign players from other teams unless there's a real reason to and frankly us buying him doesn't help them it just helps it doesn't even help us it doesn't really do anything might be worth shortlisting i suppose but we'll shortlist him when he comes through the report Right. Oh, who's the top scorer on loan at this point? Montano's still... Yeah, he's... Fair play to um the Haitian guy, Castera. Because he's got 27 for Mostar, who are currently winning the second tier. Well, they certainly were, anyway. Also, 14 assists for Jean Dong. Wow, he's had a cracking second half of the year. Ever since Sweetie got those extra guys in on loan, they've killed it. Like, he's gotten... Jean Dong Suck, I swear... Yeah, look at this. It was like, okay, decent. But then the moment they got these other guys in, which started around about here, two assists, goal and an assist. Oh, wait, that one. He's just, he's stepping up, which is cool to see. He don't suck no more. Oh, no. It might be worth to keep him there. Well, the only way we could keep him there would be, the problem is with those like two-year loan, the two-year loan thing, we offer back, you can't extend them. That's the problem. So he would still come to us, even if we gave him a two-year loan back as part of the deal. He would... It would just end, basically. And then he'd just be stuck in this kind of... Because he's older as well, so he'd be hard to get back out on loan again. It's one of those situations where the best thing you can do with those is think... Uh, who was that guy at... Was it Daniel Steen? At Mulder, where we basically kept an eye on him, and eventually, when he did get big interest, we then did buy him and then put the claws in to keep them at least two more years of having him. And then in the end, I think he did play a couple of games. And then you can sometimes get them to buy them back, but usually they are worth too much by that point, so it becomes a bit untenable. Right. Okay, there's some quite interesting players in there. It feels like the next gen stepping up a little bit more now. Ardu Goulet named as best. <laughs> there he is. Of course, Ardu Goulet wins the title of whatever that was that he's just won. 105 caps, though. I still feel like we maybe bag him on a free at some point. It feels doable. Right. Sweetie with another big win, which is them through in the cup, is it not? I think Sweetie win the cup, you know. I reckon they're going to be... Our... And that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Because I think Sweetie are too far off of Europe to maybe... Actually, to be fair, they I think they're too far off of third to get where Zabar are. But they've got a squad, I think, that is better than them now. Yeah, look, Sweetie have gone all the way up to third because of those signings. I would be happy enough if Sweetie just won it. What's the Arda Galea bookmark? Arda Galea. I just showed him. It's the same guy. He's just won a massive award. War a player. You're unhappy. How are you not playing Hassan al Kamaji? That is baffling to me. So having the cup. Uh, the good question. Good question. Uh, let's find out. Uh, so left in the cup is... Oh, it's literally Sweetie versus Hibernian in the final, which actually is kind of fine for us because Hibernian are in Europe already, but I'd rather, of the two, I'd rather have Sweetie, because I feel like at the end of the day, Sweetie are a better side now. 
as of getting those three loans from us that make them a much better team and i think they'll be good enough to win it i actually think sweet you'll end up qualifying for europe on their own backs anyway uh ah shit what i've done there is accidentally offer a contract to oh no he's out on loan isn't he <laughs> I've accidentally offered contract extensions to players who I was not really wanting to there because he was out on loan at Pembroke. Wasn't actually paying attention properly. Do both legs. Yeah, we might as well. Fuck it. You have no influence? <laughs> I suppose you're right, Don, yeah. The influence I had was not being in it. Our absence was our influence. <laughs> There's a siren-shaped hole in their hearts, no? Uh... Okay, that's really good a bit. Ready to stack the odds. Oh, we'll have to find when the cup final. To be honest, it doesn't really matter which one gets it, truly. But I feel like they'll be good enough anyway. I think they're just a better team. Plus, it looks like they'll have the home advantage. Hello, Ike. That's a couple of... Oh, they're really young as well, which means that they're from the, break, the latest youth intakes, which is even better. That'll go lovely on the wall. I looks like live, love, laugh, and walk through the clouds. How dare you? Yeah, Greece has got some a bright future. The question is how bright and whether we can sign it all. So, wow. We are favourites for the away match. Yeah, um, that is surprising to me. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, no, if we somehow beat Arsenal, we're doing the semis again. Um... Because otherwise, what would happen is we'd come back stream on Tuesday, get knocked straight out, and then there wouldn't be anything to do for the rest of stream, basically. There'd be, there'd be like two league games. And we wouldn't be able to go into the summer because there wouldn't be a recap. Uh, that's good news. Bit of, bit of Honvied. Did it say... But hang on, how could it be slight favourites if we were the ones that had the higher percentage? <laughs> Am I missing... Hang on, maybe I misread that. That certainly is something I would do. Arsenal 32%. Sirens 35%. I mean, I know that's the fan vote thing, but like, it must be basing that off something, right? Okay, let's see. Okay. What have we got? Quasi and Perez. Oh, Perez being back, even if he's not match fit right now, is super useful for us. Uh, we want Nagai and Diaz because Padilla's fit. Diaz can drop a bit deeper today. And since we haven't got Kamga going there. Right. I love that Ko is already on a he does get booked a lot, I must say, but it's it's the it's the cost of doing business, chat. That's definitely the lineup. Vega's injured, so it doesn't matter. Moto, we don't need him on the bench because we've got uh Lahovi and we've got Krastev as our backups there. Ooh, the bench looks pretty decent. Okay. Let's go. Away from home. Karim Kanate is going to tear us a new one. Do you remember the last time we played against Arsenal and Karim Kanate scored about five goals, I think it was? Wait, they've got Ifechi Kwude. That's a Patreon regen, by the way. 75 million for the American. Right. Let's go. Submit team. My clock's broken. No, it's not. I don't know what you're talking about. We move. Ah. Oh. Just as well there's no early kickoff in the Premier League today. Uh, oh, shit. That was a mistake and a half. Can I rectify it? Come on. Yes. Love to see it. Let's go. Still quite a lot of real players in this team with Saka and Rice. Dejan Stankovic is the Arsenal manager. And they've got Trubin in goal. Up the cows. Let's go. Haven't had any stuttery issues today either, which is weird. Nice to see, though. Ooh. This, watch this just turn into a random season, like the um, surprise. Do you remember with um, MTK, where we randomly got to the Champions League final out of nowhere in, like, season nine or something? And then we didn't make it back there for, like, another seven years. Or when we randomly won the Champions League with Yulia in season 11 or something, when we clearly shouldn't have done. This has sort of the hallmarks of that type of year. Ah, oh, God, that nearly turned into a brilliant pass. Alex Scott, get a body in the way. Oh, that's a great pass back across. And it's already 1-0 to Arsenal. Inside two minutes, João Jose gives Arsenal the lead. Unfortunately, our passes are already going wayward, and that's never a good sign. Then again, we played like shit against Dortmund, and that, a lot of that stuff was happening there as well. I feel like this pass was intended 
for Diaz, but it was just slightly overhit. Plenty of time. It was feeling like this against Dortmund, and then what happened? That's a good goal. Yeah, I mean, we are playing an English side, in fairness, which means that when we lose this, Germany will get, like, 10 points, unfortunately. <laughs> Be curious to see if we get any fucking points for progression. Right. Stay in it in the first leg to give ourselves a chance in the second when Perez will be sli when Perez will be slightly fitter. Man to man. Yeah, it's... How do you stop it? <sighs> Play a different game a lot of the time, right? It's... Sometimes the players will just do stuff. Uh, it can come down to the players' individual attributes, their consistency levels, uh, big match, things like that. Because obviously the less consistent the player is, the, the the sort of the more likely they are to play under their PA. Oh, God. 235 minutes. This is one of these games where we're just kind of getting what we deserve, which is not much. Uh, we've not managed to create anything ourselves. And I think this is the sort of game that we end up we're losing like 4-1. Where Arsenal haven't been amazing against us, but they haven't needed to be because we've not created anything. Part of the reason we succeed when we play like this is because we do create the occasional little opportunity. Maybe a clearance header here. Get a breakaway. Uh, eventually. Oh, my God. Uh, it's fourth season, got good players now. Okay, but... Well, in that case, I, I don't know. You, you, you asked me why it might not be working. I provided you with some solutions and you've just gone, well, I've got good players, so it doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> like, what I'm saying is, do you know if all of your players have good consistency? Do you know if they all like good, all like big matches? Because being a good player and having those things are not the same thing. They can have really good attributes and still not like big matches or have low consistency. It's less likely, admittedly, but it's still a factor, right? Um, that was just sort of suggesting some things you could maybe look at. Uh, do what you will with the advice. Big clip. Right, here we go. Breakaway, maybe. Please don't get stuck in... Ah, we had an opportunity to springboard out of defence there. And Arsenal are doing a really good job at trapping us in the middle. I wonder if Melman might actually be an option in this game. For, for some of those balls out to maybe get him in there and kind of get some chances. Um... Because we've done nothing in this game, and unfortunately, Quasi's getting... I'm bold, I realise. This is a bold move. Um, let's try... I, I think Melman, yeah. I'm going half-time sub. Melman on for Quasi. Quasi's playing appallingly. I just don't think he can get in the game. He's being bodied a little bit. I'm going to go with a half-time sub of Melman. Just to try and give us some options to actually win some headers and get that second ball. You know, his six foot five-ness really is an asset in games like this. Right, here we go. Palacio. Watch this be a back post header for Melman immediately. Palacio drops it short. Diaz, back post. Padilla! Oh, what a chance. That should have been the goal. <laughs> I like the idea, though. That The idea was right, except it was the wrong player at the back post. That very much should have been Melman's ball, but that's okay. That's what I want to see. Perez is really struggling, too. Okay, camera. <laughs> Going for the full pan. Scott. Please don't foul him. Okay, that's fine. I guess if we keep it to Tuna, we've got a chance, but we have got a lot of work to do in the second leg here because we've not been good enough. But if we can if we go down three goals in this tie, I think it's probably over. Like against oh hello, going for the strong corner. Yeah. It's, it, we're not gonna get through. And we don't deserve to. Like, we've not been good enough. We were lucky against Dortmund, and this has just been Arsenal being better than us and scoring some cracking goals, to be fair can't really say what was that goal we got the um the one that quasi scored against i think it might have even been against dortmund in fact that ridiculous bending one from the outside of the box with a short free kick ah, we've had our fair share of luck it's bound to come back against us but i don't think we're going to be progressing somehow i wonder why the game considered us slight favorites yet it didn't against dortmund to me dortmund are nowhere near as good as arsenal as is shown tonight where we've not been able to get near arsenal away from home here we're still playing some really nice little passing moves it's just Stuff like that is what's really costing us. I think a fully fresh Perez might have given us a bit more of a chance. And Vida not pushing into midfield like that probably might have helped as well. We'll get to 60 minutes, make a couple of switches, but I think this game's done. Yeah, passing like that is shambles. They do have the home of... Oh, wow. <laughs> Such a needless tackle. And the guy's about to make it 4-0 to Arsenal. Um... Might have to be a full, like, remontada here uh, for us. 
it, it, it's 4-0 to... It says 4-0 to... As if we've that actually... Then again, Freitas, who's on a 6.2, by the way, today somehow, has already saved two penalties in the Champions League. Oh my God, he's done it again. He saved a third penalty. In the... <laughs> he has saved every penalty he's faced in Europe this season. <laughs> How does this man do this? That's three penalties out of three he saved. It's not going to matter now, but my God. Randy numbers 50. Thank you very much for the 22 months, my friend. I hope you're having a fabulous day. Uh, now we just need to win 4-0. Right, Padilla's been poor. Bloody hell. Fuck it, I'm, I'm trying. I'm going Roy. I'm rolling the dice. They need to know that they can't play like this. Vida's been poor as well. I'm going for it. I'm telling you, Roy Fleming is the answer. Sometimes when the game's doing this, you do what the game's not expecting. You don't bring on your best striker. You bring on Roy Fleming. And then magic... Okay, that was not quite what I was hoping for there because now we're down to 10 men. <laughs> Upper body injury? What is bro doing? <laughs> yeah, the game goes, sure about that. Okay, so... Mm, just gonna... Christ. <laughs> no, I haven't got Diaz and Nunez. Which one of you can tackle? Five? Diaz? Five, okay. Oh, I shouldn't use the fifth sub. I had to roll the dice. We were already 3-0 down. We had to do something. Hmm. Right. Okay. It's fine. Ten man OP. Uh, what I am going to do is switch on play for set pieces. Might as, might as well try something, right? Between them, they have five, ten tackling. This is true. Like, did, did Matarazzi just come on and headbutt him in the chest or something? He's got broken ribs. This feels like it goes in as well. Oh, just over the bar. If they tackle together, they're going for like a pinch in Rocket League. Melbourne to Cam. Oh, we haven't got a Cam. I'd rather just keep him as the Trek there, honestly. Having a Cam for me... I... Also, Melbourne can't play as a Cam, which means that he'd get punished like crazy. The game would wreck him for playing there, so I'd rather keep him in a position where he's comfortable. Maybe if we had an opportunity for a substitute, I'd do that. So we actually get a proper Cam there, but we can't with Melbourne. Wow, we just allowed that to happen, didn't we? <laughs> we just allowed them across there. Oh, this is all of the bad luck. Yeah, the, it's all over the place, isn't it? Like, why... Why is Krastev there instead of tracking the runner? And why, why, is he, why is he running around with his hand in the air? <laughs> Bruv, it's not offside. Ay. All the good luck we've had so far in this Champions League has gone out the window in a single match. Something tells me we might not be able to turn this one around on the second leg at home. Um, especially without Nagai, because now we've, who the hell's going to play? It's going to have to be... Well, at least we only conceded one goal after going down to 10 men. It could have been worse. Only 4-0. Now we just go win 5-0. Right. Yeah, Kadri, I suppose. True. At least we get a week off in between. I think it's a week off. It might even be two. Um... Oh, it actually is broken ribs. A tackle he made? What did he do? Dive tits first into the defender? The reverse Nigel de Jong? Well, I mean, that's him done for the season. And with it, us. Hello, Pog. Yeah, we just goes, eh, titties. Like, what? <laughs> how else are you doing that? Uh, yeah, we're going to have to rotate against, <laughs> against Hamron. Not that it matters. My guess is it would have been like jumping for a header or something, but it's weird. It usually would tell you that. It usually says jumping for a header. I guess maybe... Maybe he goes in with the tackle and gets like a knee to the chest is how I'm like role-playing it. Go on, Pauk. What are we saying? More Greek fantasticness for us? Slide to the post. That would be cool, actually. I mean, not for him. Maybe he hit the billboards. What have we come into? Oh, Pog, we were just uh, going a bit longer. Can he be the instant? We actually can, can't we? Uh, 7th of April, it is here. Let me just go to the match. Watch this give us absolutely no information. Like, watch this provide zero context. Fell over the burger van on his way out. It would just be two players near each other and then just, a, just broken ribs for three months. I'm sorry, is that 
Bakayo Saka, or is he like a Triceratops that's got like jagged ribs sticking out the back? <laughs> Imagine being out for three months with. <laughs> Why you should have said so? Moment you're thrusting towards the go titty. Oh! I don't think that's particularly out of character. Give him an elbow. Well, then why wasn't Arsenal down a 10 then? Like, unless Saka's just there windmilling in the midfield, or my boy's got, like, brittle bone disease, then problems. He does. He needs to drink his milkies. Just throw spikes out people's elbow. <laughs> Can you smell what Bakayo Saka's got cooking? Guys, adding insult to injury. Also, heal for Sente. Fair play. Right, we just... Team meeting. Do you know what? I don't think we're going to need that. Sid is Nando sauce. <laughs> oh dear. Right. I mean, it's not really want out of a defensive midfielder, really, is it? Uh, oh, Haitian there. I thought his name was Wilson Wank for a second there. Split second. Very small second, obviously. Roy Fleming's training like a crazy bitch, which is nice to see. Still a lot of work to do, but I'm pleased for him. Get that composure up and then we'll talk. I want to mould him. I want to treat him like my Janosch, even though he probably doesn't have the potential of Janosch. What was Janosch's potential? He had like 180 something, wasn't it? Gonna spin my arms in a circle. If you get hit, it's your fault. Exactly. Hello, Alfie. Right, we rotate here. Wilson Wank. Yeah, it has to be. I can't really say things like that, can I? <laughs> I beckon it into the ether. Uh, Wilson Wank. Oh, Christ on a bike. I actually thought there was someone then. But no, it's Harrison Martins. Sadly not. I miss his fifth star. Maybe one day it'll come back. I don't think it's going to be Strongo, thank you for the 18 months. How the devil are you, friend? Just woke up WrestleMania 40 night one and the F1 finally got to bed at 8 a.m. Jesus Christ. So you still only managed to bang like what? Six hours sleep? That's better than none, I suppose. I had to be up early today because I was working. Oh, uh, this isn't where I parked my ones. car. Paris Desipris. Oh, great. Now, what is Greece doing? Greece are absolutely... There's been some top quality shagging going on in Greece around about 18 years ago. Because look at this state of these players they are generating. They're all the same. Look at him. And his name is Paris Desipris. Oh. And also, River Plate Montevideo, who apparently I was already scouting. Richard, Richard Rodriguez could be good as well. I mean, he could be fantastic too, for all we know. Uh, Wigsy, thank you for the follow. Nice, we move. Cool. Quality of the shag, it's true. Well, yeah, you don't produce a top quality player, Thomas, without a top quality shag. It's just genetics. <laughs> Study some biology, would you? The year 2018, the, year, the great year of the shag, yeah. Some say it was the year of the stag, not me. Right. Uh, oh, this is rotation. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Like, my weight in kilos heavy rotation. Uh, Perez will step out for Roy. Henna's... No, I'll go Melman. Nunez can start. Ortiz and Kamga is... Actually, no, Kamga probably shouldn't start Kamga. Uh, oh, my lord. Are we, are we really... Uh, Kazola, then. Fuck it. Not because... That, what I'll say to us is shank. They need to shank better. It's... It's just a scientific fact. Uh, Luther Boy's in. Cadelkacy of Rabble. It is weird that we're playing Rabble there when he's literally a midfielder, but that's okay. Two miles of the act itself. Um, it's based on the average rating. <laughs> Obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, it's... Particularly with the way that we played against Edmonton, I am worried. I'll say we. The, the issue we've got is goaltending. It, it's quite simply... Georgiev is so unreliable. Ananen's not ready yet to be a starting NHL goalkeeper. And it's just, it's costing. It, it's really costing us games. I mean, and it's probably going to cost McKinnon the heart as well. Well, maybe not. I mean, the McDavid waking up is probably doing that, that and Kucherov, but I don't know. I'm not confident about it. Particularly, I don't know if, um, was it Lekkonen or Nachushkin that went off in that game? I can't remember. I stick talk. Oh, we win. And the best thing about it, next weekend, there's two Avs games on, both of them, at times I can actually watch. So I get to watch hockey on Saturday and Sunday next weekend. It's, it is a blessed day. Bought some Avs merch yesterday, actually. Got, managed to bag myself a couple of t-shirts. Uh, we're still creeping up the list, but I suspect that catching Floriana is going to be a tough ask. We might get there, you know. There's a chance. I think the last season of the save might end up being around that sort of time, unless we can figure out where to speed it up a little bit more. Uh, we get the win there as well. Hilton... 
it's incredible to me that Rob Hilton has played enough games in order to reach a suspension, but Quash is with Consortium. God damn it, man. Fiction suggestion is that. That's just hockey. Um, you often get back-to-backs in hockey. Not quite to the levels of baseball, but you do often get back-to-backs. Because bear in mind, they're not on the ice the entire 60 minutes. Like, they have the shifts and the line changes. So the maximum you're going to play, and if you're someone like Kale McCarr, although we're using him a bit more lightly lately, maybe 20 minutes. I quit. I yeah, baseball will sometimes have like three or four back to back, right? Uh, Alf Clements. Thank you very much for the follow. Thank you very much for the follow. St. Louis. At least you get the one point, I suppose. Good you think? Absolutely not. Um, we could barely. We're calling it a youth outtake this year. It really was that bad. Yeah, baseball, it's, uh, it's not quite as much as 180, but it is very, very much. Whereas hockey's an 82-game season plus playoffs. <laughs> One big game then. Uh, because you're not playing the same teams. So, bear in mind, we're playing uh, Winnipeg on the Saturday, and then we're playing against the Vegas Injury Reserves on um, Sunday. Still unknown. Ooh. I didn't realize they'd offer you contracts. He played 32 minutes. Christ. No wonder he's leading the bloody um, scoring for defensemen. Or is that... No, that's the other Hughes, isn't it? I forget. He's got more points than my boy Kale. That's all I know. 162 until the playoffs. That's crazy. Who do we beat? We beat uh, Dortmund. We were four... We were two goals down in the second leg with 12 minutes to go. And we beat them in extra time. Deal with the travel. Um, I Most likely, I think both of the games are at home. So I think we're playing at um, Ball Arena on both the Saturday and the Sunday. So Winnipeg coming on the Saturday, Vegas injury reserves on the Sunday. I think anyway. In a batch. Um, no, weirdly you don't. I, I don't recall that happens in hockey at all, uh, Hadrian, from what I remember. We, we play certain teams more if they're in our division. Baseball seasons are not... I mean, they're, they're about as long as any other sports season. I think they just have a lot of games in there, right? It's a lot of travel. Oh, for sure, yeah. They, they really do pack them in. Plus playoffs, obviously, in there too. I'm trying to think how many games... The maximum plays, games you could play in a hockey season would be... Is it 110? Or is it the first round is only five? I can never remember if the first round of playoffs is only five games. A game take. A hockey game... Well, it's, a, it's 60 minutes split into three intermissions of 20 minutes each. Sorry, three periods of 20 minutes each. But to watch it, maybe two and a half, three hours at most... Yeah, but traveling fans in hockey is not really a thing. I mean, to the same extent as it is in like, or, or I say most American sports really. Like, generally speaking, the only away fans you'll see at hockey games are fans that live locally for the most part, right? You wouldn't really... And besides, if you're... Say you're an Avs fan or whatever, you're playing 41 games at home. 85 season, not counting home. Uh, there was only 82 games in the NHL season, right? Oh no, there's more now. Is there more now because of the expansions? I thought it was 82. Or have they changed it because of the expanded teams? Because of Seattle and Vegas. Uh, right. Perez, Quasi, Padilla, Diaz, Kanga. It's going to have to be Kanga, isn't it? Yeah, it's 82. I thought so. Uh, it's always been 82 as far as I'm concerned. I think they just dropped down the number of matches they were playing against each other. Uh, right. That, that's This is the, the team to go with, I guess. it's Unless we're going to somehow put five goals past Arsenal, I think we're done. We need MLS to adopt it. Don't say that out loud, Jim, because Hadrian and I will figure out a way to make that work in the database. Mass fans everywhere. Yeah, exactly. So you'll always, like, I think every time I've watched the Avs versus the Leafs, there's always, <laughs> there's always loads of Leafs fans there, right? That would be kind of fun, Hadrian, if we did that. I'm always looking for another idea for our next video. Where do I live? What, you're my DPD delivery driver? Uh, in the UK. Alf. Sorry, Alf. Alfie. Play ice hockey. I do not play ice hockey. That would be cool, though. Uh, there's not a lot of options for playing ice hockey in the UK. It's getting better. Attendances are growing for the EIHL, which is awesome. I really do want to go to a game. Probably would have to go to Guildford, because that's the only, that is literally the nearest one to me. It's fucking nowhere near. Uh. Yeah, and I guess the closer that the game is to where the original team, the away team, is based as well, you might see, not so much because they are travelling, but because they are sort of local, because they've moved away, right? Denver Dickens. He's what you follow. I only really follow football and hockey. So Fulham and Colorado Avalanche. They're all moving south for the summer Bruins. It's 
size of the country. Well, exactly, yeah. The size of the country obviously plays a huge factor. Um, but yeah, as you say, you're not going to be like, oh, um, say you're like a Florida Panthers fan or something. You're like, hmm, we're playing against uh, the San Jose Sharks. Let me just take a midweek flight to San Jose. Uh, oh, has the FM finally started NASCAR in the sport? I guess, but like in NASCAR, I suppose I do like track house. That is like my team, I suppose. But I thought we were talking about like, you know, stick and ball sports, I suppose. Um, why has it been weird? Come on, FM. Oh no, don't do this now. It's the last game of the stream, most likely. Why is it chosen now to be a silly billy? Come on. Definitely on flight. Oh, hell no. No, exactly. Um, I would like to go to a hockey game. Well, firstly, I'd like to go to an EIHL game. But what I'd really like is for the abs to be on the um, NHL Europe thingy at some point and be able to get to one of those games, even if it's on the continent. Around is this. This is the quarterfinals. Great save. Increase the stack. Yeah, exactly. UK, not exactly. Um, basically, it comes from two things. Mostly, it was just playing um, NHL 2003 when I was a kid. I, I adored that game. And as a result, you sort of just start to love the sport. And so there was a channel in the UK called NASN. And it was called the North American Sports Network. And it would just televise like random sports. So I'd get my mum to tape the hockey games that were on on like... Because they didn't even have that many games were on. So I, wasn't, I didn't even care who was playing. It was very rare that I ever actually got to watch the Avs. And so my mum would take the games from me and I'd watch them on the Saturday morning. There was always like a Friday night game on NASN. And I would just watch it every time. I remember watching the first ever like Winter Classic when they brought that stuff back again. So that's how I got into it. And as for how I chose Colorado, it literally was my brain as a child going, they have snow in Colorado. I like snow. As if they don't have snow in Canada or like other places in America, like, you know, Minnesota. <laughs> but yeah, that's all it came down to. Um, we've, we're giving up a lot of chances here. I, I suspect this game's not going to go the way we want it to somehow. Oh, for fuck's sake, FM. It really is punishing us for the success we had earlier, isn't it? Yeah, proper blast from the past. It was like a... Um, it's also... I was listening to DMVR, and they were talking about the Minnesota logo. I didn't even realise this, that it's the shape of a bear's head. I just assumed it was some random stuff on a logo, but the whole thing is actually the shape of a bear's head, and I think that's kind of sick. It's actually a much better logo. Yeah, Lavinia, we wanted to finish off um, the European football, and then we accidentally got through a round. So we decided to see that out. The wild logo is very cool, yeah. When NJ won it, yeah, with like, was that with like Martin Brodeur? Or it took, yeah, but it literally is that. It, it's as simple as that, really, isn't it? The little things that get you involved. Yes, we, no, somehow don't, oh, yes, we do, we do, we lead. Sirens won, Arsenal nil for the coefficient. Didn't realise it was bad. Nope. Not until I was... To be fair, I was listening to... There's an Avs podcast I listened to. And obviously when we played The Wild the other day, um, there's a former like Avalanche player that's on the podcast all the time. And he was pointing out to the other hosts and they had no idea that it was a it was a bear either. It's the Torpedo Moscow thing again. Come on, three more. We got this. I might turn on paper set pieces again, honestly. We're playing quite well here. I, I think we get that. Grab a random corner goal, make it 4-2. Oh, the Whalers logo is dope. I actually watched a... There's a brilliant YouTube video of a... It was a, about the Hartford Whalers. It's, it's such an interesting, like, story then, basically. Hello, Dan! Where, well, what's happening here is we're in the quarterfinals of the Champions League against Arsenal, albeit about to get wrecked by them, but still. Channel 5, wow. Yeah, when I started getting interested in watching it, it wasn't available on anything other than NASM, which was like a premium Sky channel that you had to pay extra, even if you had sports packages and stuff. It was crazy. But I convinced my parents to get it for me. And there was this random shop in Harlow that sold like American sports stuff. And they had like this, there was a hockey magazine called like Face Off or something. So I'd get that. That's how long ago we're talking here. Um, Perez has still really not been at it. I think we go Henry. Gonzalo Diaz has done okay. But maybe we, just to freshen things up a little bit, Vida's, well, Luhavoy's not done well at all, but we've got no one else to play there. Vida is anxious, to be fair. Krastev at least is composed. We came top eight in the Champions League, yeah. We came fifth in the end, as it goes, which is pretty good. If we manage to win on the night, it's still good for coefficient. No, we actually won a knockout round. Uh, we, we came both top eight and won in the knockout round. Niedermeyer, yeah. Oh, it was so inaccessible, yeah. It was a case of like... 
Like, I probably in that entire period maybe watched like two Avs games in about two years because it was just whatever NASN chose for that Friday night game. And I watched them all, obviously. But it's nice being able to just randomly watch Avs games whenever I, well, whenever I want, but like whenever they're on at a reasonable time, which is fairly rare, I must say. Usually they start at like midnight, 1 a.m. But next weekend, it's like nine and eight. So that's good news. I watched the Penguins game the other week. That started at six. It was brilliant. That's a dreadful touch from Krastev. It's just such a fun... For me, the reason I like it, I think, is because it's the closest to football. I know that sounds stupid, but in terms of, like, it's lower scoring, um, it has some of the same intensity and the way that the positions are in certain respects, and I think that's why it's appealed to me. And you can fight in it! <laughs> There's a good tackle from Kamga there, which means Arsenal are going to score. Oh, is that a save? Oh, he's offside. Okay. Atlanta. Well, they probably will still call them the Thrashers. There's this, like, joke I heard. It was about, like, um... <laughs> the best chance that Quebec have got of getting the Nordiques back is for a team to move to Atlanta. <laughs> because they'll just end up moving it back to Canada and making it into the Nordiques. Fever country ranking, uh, I think they're 158th, but it's not really relevant to the save. But yeah, I think that's where they've got to so far, is 158th. Look up and punch you, you're literally, yeah. You know if a hockey player stays down that they're seriously injured. <laughs> Sometimes hit a puck. Fighting's actually not as common in hockey. Actually, it went through a spell of being very uncommon. It's got more common lately since the pandemic because when they had to restructure the divisions, a lot of rivalries got reimagined. I mean, this week, for example, New Jersey against the Rangers, there was a, a line brawl after two seconds. <laughs> there was literally a line brawl two seconds into the game. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, that was premeditated. It was because of a hit from a previous match uh, not that long ago uh, that they hadn't been allowed to kind of resolve it then. So it was predetermined. It was because of Matt Rempe and fucking... Is it Curtis McDermott? That could have been 2-0 as well. The best part about it as well is because um, in hockey, if you start a secondary fight after the first one's already begun, you get ejected. You get a match penalty. So like eight players were thrown out of the game after two, <laughs> after two seconds. <laughs> right, come on. One more goal. Just to, not that it matters, we're 4-0 down on aggregate, or 4-1, but I want to make sure we win this on the night, just to get that little extra bumping coefficient. Yeah, Rempe is, is an interesting one. Uh, it, hasn't he been, like, ejecting in his last three appearances for the Rangers? <laughs> Krastev's ball, and that is a goal. Henry Watara makes it two. Is there still time? Chat, I'm going to do what I don't normally do. Go very attacking for the final four minutes. Can we do it? The fact that we're capable of beating Arsenal 2-0, can I just point out how good that is and how much it shows that we are still actually a really decent team? Like, I'm, I'm fairly content with our performance today that we were capable of beating a team like Arsenal. This would not have happened two years ago because we played Arsenal in the knockouts two years ago, got absolutely clapped by them. I think it was 5-1 on aggregate. This is 4-2. We've been much more in it. Possibly could have even had a third goal in this game. And I'm really pleased for that. I think it shows the progression that we're making is definitely the right direction. Yeah, the tactics really helped. The players are getting better as well, but I think tactically it has helped. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Pinnock at the baseball, watch a fight at the hockey. To be fair, you get some fights at uh, baseball games occasionally too, though, don't you? So far, I've been able to talk with you in baseball with it. There you go! If Jack was here, he'd tell me that baseball's crap and football's better. <laughs> it's still a win, yeah. Which is the most important thing. Currently, it's still a win, anyway. Honestly, that's about right. When you look at the statistics for the game, we, we definitely should have done it. Concedes. Ah, you got to go for it, right? At that point, I don't mind making that switch. It's when people say to do that after, like, 55 minutes, when the game's, like, a one-goal game. That's when I'm just like, Really? I'm pretty proud of us to actually to only go out okay yeah 5-2 but that was mostly because of that first leg um, we held our own in the second leg with a better side and it's that progression that I'm looking for Tony's twisted ankle he'll be back 9 million for, the, for that as well like how are we financially 67 million pounds in the bank we'll get more when it finishes as well probably another like 5 or 6 million perhaps so we should be on around about 70 million at the start of next year we're going to be in great nicks transfer budget's massive that's Fabulous. Now, I think we got a bit unlucky in the first leg. Tony's season with Barca went well. He played a lot, which is good for us because they owe us 10 million quid if he plays well. Uh, let's just check. Coefficients then. 
Who did we play in the round of 16? Uh, it would be the winner of the PSG Man City game. So I think PSG. So 8.8. Point me, we're going to go into 12th. Because we go above Belgium, Scotland, and Turkey. So next, well, not next year, but the year after that, we are actually gaining an extra round of qualification, which is ironic because this year, even though we were supposed to be getting second round, we started in the playoff round anyway. Because weirdness. Facilities, um, we have got stuff to upgrade, but we're in that weird bit where the ball won't let us. So we have 16 on youth facilities, which would be really lovely, but they won't let us upgrade it because of that stupid glitch that means you have to wait for the facilities to downgrade to upgrade them. I'm very pleased with that. Like 17 points, fifth place. So we'd have just done well lately. Yeah, I've heard about the Savannah Bananas. I've I've watched their TikToks. They're a very interesting team. Not just that, but the the whole story around them is really fascinating. And the way that they've been able to turn themselves in such a marketing machine on social media is is really, really intriguing. I'm really content with that. Now, obviously, how many games are left in the league? So I've got three games to play. We're going to get 100 goals because I can play the first team squad for those games as well. We might even get close to 110, honestly, which is fucking sick. Plus 84 goal difference as well is dope. The cup final will be an interesting one to keep an eye on, which means on Tuesday, we get to come back and do transfer window stuff, obviously. But off the back of a bang in the ear. Board decision and they suddenly comply. Really? Thing is, I can't even get into the meeting about the board. That's the problem. 100 goal difference. 84, so plus 16 in three games. We need to average like over five goals plus a game and i don't know if that's possible who are our final games against so third place 12th place and seventh place maybe there's there's a possibility i think it's unlikely though we'll get a i reckon we could get to 110 goals but probably not the 100 goal difference we had too many like little um like two ones not that many of them admittedly but some of them um right let me have a look and see who's live this afternoon Hmm. I do like a raid to Salty. But, but, I think I've got a better idea. I think I'm going to raid the Goodyear because it's, it's the perfect setup for us. Coming from Malta to raid the Goodyear. It's, how could we not? Uh, no, other clubs have not offered me other jobs because we're the strongest side of Malta right now. So there's no reason why other Maltese sides would even think that they could get me anymore. Uh, so that's why we don't get offered any jobs in this save at all. Right, okay. Um, hopefully you guys will see the agent video soon. I'm sorry that it didn't come out over the on Friday. It's just without a thumbnail, I can't publish the video. So I have to wait to get that hopefully sorted at some point soon. Hopefully we can actually get one for the recap video as well. So I will see you guys on Tuesday. Have a lovely rest of your weekend and I'll see you guys very, very soon. This has been really, really fun, even though it's been really long. But hey, we've had two massive long streams this time around this year. So hey, and to be honest, Tuesday stream will probably be quite long too, to be honest. So I'll see you guys soon. Have a lovely rest of your weekend. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.